Oh my god. Hi, Nomkins. If you've been wondering where long plays have been, it's because we've been working on this massive project here. This is Murder on the Orient Express, the remake, as voted for by our patrons. If you want to get involved, consider heading to our Patreon right now. Five bucks or more means you can nominate and vote on these long plays and really get involved on what content's put on the channel. It's a big project, this, as you can see. So please consider rewarding us for all the time it took. I want to shout out our Patreon supporter, Jimmy Hatcher, for making this video possible. Thank you so much, Jimmy. You amazing, fantastic, beautiful Nomkin you. You really are so nom and so fantastic. We love you very, very, very much. I also want to shout out our producer, Alice, of course, for being a super gods tier elite Nomkin. Her links are on screen right now. Make sure you go and support Alice for being phenomenal. Anyway. That's it. I hope you enjoy Murder on the Orient Express. Here is the long play. Thank you for being fantastic. And remember to leave a like and a comment on the video. There's a lot going on in this one and it's super nom. All right. Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express. This is the remake, not the original. This came out like a few, like a month or so ago. Um, let's uh, jump in and check out Murder on the Orient Express. Oh, <laughs> I am it, Kyle Powell. This is my outrageous accent. <laughs> okay, here we go. Murder on the Orient Express. I've never actually read the book or seen the film, by the way. I just know it's Pyro. I've read a lot of Agatha Christie books and I quite like them, but I've never seen And this is one of the most famous ones. I've never I've never read it or seen it. We're in Istanbul. The development you predicted in the Kastner case happened unexpectedly. Please come back immediately. How can it be unexpected if I have predicted it? Well, my friend, is that you? No. Go to M. Book at the reception desk using Wazda. Poirot, well, it is I, Book. Press E to interact with M. Book. Wow! Is it truly you, my friend? Book, it is indeed me. What brings you so far from home? A little affair in Syria. An affair of the heart? No, no. A modest affair of recovering stolen artifacts. But now I am summoned home to England and must leave immediately. This evening? You travel on the Orient Express, I hope. I have made no arrangements yet, as I just learned that an emergency has arisen, and I must return to England immediately. Very well. It will be my pleasure to secure you a sleeper on the Orient That is not cheap! That's like two and a half grand! The line insists, I accept with pleasure. Probably not back then, actually. Time together, but still. For I too depart this afternoon. We'll have plenty of time to catch up. I'll have the hotel transfer our luggage. Excuse me, sir. You are the director of the line. Just don't scream. Princess Dragomirov would like to know if she may keep her miner in her compartment on the train. Uh, good morning, Princess. It is an honor to welcome you aboard. There is absolutely no problem for your pet. You will ask about his food? Oh, yes. The Princess Dragomirov would like to know if there is food for miners on board. Insects, uh, small amphibians, baby rodents. Baby rodents? Of course, princess. Don't worry. Your bird will be fed as you demand. Wow, I gotta suck up to the princess. You there. Desk clerk. One moment, sir. Listen to me. Call the police. My train ticket has been stolen. Oh, this will be the tutorial stolen. case here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. You travel by the Orient Express, monsieur? Arbuthnot. Captain Archibald Arbuthnot. Formerly British Army, now retired. And yes, I'm taking the Orient Express to Paris. But what business is that of yours? My name is Book. I am the director of the line at your service. 
And perhaps this gentleman could assist you. He is... World-renowned oh, famous I... detective Hercule Poirot? Uh, but I must make that train. <laughs> A train ticket. Yesterday I recovered artifacts worth several millions. Please, my friend. It's not just any ticket. It's just turn a half round train ticket. It's Orient Express ticket. Very well, I will investigate. Thank you, Poirot. I will arrange a car to Serkechi station for us. Where are we going to the station? All right, first case, the mystery of the stolen ticket. Press the tab button to open the mind map. Oh God, every game, this is like Alan Wake. I suppose I should offer my existence. Captain Arbuthnot has lost his ticket to the Orient Express. My friend Book has asked me to investigate. Talk to Captain Arbuthnot. Even if the task is beneath me, little grey cells must be exercised. I will offer my help. Alright. How do you know your ticket has been stolen, monsieur? I put it on a table in my room. I came down here to breakfast, and when I got back, my ticket was gone, and other things were on the floor, as if they'd been tossed about. Hello, monsieur. I suggest we begin in your room. Will you lead the way? Ah, to find the ticket. Press the tab button to open the mind map. Ah, to find the ticket. What can I do to find the captain's ticket? You now have access to the workshop. Open and complete it. What the fuck is this? What can be done to find the captain's ticket? Connect the elements on the left with those on the right. Alright, so we have search. Search the bedroom. Interrogate the neighbours. And inspect the door. We did it, guys. We're a genius. My little grey cells did not let me down. We did it, guys. <laughs> Should I do every menu in a French accent is the question. Or I say French accent. A Belgian accent! Because he's from Belgium. Did you know that? He's from Belgium. He's not French. He's from Belgium. <laughs> floor, Captain Arbuthnot? Fourth floor. Oh, one mystery solved. <laughs> the fourth floor is so, how you say, shit. <laughs> the discount floor. I suppose I can exercise my powers of observation while we wait. Okay. Analyze his character to learn more about him. Nationality, he is not, he's, he's British. Profession, he is a retired captain and he is 45. <laughs> That's the right answer. We are a genius. <laughs> character analysis is special. Workshops once completed, the analyzed character will appear on the characters tab in the pause menu. Press the escape button to open the pause menu and navigate to the character tab. Okay. So we can get information on people we've seen. He's 52, Belgium, director of the Wagon Lee Company. 45 years old, British, retired captain. Okay. Those earrings are probably important. My room's along here. 411. All right, let's go. In a hotel of this quality, a thief. I will say, it's actually always been a dream come of mine on, to go on, don't on the Orient Express. Like, I was actually looking at, like, how much it would cost for me and Chrism to go It'll from London to Venice, right? Train. For, like, and it's, like, three days fully catered. It's, like, two and a half thousand pounds each. So five grand for like a nice suite with like a view of the Alps and everything. Be amazing. Be amazing. You have locked the door, monsieur? Naturally. This is a foreign country. You have the key card? Of course. We will enter. Wow. The lock has not been tampered with. Okay. All right, time to search around the room. 
Oh shit, it's set in modern times. This is a modern retelling, I didn't realise. Look, I mean, there definitely weren't flat screen TVs in 1902 or whatever the original story set. So, um, I guess we're going to go with it's a modern take on this. Interesting. So we have cell phones and the internet and shit. The wallet is somewhat worn. It contains just over $200 and the usual cards. The wallet is somewhat worn. I didn't contains... mean to do that. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go back. There we go. Alright. A stamped reservation for the Bosphorus Ferry. Can we look through these drawers? Oh, amnesia door opening. Should be banned. Things to do in Istanbul. I'm sure for this fascinating city. I really, I'm not gonna, I don't mean, I don't mean to be mean to Istanbul, but it is probably the city that I enjoy going to the least in my entire life. I'm gonna be real. Catch them all. Oh, there's a. There, we gotta find golden I'm moustaches. Warhol, my exquisitely sculpted friend. Absolutely fucking awful time in Istanbul. Oh, floors. It's impossible for a thief to have exited through the window. Or is it? A conspicuous gallantry cross for meritorious service in Iraq, yet he only retired as a captain. Hmm. First bank. Why is his bank statement on the floor the here? Travel expenses. But how did these papers end up on the floor? Did the window blow them? I'm gonna guess that's probably what happened. Hmm, a fact sheet from a tour of Saint Sophia. I like the fact it's fully voiced. It's very nice. This earring, it is not we we literally saw it. it we literally saw it on the woman in the elevator a few minutes ago. It even it zoomed is in. Skillfully made. What is this? Hmm. Water with traces of soap. The water is scented. Was he like sleeping with that woman? Another golden moustache. You can never have too many of these. Damn right. Gotta find, gotta catch them all. All the escaped rogue moustaches. A perfume bottle. Empty. Suggestive. Well, there was clearly a woman in here with him, right? The woman in the elevator, presumably, that we saw with the, uh, with the earrings. But yeah, I, I haven't. I'm not really familiar with most of Pyro's cases or stories. Like I play, I I, I read a lot of um, Miss Marple stuff, but um, that is kind of it. There must be something else in here, right? Am I being an idiot? Don't answer that question. Working mirrors in a video game? What is this sorcery? Hmm. Let's have a look at our mind palace. How could a thief get into this room? A thief may have forced a hall cart door. A thief may have entered using a key card. I think this is the only reasonable answer. That was easy. Yeah. How to enter the room. The door was locked and the window was unreachable from the outside. Only a person with the pass key could enter the room. Interrogate the neighbours. We need to go and do that. Okay. So that's our next step. Is to go and interrogate the neighbours. Please clean up my room. The room is apparently empty. I will leave it for the moment. Let's try this one.
didn't seem to be able to try that one. Go away, please. A brief word, sir. I will give you two brief words. Go away. Oh no, he's Listen, American. I've been traveling all night from New York. From New what York. I call the management. Pardon, monsieur. I do not believe we have awakened a thief. All right, so piss off the neighbors enough. And they will all. New track, talk to the captain. If really, is that all we have to do? The neighbors couldn't tell me anything useful. Okay, talk to the captain. All right. Earring. Why was there an earring in your room? An earring? A previous guest, I suspect. I don't wear them. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that's true. How long were you at breakfast, Captain? A half an hour or so. Just a roll and some coffee. Opened window? Did you leave the window open? No. That must be how the thief escaped. I think not. Unless the thief had wings. I think this is a setup. I don't think this is. I think this is. This, is he knows more than he's laying on. But the corners are not military style. The price we paid for this hotel. I'm not going to make my own bloody bed. Interesting pronoun that we. <gasps> Pronouns in my video game. What? <sighs> okay. Select two elements to reveal how the ticket could have disappeared. The captain invited someone. Think, Poirot. That mm. is not a good answer. Oh, so neither of those are right. Shit. Okay. So the earring and the bed? This is wrong. But I'm never far from the truth. Okay, that must... Okay, it can't be right, wrong then, because... Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. I actually have no idea here. I think the window and the papers are unrelated. Earring and door is correct. A woman spent the night in the room. Ah, okay, so we- Oh, you combine them! See? Oh, you combine clues into one! That was a terrible explanation of that, but it's true. The wind blew on the papers, and that's what pushed them down. Okay. And so our conclusion is these two things. The wind probably blew the papers on the floor as it came in through the window. Moreover, the door is closed, and I found an earring on the bedside table. The captain invited a woman into his room. Maybe she is our culprit. Also, um, this is a very cool layout. Like, it's very clear. Like, a lot of these games have really confusing layouts. Um, but, uh, like, this feels really nice and smooth. Who is the woman who entered the room? It was this woman. This is wrong. Oh. But I'm never far from the truth. Oh, I fucked that up already. It's this one then. Here we go. They were both in the elevator, I think. did not let me down. Okay. I must ask the captain about the earring. That's fine. Could the wind have blown the ticket from the desk? <sighs> Let's interview him some more first. Because I'm not sure about that. Earring confrontation. Captain Arbuthnot, I have examined your room. Much was revealed, possibly more than you expected. Rest assured, we will soon find your ticket. It's about bloody time. I have a train to catch. As do I. You are traveling on the Orient Express? We? Oui. If you will be good enough to answer a few questions, we may both make our train. Ask away. Please give me an account of your movements yesterday your bowel movements <laughs> i returned to the hotel as the sun was setting the desk clerk can confirm i was alone when i picked up my key i spent the night alone i had no visitors in my room i mean that's a lie confrontation which of these sentences contain a lie uh this one oh, i have to hold down e 
Have you told me the entire truth, Captain Arbuthnot? Of course. I want you to find my ticket. Uh, can you explain the earring I found on the bedside table? An earring? Ah. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, forgive me, Mr. Poirot. I had some business correspondence that wanted answering. The hotel provides help for business travelers. They sent up a secretary. I dictated a letter, and she mailed it for me. I hadn't noticed that she had lost an earring. And when did you invite this uh, secretary? This woman may be the thief we are looking for. That was yesterday evening. My ticket was still there when I went down to That's breakfast. a lie as she well. Have taken it. Hmm. I see. Never mind. He's, he's she checked. clearly spent and the night. There was no other person in your room? No. I swear there was. Why is he uh, lying? Never mind. If it is not her, there is only one option left. Fine. Please finish your job quickly. I'll be downstairs in the lobby. Wow, he's pissed. Good. He does a bit, is a bit like Nico Bellic. All right, what do we have here? Ask the desk clerk. Oh, I guess I guess we should follow all the outcomes. So let's go. But where are the golden moustaches, guys? That's the most important. I'm not gonna look for all the golden moustaches, by the way. There's no fucking way. There's a hundred of them, I think. So uh, I think I'll pass on the golden moustache. But so far, this is really good. I'm surprised at the quality of it. Like, it's fully voiced. It looks gorgeous. Like, it runs really well. Like, genuinely surprised. Genuinely surprised that this is, like, functioning as well as it is. The Hotel Turcatlian is a perfect prelude for my journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pardon, monsieur. May I inquire when the staff begins cleaning the rooms. Every morning at breakfast time, sir. After making certain there are no guests in the room, of course. Mm. May I speak with the chambermaid who cleaned room 411 this morning? I hope you don't think that one of our staff stole the ticket. No, 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 no. <laughs> do not yourself. We seek oh, no. only information. I will summon her at once. Oh, I'd ask her to bring her laundry cart. All right. Room 411. Do not be frightened, mademoiselle. Did you clean room 411 this morning? Room 411? Yes, that is one of mine. The, t the ticket. Did you see a ticket on the desk when you entered the room? I I'm sorry, I, I didn't notice a ticket. There was a wallet, but of course I did not touch it. The window. Did you open the window? Yes, we always air the rooms. Oh, but I forgot to close the window. While I was making the bed, the person from next door was pounding on the wall. I wondered if he needed assistance. I tossed the dirty sheets in my cart, quickly finished mopping, and went to see. But it was nothing. But I'm afraid I left the window open. I'm so sorry. A window left open, papers scattered on the floor. The chambermaid cleaning the room. I believe I can now visualize what happened. Okay, I'm very confused right now. Reconstruction of the scene. Let, uh, should we do this first? Could it have done? According to the information I have, this is a solid choice. Okay. Reconstruction of the scene. Put the events in the right order to find the right chronology. Ah, so she spilt the water. That makes sense. So we have the chairman made parks a cut behind the desk. The wind blows the ticket. The ticket lands in the cart. Hmm. So first thing she does? No. This. 
the wind blows the ticket. The ticket lands in the car. Confirm. There we go. That was easy. Explain to the captain where I'll find his ticket. The ticket is in the laundry cart. Otherwise, just like just says that straight away. All right. So it wasn't a big mystery. He was just protecting some woman that he was fucking or whatever. Mademoiselle, would you be so kind as to look in the sheets from room 411? Second class? What a pleb! And so the missing train ticket completes its strange journey. An open window, a laundry cart, and an annoying neighbor. But chance is the only guilty party in this dark mystery. Mr. Poirot, I apologize. I believe my concern got the better of me and I forgot myself. Thank you. It was a case of great magnitude. I'm glad I was up to the challenge. <laughs> Twirl his mustache! I think. Is that? Oh my god! <laughs> I like the zoom. That was great. He is so fucking full of himself. This is unbelievable. <laughs> okay, leave the hotel. I want to have a quick look around first. <laughs> Only a second class ticket, though. What the fuck, chat? What the fuck? Our bags are all packed. I have my ticket and papers. If you give me yours, I'll hang on to mine. But as your secretary, as my secretary, you see to the bags, Hector. Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. What is? Man, why is Richard I Nixon have a here? Curious impression of him, as if I were observing a wild animal, uncaged. What the fuck? <laughs> God, I do like detective games a lot. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. We must leave for the station. Our bags are in the taxi. Did you find the ticket? It was a case most. Oh my difficult. God! He twirled. He twirled. Managed. I knew you could do it. Now we can sit back and enjoy a relaxing train ride. We finished the prologue, guys. The Guinness Book of World Record lists Agatha Christie as the best-selling fiction writer of all time. Her novels are selling more than two billion copies. She is outside only by the Bible and Shakespeare. That is actually true. Guinness World Records are often bollocks, but that is, that is I believe, pretty accurate. Don Quixote is really up there as well. Never read it. You are in luck, Poirot. Of course, no journey on this train is ever ordinary. But this What's with those hand motions? To celebrate the 140 years of the Orient Express, the engine will be none other than the splendid Pacific 231G558. The Pacific 231G558? The most celebrated train wow. in history. I understand completely. My eyes fill with tears of pride. It is time we were aboard, my friend. Follow me. The wagon lead conductor, Pierre Michel, will direct you to your compartment. Lead the way, book. It was built in France in 1922 by the Compagnie Batignol Châtillon. At the time of its purchase by the SNCF in 1938, it could reach speeds up to 130 kilometers per hour. <laughs> Wait until you see. It is like traveling back in time. It is Today like the train is limited to 100 kilometers per hour. I assure you, that will be more than fast enough to get you to Paris in time for your connection to London. In the meantime, you will bask in the magic that is the Orient I would Express. love to go on the Orient Express so much. One day, maybe. One day. Good evening, monsieur. Your compartment is number 
202. However, I am afraid that all the others are already full. Full? But how can that be? It is incredible, monsieur. All the world elects to travel tonight. Standing room only. You must find room for this gentleman here. I can exercise my powers of observation while they try to find me a bed. He is a friend of mine. He can have number 201. It is taken, monsieur. What? Number 201? Oh, yes, monsieur. I'll zoom in. We are full. Oh. full is everything aboard the train, Hector? In your compartment, Mr. Ratchet. I'm having them disinfect the room again, as you instructed. I also got a call from the Indians. The sale is going through as you expected. There was never any doubt. No other phone calls, Hector, from Geneva or Venice? No, sir. Who were you expecting? Never you mind. Check our tickets. We're not going in until everything is confirmed. The young man seems quite agreeable, but the other... The older man is something quite different. He's a dead president. Terrifying. Oh wow, this is sus! Oh, is the young woman from the hotel. She again wishes to watch the old man with his little friend, but not to be seen herself. Okay. Darling, we have to get aboard. I know, I know. I have heard of the phobia of fear of flying. I thought I was a tattoo for a minute. Of trains? Now you're making fun of me. Never mind. We'll board shortly, once our compartment is ready. I don't think it is though, I think it's just part of the outfit. It'd be an amazing tattoo if it was. Why did you order so much lobster, Hotaru? My dear Freya, oh, I God. need it for my specialty on the second Oh floor. no! And if the lobster a la mori isn't fresh, the passengers will know. We oh don't no! We my desserts. Tonight, molten chocolate cake. Tomorrow, my specialty. That is not my concern. They will not have room for them anyway. Serve your lobster tonight. Chicken alamori must be the first night dish for the travelers. It is easier to digest. Ugh, you really are the egomaniac everyone says you are. Jesus I Christ. I have every reason to be. I am the engine. You are just the caboose. Wow. That was a bit mean. Does she have a nice caboose? I can't tell from this angle. Mary. Not now. Not now. When it's all over, when it's behind us, then. Oh, they are together. Yeah, this these two. Yes, the woman that spent the night in his room. Okay. Well, I am mortified. The 140th anniversary, perhaps, but such a plague of passengers. Listen, you're the fucking boss of the train. Get me on the fucking train. Dickhead. Who do you think I am? I am Hercule Poirot. The great, not French, but Belgian detective. The young man fills what role in the relationship with the older man? Uh, his secretary. Fantastic. Uh, what is this woman afraid of? Uh, taking the train. Yes. How is this woman feeling? She's worried? Good. Um, what is their bone of contention? Storage in the refrigerator? Well done. I'm flawless. Holy shit, guys. Who is this woman watching? President Nixon and his entourage. Right. My little grey cells did not let me down. Magnifique. Um, what's this? I should join them and see if they found accommodation. Well, I'm right here, so that's fine. Wow, we have a solution. A gentleman has not yet come. An Englishman, a Monsieur Harris. A name of good omen. It is already time to leave. What do I care for, Mr. Harris? As Monsieur pleases, I had your things sent straight to your compartment. Unfortunately, you will be with another traveler. No. Only for the first night. It cannot be helped. I will survive, Monet. Monsieur Book, we can't find enough space in the kitchen refrigerator Please stop talking. to store all of my ingredients. How is it possible? 
His recipes are extravagant. We need to leave something on the platform. If my lobsters don't go, I don't go. And have the passengers of the Orient Express <laughs> go hungry? Never. Well, I guess we'll get. I'm glad we don't have to sort out this shit. Oh my god, do we? Is unworthy of Poirot, but I do not intend to starve. Oh my god, we gotta solve this shit. World. We're solving fucking catering. It is impossible to fit everything into the Gary's refrigerator. Obviously, my entree are more important than dessert. If Mr. Mori delays his lobsters for a day or two, we can restock at another station. Delay? You ask me to delay? Prea? Calm yourself, my friend. I'm sure we can find a solution. Is that a diagram of the refrigerator? May I see it? Oh my yes. god. He refuses this better not be a stacking puzzle. I've got a feeling it is. All right, so she is probably American. She's a pastry chef, and I guess she's 27. That's the right answer. Well, I'm a genius, guys. All right. Oh, can I interact with them all, actually, and do that? Or is it just her? Ah, uh, it's just her for now. It is a, <laughs> it's, it's a puzzle! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Can I rotate them? I don't think I can. What is this thing? Oh god, oh for fuck's sake. Alright, let's see. The train just leaves while we're standing here doing this. Oh god. Oh, this goes here. Okay. This, I don't know where the fuck is gonna go though. Yeah, that's the problem. This is a big problem. Oh no, this goes here. Oh my god, I did it! I did it! Et voilà. You saved tomorrow night's dinner. Mr. Poirot, I will reserve the finest lobster just for you. I look forward to it, monsieur. And to the dessert, mademoiselle. Hopefully, that will be the last mystery you face on our journey, my dear Poirot. Your compartment for tonight only is at the back of the second class carriage. Now second class? To... Do you not know who I am? To a private compartment. Oh, I'll take it. Welcome, Monsieur Poirot. I apologize for the delay. Thank you, Monsieur Michel. I am delighted you could accommodate me. I'm really enjoying this, by the way. This is great. <laughs> so far, this is brilliant. Good shit. And then, you know, if there were, if we, if you know, if if there hadn't been room, we could have just murdered somebody, and it would have just spread the story Wrong. along. I need to find number one o two. Oh. I'm guessing it's the other way. Hmm. I guess we had to get past this guy because we we can't go that way. Oh, what the fuck this? These first class rooms are very spacious and luxurious. It would be so imagine waking up in that bed, right? Overlooking the Alps, just the snow and shit, it'd be so fucking cool. Oh my god. I need to find number 102. Pardon me? Oh, my apologies. Yeah, get out of the fucking way, dickhead. Wrong compartment. I need to find number 102. This lady has a style of her own. Eccentric, but chic. She's a fucking, like, princess or some shit, right? 
I like the music too. Very Istanbul right now. Oh, we're sharing with this guy. Excuse me, I think you made a mistake. You are Mr. Harris? No, my name is McQueen. I... There is no other berth on the train, monsieur. All is arranged. Yours is the upper berth. We start in one minute. The train's remarkably full. En voiture! Listen, sir, if you'd rather have the lower berth, easier and all that, well, that's all right by me. No, 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 you are too amiable. It is for one night only at Belgrade. Oh, I see. You're getting out of Belgrade. Not exactly. <laughs> I'm just being upgraded. Oh, he had a real-life obituary for when his character died in a book? That's kind of cool. I had no idea. I'm glad we waited for the remake of this instead of playing the original, because the original kind of sucks, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I started recording it earlier this year, and then the remake was announced, and I was like, oh, thank fuck, I don't have to play this boring shite. <laughs> this is much better. This is like the fifth Pyro game, Pyro game to release this gen, by the way. We can go and look at some of the other ones if this is any good. A night has passed since the train's departure from Istanbul. It's the evening of the second day of the journey. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. You may join the rest of the passengers in the dining car. Meet Book in the restaurant car. Excuse me, Monsieur. Pierre asked me to inform you that a passenger left us, so his room is yours. Monsieur Book instructed that your things be transferred to room 202 during dinner. You will be more comfortable in first class. It is true what you say. Thank you, uh... Mr. Fouché, Monsieur. Wow, we get the first class treatment, because we are THE Hercule Poirot. The greatest detective ever. Better than Miss Marple. Better than Sherlock Holmes. Better than... Everyone else, the best detective with the best moustache ever, okay? Because we're having dinner Please, with Mr. Book. Friend, join me. I have taken the liberty of ordering you your lobster. Thank you. It appears our fellow passengers are all gathered here again tonight. Ah. If I had but the pen of a Balzac, <laughs> I would depict the scene. Balzac? Oh, this is an idea, that. Ah, you agree. It has not been done, I think. And yet, it lends itself to romance, my friend. All around us are people of all classes. Bollocks. Of all nationalities. Of all Classes? It's the fucking Orient three Express! Days, these people, these strangers to one another, are brought together. They sleep and eat under one roof. They cannot get away from each other. At the end of the journey, they part. They go their several ways, never perhaps to see each other again. Certainly it interests us, inviting us to watch and wonder about their lives. Ah, I know you, my friend. Even now, your mind, it is at work. Let us test it. For example, what do you make of those two? Who? Hey. Observe the passengers. Mamma mia, you can feel the power of our engine. 
We climb into the mountains with ease. I know something about the power, and this baby has it in spades. There's something special about a train. I'll give you that. I sell toys, and model trains are one of our biggest items. And not just for children, either. You sell model cars, too? Sure, but give me a train any day. Oh, my friend. What do you have against the cars? Now I work at Fortuna in Italy as a spokesperson. We are producing the next generation of electric cars, the Fortuna Firenze. Like the city, it is beautiful. We got the competitors looking over their shoulders so much, they're going to hit something. Didn't mean to be insulting. It's just that there's something magical about a train. This is really good. All right, so this guy is Italian. His profession is a spokesperson, and he is probably... Hmm... I do no, he's 35?! What the fuck?! <laughs> There's no way he's 35! He's younger than me?! Suck a dick! That happens to me a lot. The loud gentleman is very confident. A master of his own fate. It is as much in the inflection as it is in the words. He believes in winning. Also, that he is the one who will win. You are a magician. Oh, it is not a Paolo trick, my friend. It is simply observation. I'm just a genius, you know. All right, who else should we look at? I was visiting my daughter. She works at the American Embassy in Istanbul. I told her she'd never find a husband there. Since I wanted to see Paris on my way home, she told me I should take this high-class train. I can't wait to see Paris. It looks beautiful in the movies, but it couldn't be more beautiful than Schenectady in the good old U.S. of A. <laughs> That's where I'm living now. And you, uh, Miss Debenham, was it? Where do you hail from? I was born in the U.K. Oh, that's in England, isn't it? What do you do for a living? I teach English to children. What accent Africans. is this woman? I see. Oh, I wish I spoke a foreign language. She sounds British, but... Several languages. I don't think she Let is. Let me tell you about her work. It's very important. All right, so this woman is British. Her profession is... I wasn't actually paying attention. I'm gonna say English teacher, and she's 23. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. 40? 40?! What the fuck?! I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. There is much you can learn about someone just by observing them and listening. For example, that lady is reserved. She reveals little. She is self-contained. Some secret prompts her to allow her dinner companion to carry the conversation. I confess, in this case, what I witnessed in Istanbul suggests more. But I will respect her privacy. You will always amaze me. All right, who else are we going to stare at? Oh, no, that's it. My friend, this is one of the best I thought he'd been poisoned for a minute! Ever. You have always had the sweet tooth. But this... This... It is a masterpiece. I can't understand how the dessert can be so good. I would love to know what the recipe is. Alright. Recipe from Miss Nielsen. Mind map now. What the fuck? What are we doing here? Oh wow, this is fucking... I'll try and get the recipe from my friend Book. I owe him for this service after all. I couldn't tell what flavor the ice cream is. I'm gonna go with... a lemon. It looks like lemon. Look at the zest. Yes. I wasn't sure what that was. W what is the red fruit? It's a raspberry. It looks like a raspberry. Mm. You have a good eye. I'm just not a child, apparently. What the fuck? Like, most people could tell that was a fucking raspberry. The biscuit is the foundation of the dessert. All else is built upon it. What do you think? Um, I'm going to say crushed biscuits. It looks like crushed biscuits, my friend. Finally observed, indeed. Poirot. 
I am embarrassed to ask you a great favor. My friend, I am on this train due to the great favor you have done me. How may I assist you? This dessert is sublime. If only I had the recipe. Unfortunately, the pastry chef, Miss Nielsen, she will guard her secrets. But you, my friend, I am sure you could make her confess. You wish me to persuade the pastry chef to give up her recipe? You who are the expert at interrogation. Book, it is a dessert. It is the pinnacle. <laughs> God, this guy is so thirsty. What you, the fuck? My friend, who, as you say, are on this train, I blush to remind you. Fine, you win. Again, what wouldn't I do for you, my friend? Oh, thank you, Poirot. Good luck. I will do my very best. Give me one moment, okay? <laughs> I will now interrogate the pastry chef, and she will spill her secrets to me. Good evening, mademoiselle. Good evening, sir. How can I help you? That was a magnificent dessert you served us tonight. I wanted to tell you personally how much both Monsieur Book and I enjoyed it. Thank you very much, sir. In fact, it is so good. Monsieur Book insists on knowing Just how throwing him under the bus! It. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. You must know a chef never gives away their recipes. I don't think that's true. Well, you helped with the refrigerator, and without space in it for me, there would have been no dessert. Very well. To prepare tonight's dessert, first I melt sugar to make caramel. Then I spread this caramel to make tuile. Between two tuile, I add a small scoop of lemon ice cream, and I put the whole thing on a strawberry crown. Poirot, you are That's a lie. Even That's a lie. She's just lying. Her prized recipe a little too easily. I sense she wasn't entirely honest. I mean, it clearly wasn't strawberries either. Confrontation. What sentences contain a lie? Strawberry crown is, first of all, incorrect. Thank you for sharing your recipe with me. But I doubt those are strawberries you're using. Oops. You have a good eye, Monsieur Poirot. Very well. What fruit do you think I used? Raspberry. You used raspberries, not strawberries. I'm not fooled. You're right. Mr. Book, he couldn't tell the difference. Apparently he has a palate of a small child. My favorite part of the dessert. First, I melted some butter. I crumbled pieces of chocolate into the butter. Then I placed the mix in a circular it's mold. It's not chocolate. Finally, I let the whole thing cool down to let it harden. Oh, we got another lie here. There's no chocolate. It's certainly not chocolate that you've crumbled. I see you do have an excellent palate. <laughs> I'm just not five! The ingredients I used? Crushed biscuit. A clever pastry chef might mix crushed biscuits with butter to create this delicious base. That's it. You're getting closer to the entire recipe. Closer? <laughs> I've caught murderers with less difficulty than this. I'll give you one last challenge. I'm sure you will be able to figure out the order I mix my ingredients in. If you can, you will have earned my recipe. Mademoiselle, solving the murder of Roger Ackroyd was easier than this. Okay. What's this? Find the order of the ingredients of the custard. The vanilla is added just before the flour. The eggs are added first or last. The orange peel comes later than the flour. You should never add sugar and milk consecutively. It's a logic puzzle. Sugar is added later than the vanilla. The eggs and orange peel are right next to each other in the recipe. Okay. So that means the leg eggs must be last. Because they can't be first if the orange peel comes later than the flour. Okay? So that means the orange peel must be there. Um, vanilla is added just before the flour. What is this? I don't actually know what this is. What is this? Is that the vanilla? I don't actually know what half this shit is, I will say. Um... Hmm. So that's the vanilla. I think... Is this milk? Okay. 
The sugar is added later than vanilla. Right? And you should never add sugar and milk consecutively. Okay. So. We need to put... Where's the thing about the flour? The vanilla is added just before the flour. So I think... This. Got it! That's the right answer. As promised, my recipe is yours. Give me five minutes to write it down. For and you. then they Thank fucked. You. I am in your debt. I can take advantage of this moment to resume my little observations of the passengers. I mean, they're all going to be suspects, right? So the meal? I'm not used to meals like this. You do not have good restaurants in Kenya? Actually, we do. This is in the 1930s. I did not mean to offend. You didn't like the meal? The lobster, it was undercooked, and the potatoes were too dry. I expect, being Princess Dragomirov's assistant, you must be used to eating well. Cooking is an art. You do not need to wear the chef's hat to be an artist. What is your favorite dish? Curry roast. It is a specialty of mine. All right. So she is German. Probably. She could be Swiss. She is the assistant, and she is probably 33. Et voila. Easy. Easy! All right, we got the we got Nixon and his assistant again. I made again. a lot of progress on the expenses last night, sir. I should be done by tomorrow morning. You're supposed to be a fast worker, Hector. Sorry, sir. Working here is not as comfortable as in our office in Boston. You're lucky to ride in a train like this. All right, this guy's nationality is American. His profession is secretary, and I think he's probably 22. I must admit, I'm not what? right. This he's 40. Time. Couldn't really tell, I'm gonna be honest with you. That was easy. Ages are the problem in this. Here you are, sir. My recipe. Please tell Mr. Boop he should not expect my recipes for the other desserts. Thank you very much, yes. Manuel. Come to my room I know tonight. he will sincerely appreciate the gesture, and I will make certain he gets the message. All right. Poirot, you were gone such a long time. About seven minutes. It proved more challenging than I expected. This is wonderful. Did it require the use of your little gray cells? More the exercise of my little taste buds. Thank you so much, my friend. Eat your dessert. You've earned it. <laughs> How do I do this? <laughs> Oh shit! This guy's sus. Good evening. My name is Ratchet. I think <laughs> that I have the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Hercule Poirot, is that so? You have been correctly informed, monsieur. Your exploits are well known on my side of the Atlantic. In my country, we come to the point quickly. Mr. Poirot, I want you to take on a job for me. Are you interested in earning a lot of money? My clientele, monsieur, is limited nowadays. I undertake very few cases. Why, naturally. I understand that. But this, Mr. Poirot, means big money. Big money. All right, so this guy is American. He is... I'm going to go with 62. And I'm going to go with businessman. My little gray cells did not let me down. What is it you wish me to do for you, Monsieur uh, Ratchet? Mr. Poirot, I am a rich man. A very rich man. Is he grabbing his Men balls? Men in that position have enemies. I have an enemy. Monsieur, in my experience... This guy's going to get murdered, I'm sure. ...in a position to have, as you say, enemies, then it does not usually resolve itself into one enemy only. Yes, I appreciate that point. Enemy or enemies, it doesn't matter. How about enemies? What does matter is my safety. My life has been threatened, Mr. Poirot. 
Now, I'm a man who can take pretty good care of himself, but as I look at it, a little insurance wouldn't hurt. And remember, big money. I regret, monsieur, that I cannot oblige you. What's wrong with my proposition? If you will forgive me for being personal... <laughs> what the fuck?! I do not like your face, Mr. Ratchet. Are we sure? Oh. He's if not French. Wouldn't mind, I'd like to finish my coffee peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? That was so direct. French people can be very direct. Dutch people as well, I've noticed, can be very, very blunt. Go to sleep in the new cabin. Let's look around first. Fuck it. Let's look around. We need to check all the toilets. Very important. Music in this... Everything about this game is... The production values of this are so much higher. Let's just walk into the kitchen. They won't mind. <laughs> just gonna stand here staring at them awkwardly. Why are we going in the fridge? Anyway, I'm really enjoying this. A nightcap, Monsieur Poirot? A cup of coffee, Monsieur Fauché. Then I will retire to my new compartment. I'm sure you will find it to be most comfortable. We have stopped? Yes, sir. Belgrade Station. If you'd like to go out and get some fresh air, now is the time. The train leaves at 9.15. No, no, I see that it is snowing. I will not seek out the fresh air. Probably a wise decision. May I suggest a chocolate to accompany your coffee? It is produced by my father, the best chocolatier in Switzerland. I would never refuse a chocolate with such high recommendation. I know you will enjoy it, and please let me know if there is anything else you require. All right. All right, let's analyze this character. He said his dad was Swiss, so I'm assuming he is Swiss. His position is bartender, and I'm gonna guess he's 28. There we go, boom. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Everything was perfect, thank you very much. My pleasure. Is there anything you require, monsieur? No, merci. All right. Did I just go back on myself? I'm not really sure. Oh, I did. Fuck. Because we spoke to the shady man in the um, in the restaurant, so it must be this way to our bed. Why, I thought you'd left us. You said you were getting off at Belgrade. You misunderstood me. But, man, your baggage, it's gone. It has been moved into another compartment, that is all. Oh. I see. Amazing. I'm gonna be in first class. Unlike you losers. I wish you a good night, Monsieur Poirot. Good night. I hope you'll sleep well and that your head will be better in the morning. It is just the cold. I'm now making myself a cup of tea. I hope it'll warm you up. I hope so. Good night. Well, good night, my dear. What a brave girl. On the other hand, that man there in the next cabin, Monsieur Ratchet, he scares the hell out of me. There's something wrong about that man. My daughter always says I'm very intuitive. When Mom I'm an empath. Hunch, she's dead right. That's what my daughter says. And I've got a hunch about that man. He's next door to me, and I don't like it. I put my bags against the communicating door last night. <laughs> I thought I heard him trying the handle. Well, whoever you are, I'm going right to bed to read. Good night. Good night, madam. 
whoever I am. I'm really confused. Oh, God. Monsieur Ratchet seems very upset. I'm guessing he's going to be very dead in the morning as well. Oh, look at this fucking room. Where's my window? Oh, there it's there. It's there. Okay. Ah, finally a real bed fit for a king or a very tired detective. Oh, look at these pajamas. Offsets the moustache beautifully. That didn't sound good. It sounded like a murder on the Orient Express. Title drop. Hell yeah. It's 12.37. Monsieur Ratchet? Ce n'est rien. Je me suis trompé. Look at that ass. He's totally dead. Okay, so we know it's 12.37 when the guy was murdered, probably. Oh shit, it's 115 now. What is that? What's going on now? Good night, madam. Okay, 115, he's saying good night to this person. Uh, are we stopped? The train has stopped, Mr. Michel. We have run into a snowdrift. Heaven knows how long we shall be here. I remember once being snowed in for seven days. Where are we? Between Vinkovsky and Broad. Oh la la. Uh, everything okay? The American lady? Yes, don't worry. You'll know how Mrs. Hubbard is. Imagine to yourself the time I have had with her. She insists, but insists that there is a man in her compartment. Just imagine it, monsieur. In a space of this size, where would he conceal himself? I argue with her. I point out that it is impossible. She insists. She woke up and there was a man there. And Interesting. How, I ask, did he get out and leave the door bolted behind him? But she will not listen to reason. Hmm. That one does not leave time to listen. It's time for me to go he back. He went to British bed. then. What the fuck? I wish you a good night, monsieur. Or what is left of it. It's 1.15 a.m. It's not even bedtime yet. Bedtime is 4 a.m. You normies. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is going on now? He just looks constipated. <laughs> I would just be pissed all the time as Pyro at this point. I'd be like... What the fuck? Chapter 1 complete. 33 novels, 2 plays, and 51 short stories. That's more than a snowdrift! That's a fucking avalanche! The train is still stuck and the snow continues to fall. I should have taken an airplane. Well, I must make the best of it and join the other passengers for breakfast. What the fuck? <laughs> Go to the dining car. Okay. This poor guy's been up all night, probably. This delay is intolerable. 
I am supposed to be demonstrating the Firenze in Paris in two days. Ah, your electric car. Yes, that's bad luck. Bad luck? If I miss that demonstration, I'll be in a deep trouble. Just text your people in Paris and warn them. Of course I tried that. But there is no network service in these mountains. Shocking. My daughter said it would be the easiest way in the world. Just sit on the train until I got to Paris. And now we may be here for days and my boat sails the day after tomorrow. How am I going to catch it now? I can't even send an email to cancel it. Ugh, I'm just too mad to talk about it. My colleagues were to meet me in Paris. They will wonder what has happened to me. I can get no words to them. What will they think? We have refugees to help. Interestingly, uh, no, I, I, I hear her accent clearer now. By the way, it's meant to be like an like an East Coast socialite, right? Like a like a Connecticut blue blood, that kind of thing, right? Good morning, madam. The snow is a predicament, is it not? I am Russian. Snow is no stranger to me. Ah, the accent. Would it be Saint Petersburg? You are very perceptive, Monsieur Poirot, is it not? And may I take it, I have the honor of addressing Princess Natalia Dragomirov. We dispense with the old titles these days. My husband, all of my past, was taken from me by these Stalinists. When they were gone, I became director of the St. Petersburg Museum of Antiquities to restore and preserve what I can of my country's history. Still, the delay must be vexing. If I must be late for my appointments, then they will wait. I know that I would certainly wait, madame. It has been my extreme pleasure to make your acquaintance, madame. Au revoir, monsieur Poirot. It's going to be like Gordon Ramsay making all the old women moist. A beautiful piano. What a luxury. Pity there's no one to play it. Mademoiselle, you are not concerned about the train stopping? What can one do? Indeed, this does not make the train move. You have great strength to remain calm at a time like this. I know one far, far stronger than I. And that is? Well, that old lady, for instance. You have probably noticed her. She just has to lift her little finger and ask for something in a polite voice, and the whole train runs. It runs also for my friend Monsieur Bouc, but that is because he is a director of the line, not because he has a masterful character. You don't have to have a strong will when you have power. But I suspect I did not need to tell you that, Mr. Poirot. Mr. Poirot. Poirot. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Fauché. You have early customers, I see. Yes, I am stuck serving here as well at breakfast. Everyone is impatient. They keep complaining that the train is not moving. As if I could get out and push it. It's too early for me to order a boxcar. That is the appropriate drink, I believe. A gin, triple sec, lemon and grenadine mix. A drink for a train indeed. But not, perhaps, for my breakfast. I think I will settle for an omelette. Good luck, sir. Miss Nielsen is helping to serve in the dining car. All right, let's keep going. This is real. I'm just, I just, I just love this. This is great. How long are we expected to be stranded here? It won't do much good complaining to me. That fellow there with the moustache, he may know something. You know who he is? That fellow? Oh, him. Oh, I thought you meant Poirot, sorry. Excusez-moi, sir. Yes? Monsieur Bouc asks for you to join him in compartment 203. Hmm. Uh, look here, Poirot. Oh, he Can was talking to us. Anything? I can tell you the snow, it will not move aside on its own. Of course, but you obviously have some influence. It looks like a fucking mountain's falling on the track. Now, I will ask him if he has any information. What I actually think's happened, by the way, is what. Despite how it looks, I'm guessing there is a tunnel in the wall, and the tunnel is blocked by snow, and there's a tunnel through the mountain, and they're trying to clear the actual route through into the tunnel itself, rather than the entire mountain has fallen on the tracks, because that's just ridiculous. Like, it's definitely a situation where the tunnel has been blocked rather than the entire fucking mountain range has collapsed on the fucking train. But it did look like that, just from the perspective the game showed.
Oh, we didn't talk to this guy. Monsieur Brooke is waiting for you in front of room 203. Got a feeling this is going to be bad, by the way. Ah, my good friend. Come in. We have need of you. What has occurred? A passenger lies dead in his bed. Stabbed. Dun, dun, dun. Which passenger? In there. He's an American. A man called Hatchet. It was his valet masterman who was worried that Mr. Hatchet was not awake yet. Pierre Michel, the conductor, decided to break in and found the body. I see. Well, my friend, I think it is best not to touch anything and wait for the police to arrive. Oh, I Yeah, up here in the police. mountain. But there is no cell tower for many kilometers. We could be stuck in this snow for hours. The murderer is with us. On the train, now. The sooner we catch him, the sooner we'll be out of danger. The Dr. Constantine is already examining the body. Mon ami, this is not a missing train ticket. We must follow procedure. We must wait for the police to secure the crime scene. We're in the middle of the fucking Alps, dickhead! I will take full responsibility. Book, you ask. Well, if we cannot contact the outside world, then... Oh, you are going to drive me crazy. In truth, this problem intrigues me. I was reflecting not half an hour ago that many hours of boredom lay ahead whilst we are stuck here. And now, a problem lies ready to my hand. You accept then? C'est entendu. You place the matter in my hands. All right, let's go and have a look. We got our murder victim. Look at those sexy feet pics. Mr. Poirot, I am Dr. Constantine. He's the Kenyan doctor, right? Forgive me. Bend over, you Mr. Are doctor. A medical examiner? No, but I have assisted in post-mortems at Nairobi Hospital where I am a teaching fellow. I am familiar with your excellent institution. I do not intend to perform a full autopsy, but a preliminary examination should be of some use. Of course. May I have a look? Then we can compare notes. Please. If you need any help, I won't be far away. All right. Well, his nationality is Kenyan. He is a doctor, a medical examiner, and he is 47. No, 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 no. He's not good. 89? I do not think that's the right answer. Hmm. He's doctor. I'm 47. Et voilà. I didn't know the difference, I'll be honest with you. All right. Let's have a look, shall we? <laughs> it's always very convenient that the watches stop. Broken. The hands are stopped at 1.15 That was one of the times from last one night, by the way. expect that to be the time when the attack occurred. But the first noise we heard was earlier than that. It was like 12.47 or some shit. He's As been stabbed see, a lot. The victim has been stabbed many times. Several alone would have been fatal. Yes, I agree. An attack most savage. I will, of course, prepare a complete report on my findings. Thank you. I'll take photos. What did we take a picture of there? How, where did that come from? It's a vape. It belong to Ratchet? It's a banana vape. This phone was deliberately smashed. I'm sure I will find some interesting things inside. Hmm. A handkerchief. There's a letter H embroidered on it. H for Hercule Poirot, the murder? The mur- Oh, look at those feet. Look at those hairy feet. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful! I don't actually see anything else here, but um, maybe I should look again. It's gonna say the same As shit. You see yeah, the okay. Several yeah. Hmm. The attack was most savage. I will, of course, but thank you. All right, I think I've got everything from this. Oh, hang on, what the fuck? He had a gun? Shit. All right. Last night, Monsieur Ratchet said he takes precautions. I see now what he meant. He knew he was in danger and wanted to be ready. Yet it was no use to him. I will leave it here for the police. Well, I think the police aren't going to show up 
like while we're doing this. I think we're gonna be stuck here for days. All right, open ratchet safe. Oh, we actually got. We actually have to do that too. Okay, so we need to open his safe somehow. We got sleeping pills. A box of sleeping pills. It's a. It's not a box. Oh, look at this. Look, this, this cabin's fucking great. Where can the killer have gone? This door communicates with compartment 204. The latch is open on this side. How could the killer have exited the room? I wonder what could be in this photo. I mean, we could just fix it, right? I wonder what could be in this photo. Looks like a squirrel. <laughs> or something like that. Oh, restore the torn picture. Let's do that. It's a cat, I guess. So far, all the puzzles have made sense. They've been well done. No bollocks. Four daisy. Four daisy. Hmm. Mm, interesting. That okay. was easy. In Russia Trash was a torn picture of stuffed animals, put the four pieces together, you can discover there's a message was hidden behind it for Daisy. It wasn't really a I mean it wasn't a hidden message, right? Uh okay. Uh anything else to look at before we talk to the doctor? I mean we should go through to the other ca in in my opinion, through into the other thing, but still. Alright, let's go through his luggage, fuck it. Alice was walking in the forest of a thousand flowers. She picked ten flowers to make a bouquet. Suddenly the bouquet turned into a butterfly and the flowers on the ground began to multiply. There were twice as many. Alice arrived in front of a door that asked her, If you want to get out of the forest, you must tell me how many flowers are left in the forest. Hmm. That'll be the code to the safe. So there's a thousand flowers. She picked ten, which means there is... 990. Suddenly the bouquet turned into a butterfly and the flowers on the ground began to multiply. There was twice as much. What's 990 times 2? I can't do math. One thousand nine hundred and eighty. There's probably the code for the safe. Let's try it. All right, we got a thousand, lots of money. Not very surprising. Big money. Daily planner diary. Call Cairo, check carpet delivery. Orient Express, call DC, check TV. Fontana. Ah, a meeting place on the back of a postcard. Someone with the initials AW. A uh, cool poirot, baby. Hmm? Hmm? Ratchet had an appointment he will never keep. Shocking. For each person... Oh, what the fuck? Let's read this. Hang on. For each person hurt, you will suffer the same harm. Your death is near. We never forget. So this is the threat mm, he got. Unusual letter, this. Oh, oh, kill poivre. I still think that's good. I like that. It's very good. Expensive clothing, recently laundered. The laundry service! They did it! Again! They did the first crime, they'll do this one too! The chain lock is broken. From the, the inside. told me that he broke the chain oh, okay. yeah, on yeah, the yeah. door to get into the room. Alright. 
Must talk to the doctor. All right, the night of the murder. I'm sorry, doctor, but I must question you. Of course. I must be considered under suspicion like everyone else. May I know your movements last night? I had a big poo around one midnight. One with Mr. Boo. He would not stop talking about his beloved train. I listened to him for hours talking about his Orient Express. My friend Book will no doubt confirm this. All right, link with the victim. Did you know the victim? Not at all. I noticed him last night at dinner, but I did not pay much attention. Clues in the room. Did you touch anything in here this morning? I checked for a pulse. There was none. Rigor mortis had commenced. The body was cool to the touch. I touched nothing else. What can you tell me about the victim? He died from multiple stab wounds of varying angles and depth. More than one would have been fatal. I would place the time of death roughly between midnight and 2 a.m. With more time, I hope I can be more precise. The cold. I assume the open window complicates matters. Indeed. Conditions are not perfect. Thank you for your help, Doc. I didn't even notice the open window. Hmm. The snow is falling only lightly this morning. The murderer would have left tracks in the snow if he had jumped out the window. Yeah, he definitely did not. He's, he's on the train. Or she's on the train. One or the other. Oh, look. It's like knockoff head and shoulders. The murderer's way out. All right. Okay, so we have the window is open. And train stopped in the snow. They will combine into one here. So that's obviously not true. The murder probably hoped he was going to get out the next station under the window, but the train never made it. Makes sense. We got the... Lo the... This is wrong. That's wrong. That was my bad. I... I'm never far from the truth. Shut up. This is what those two go together. When we have those... The murderer was able to get through the connecting door because it was not latched. This is correct. So the murderer exited into the other so thing. The yeah, Madame Hubbard's room. Madame room. And she said there was a man in her room last night. To the guard. The witness of the escape is Madame Hubbard. Um... Two people need to be identified. Who are the two people who could have seen the murderer leaving the room? Mr. Michelle, right? There we go. My little grey cells did not let me down. <laughs> Fantastic interview and okay, interrogate them both. That's our next objective. I shouldn't leave until I have finished inspecting the. Oh, there's more. Hang on. Oh, over here we have one too. All right, so that's, there's more here. Select two elements to help undercover what happened the night of the murder. Um, well, he took his pills. That's one there. Um, he received a threat and had a gun ready as a result. Ratchet was on his guard. No, no, no. Mm. Not good. That doesn't make any sense. Why would he drink sleeping pills if he was on guard? Ratchet wanted to stay on his guard, yet he took a sleeping pill. That's really I fucking weird. I imagine Ratchet taking a sleeping pill if he feared for his life. Yeah, that doesn't make that any sense. Easy. Why would he take a sleeping pill if he was trying to like be on alert the whole time? Ratchet's employees. Who are the two people that work for Mr. Ratchet? These two. We need to identify. We need to interview them probably too. I'm gonna guess. Yeah. All right. So we have four interrogations that we need to do. I think I've seen everything I need at the moment. I am counting on you to finish your analysis. I'll have a more detailed report for you as soon as I can. God, the pacing of this is so much better than the fucking original game. So, wow. Did you find He anything? is definitely dead. It's a bit early for the handcuffs, my friend. Even for Hercule Poirot. Do not worry, mon ami. I believe our culprit has no plans to strike again. Monsieur Ratchet was the target of that. What gave that away? Master Detective. Tell me, Book, how did you spend last night? 
This is a joke, I hope. Don't you trust your old friend? My friend, calm yourself. I must hear your story in order to corroborate other accounts. Ah, naturally. Let me see. Hmm. I went to my compartment after dinner. Uh, Dr. Constantine was already there. We talked about his career. He's a Cambridge man, you know. After university, he returned to his country and has done much good there. He was so interested in the Orient He Express. wasn't. He was so pissed. I told him all the anecdotes. <laughs> you know. I'm not certain when we fell asleep. But it was very late. Uh, investigation. Here is what I have found out. Monsieur Ratchet was stabbed many times. I also found threatening letters in his safe. He had a loaded gun under his pillow, so he was on guard ready to defend himself. However, there was an empty glass with white residue at the bottom. I suspect a barbiturate. Perhaps he was forced to take it. In any case, I am certain he was unconscious, unable to defend himself. I also found several other items at the crime scene, possibly related to the murder. They must be investigated. By all means, Poirot. As fast as you can. I also found liquid for an electronic cigarette, but I could not find a vape. This might belong to the Interesting. Murder. The vape is going to be the key to the 2023 version here. I need a list of the passengers with their compartment numbers. Pierre Michel will have it. I must interview the rest of the passengers and the staff. I'll be in the bar car if you need me. We are hours late. Soon I hope help will arrive. Alright, so we're gonna have to interrogate everyone it looks like, to be honest with you. But we have a lot of fucking interrogation to do. Alright. Well... We might as well talk to Mr. Michelle first, because he'll give us the list, and we need to interrogate him anyway. So, um... Monsieur Michel, I must ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. I will do everything I can to help. First of all, tell me about yourself. Very well. My name, as you know, is Pierre Michel. I am from Calais. I have been with the company for over 15 years. Thank you. Okay, so he is French. He is controller, and he is... 57. That's the right answer. All right, list the passengers. Can you provide me with a listing of the passengers and their rooms, please? Yes, certainly. There we go. Smoker. Are you a smoker? Indeed. Do you smoke e-cigarettes? No, tobacco only. Old school. I would like to reconstruct with your help the events of last night. Monsieur Ratchet retired to bed. When? Almost immediately after dinner, sir. Actually, before we left Belgrade. Did anybody go into his compartment after that? His valet, monsieur. Monsieur Masterman. And then his secretary, the young American gentleman. Monsieur Masterman. They're all American, I'm pretty that sure. Is the last time you saw or heard of him? No, monsieur. You forget that Monsieur Ratchet rang his bell around 12.40 a.m. Soon after we had stopped. I knocked at the door, but he called out in French. Ce n'est rien, je me suis trompé. I then left to answer another bell that had just rung. Presence at 1.15 a.m. Where were you at 1.15 a.m.? I was sitting on my little seat at the end of the car, facing up the corridor. Are you sure? I left a little after 1 a.m. to speak about the snow with my colleague Jean in the bar car. I came back later. There was a call. I remember speaking to you. Indeed, I remember. Carry on. It was the American lady, Madame Hobart. She thought she saw a man. She might have seen a man. I mean, she probably did, right? 50 a.m., I made the bed for Monsieur Ratchet's secretary, Monsieur McQueen. He had spent the evening talking with the English Captain Arbuthnot at 2 a.m., I returned to my place and stayed there until dawn. Okay, and the last station. What is the last station Belgrade, right? where we stopped? Vinkovsky. Oh, no. Could someone have come on board? Possibly. I was very busy. Owning to the weather, we were a few minutes late. We left at 12.10 a.m. Okay. All right. We have a mind map for his activity, so I guess we should fill this out. Um, reconstruct the... So at midnight... Well, that goes last there. Okay. Mm, there. 
Hmm. That was 120. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. This. I must admit I know. Fuck. Alright, did I get it wrong? Oh, hang on. There we go. I had those the wrong way around. Okay, not too bad. That happens to me. He's so full of himself, isn't he? Like holy shit. Alright. Okay, so he's he's all done and done. May as well head to the bar and we'll go down this way first of all and start dealing with everyone in here. I can't interrogate everyone yet, it looks like. I don't know if everyone's going to be, like, actually of consequence or not. Um, the other ones... One of them was in the restaurant, right? I think? Isn't he going to freak out when we tell him his fucking... Um... Uh... Boss is dead. Oh, he's not here. Shit. I guess he must be in his room. <laughs> By the way, your boss is dead, and we haven't told you yet. <laughs> it's, I don't know why I find that so funny, but... <laughs> this is obviously serious shit. I like the fact that no one's fucking told him. Alright, where's Mrs. Hubbard, though? Should be in here, right? Good morning, madam. I am Hercule Poirot. Caroline Hubbard. What can I do for you, Mr. Poirot? I am the bearer of unfortunate news. It's obvious with all the commotion that something has happened. Madame Hubbard, I am afraid your neighbor, Monsieur Ratchet, was murdered last night. <gasps> oh my god! I knew it! I knew it! She did it! Kill her! I to ask you some questions, but first, may I inspect your room? Of course, yes, you must. All right, so she is American, housewife, 60. Yeah. That was easy. She's a socialite. All right, so this is the lock from the other side. This door connects to Monsieur Ratchet's compartment. It was latched on this side. The luxury of the Orient Express is present in every detail. This is a really nice sink, I will say. I would say one of the nicest sinks that I've ever seen. I mean, I'm not an expert on sinks, but you know. Here is a jacket button. It bears the logo of the Orient Express. That's a bit weird. Why would she have that? Another golden moustache to treasure. Well, I'm glad I found the golden moustache, guys. Otherwise, it could have been a deal breaker, I think. Uh, last night. Madame, please tell me about last night. The murderer was right here in my compartment. I woke up. All in the dark it was. I was just so scared I couldn't scream. I pressed the call button. I pressed and pressed. I heard footsteps running in the corridor, then a knock on my door. Come in, I screamed. And I switched on the lights at the same time. And would you believe it? There wasn't a soul How there. the fuck would this have happened? I think he went back into the other compartment. How do I know where he went? I had my eyes shut tight. The conductor came in. I guess he I could have easily done that. What had happened, and he didn't seem to believe me. I asked him to search the room, but he found nothing. I told the conductor to look at the door between the compartments, and sure enough, it wasn't bolted. Well, I soon saw to that. I told him to bolt it, then and there. Okay, so the murderer tried to escape into this room. She caused the panic because she was awake. He ran back and then she locked it. But how did he get out the room in that case? Because it's like a locked room murder then, right? How is it you didn't bolt the door between the two compartments? But I had. Well, as a matter of fact, I asked that Swedish lady, um, Olsen, uh, Greta, if it was bolted. And she said it was. How was it you could not see for yourself? I was already in bed. And my toiletry bag was hanging on the hook of the door. I couldn't see the latch from where I was. What time was it when you asked her to do this for you? Oh, it must have been around 10.30 or 10.45 p.m. She'd come along to see if I had an aspirin. But instead of opening my door, she opened Mr. Ratchet's door by mistake. 
He said something quite rude, like, Not a chance, lady, you're too old. <laughs> it shocked her. She came in. I told her where to find the aspirin, and she got it out of my toiletry bag. Oh, poor girl, she didn't have a good night. The same could be said for Monsieur Ratchet. It appears Mademoiselle Olsen may be the last person to see Ratchet alive. Uh, H-embroidered handkerchief. Is this your handkerchief? No, not at all. Yet it is embroidered with an initial H. And your name, I don't Pyro. Care. It's not mine, and I would certainly never buy something so impractical as that frilly thing. Smoker? Are you a smoker? No, definitely not. Filthy habit. The button. I found a jacket button on your table. It looks like it belongs to a train employee. The button bears the logo of the Orient Express. Well, of course, the conductor came in last night, but he didn't go near that table. Still, it's a safe bet that it belongs to the conductor. I'll check his jacket later, to be sure. Okay. I'm not finished inspecting your room, if you don't mind. What are we missing? We missing something with the sink that I didn't see before? Like, why did we? Why are we opening this? Oh, let's didn't do this before. Hmm, I can't open this at all. Oh, we just took it. The toiletry bag. Okay. Let's see if Mrs. Rubard was telling the truth about the latch of the... Ah, oh, we're going to cover it up. Maybe? I don't really know what we're doing here. Ah, uh, okay. This hook is probably where Mrs. Rubard hung her toiletry bag. It wouldn't cover the thing. I can see the latch very well from so here. So why would she lie? Even with the toiletry bag attached. I'll have to clear that up with Mrs. Rubard. Yeah, that's weird. Like, why would she lie about that? Mrs. Rubard, you told me that the door connecting the two <laughs> compartments was closed, correct? Yes, it was, as I told you. I was already in bed and my toiletry bag was hanging on the hook of the door. I couldn't see the latch from where I was. That's why I asked Miss Olsen to check if it was closed. Confrontation. Where's the lie? Are you sure everything you've told me is accurate, Madame Hubbard? Of course. I have an excellent memory. Mrs. Hubbard, I... Tested putting your toiletry bag on the door hook as you told me. From your bed, you can easily see the latch on the door. The toiletry bag does not hide the latch at all. Are you saying I'm lying? It may have been stuck somehow in a different position. Or I may not have seen it in the darkness. Or I didn't think to look. You irritating oh, Wow. Me. Details matter, madame. A man has been most savagely murdered. You will excuse me if I attempt to separate the truth from the false. That's right, Get smack my her down. Toiletry bag and focus on who entered my compartment. Probably after killing Mr. Ratchet. Madame Ivard is a force to be reckoned with, but I suspect I'm not done with her. Okay. Thank you for your assistance, madame. The killer avoided Mr. Michel. Select two elements to help juice how the killer avoided being seen by Mr. Michelle. I mean... This is wrong. Hmm. But I'm never far from the truth. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So he was not there. The murderers ever take advantage of Mr. Michel's absence to escape without being seen at 1.15 a.m. While Monsieur Michel was chatting with Monsieur Fauché in the bar car between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m., the murderer could have escaped Ratchet's room without... Yeah, but it doesn't explain how the room was locked from the other side. Well. It's a locked room murder. Like, because it's bolted, because he had to break the door down later on. 
Is Mr. Michelle a suspect? Is Mrs. Hubbard a suspect? These are our opinions at the moment. I don't think she's a suspect. I, I think she's too... This direction I don't think either of them are. I don't think either of them are. According to the information I have, this is a solid choice. At the moment, I don't believe either of them are a suspect. But I've still got to interrogate the two Americans. It's been very good though, this. Excellent, in fact. How do I save the game? I just realized I haven't saved this entire time. Oh, shit! If the game had crashed, that would have been it! <laughs> because I have not... <laughs> I didn't save the entire time. Holy shit. That's the first time I saved. <laughs> Alright, it's been several weeks since I last played this, and we're getting back into the swing of things as I'm recording this now fully for a long play. The first few hours I did on stream, but from now on we are going in brand new again. Alright, what are my objectives? Interrogate Ratchet's valet, interrogate Ratchet's secretary. Interrogate Mr. Michel. Ratchet and the Sleeping Pills is an interesting line of evidence, too. Alright, this is going to be a long playthrough. I reckon about 10 hours total. So let's, uh... See who we can find and get underway, I guess. Monsieur Edward Masterman, I believe. May I ask you some questions? I guess he must know. Mm, I can barely talk. I have a terrible toothache. We have a doctor on board the train. Perhaps... I do not need a doctor. I use essential oils. If you can find my flask of clove oil in my box, I would be grateful. Fine. If you insist, I will help you. This could be a little weighing puzzle suddenly. It is. Oh, no. All right. By the smell, I think that the jojoba oil spilled on the other bottles, leaving their labels illegible. I must find another way to find which one is Masterman's toothache remedy. Okay, so the jojoba one is broken. The weighing scale is soaked in jojoba oil. It's unusable. Ah, this old scale This one that's just conveniently there? All right. To start, I must first arrange the vials from the lightest to the heaviest. Okay. Well, I guess we'll start with red and green. Okay. So green is the lightest so far. Okay. Let's put this one back down there and just weigh these two. See which one's the heaviest. Okay, so the heavy, the lightest so far is black, followed by green. Let's do blue and red. Okay, so the red is he the red is lighter than the blue. Is the yellow lighter than the blue? It is. So blue is the heaviest, and yellow is heavier than red. So this should be the right order. Now that I know the order, I think that I can easily guess which one is the clove oil. Here is Monsieur There Mastermind. we go. It's the one in the middle. God, I'm a genius, guys. Holy shit. Here is your remedy. I hope it will help. Thank you very much, sir. Perfect. Excellent. Ah, well, I can finally speak without too much pain. Wow, that's fast I'm ready acting. To answer your questions. <clears throat> you are Monsieur Ratchet's valet? Yes, sir, that is correct. Were you told that your employer was murdered? Yes, sir. A very shocking occurrence. He's dealing with this remarkably well. All right, well, nationality American, profession a valet, age 39. I was going to say, he's not 66. He's that's just born. I can't say. All right, let's interview. At what hour did you last see Monsieur Ratchet? It must have been around 9 p.m., sir. That or a little after. I went to bed around 10.30 p.m., same as the person who shares my room. 
Mr. Foscarelli. He almost immediately began snoring. What did you do then? I read, sir, and I spent a while soothing my toothache with clove oil and listening to the snoring. Did you hear anything during the night? Yes. My roommate snoring. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think he probably Are saw anyone in this guy. Yes, sir. I have a cigarette now and then to relax. Tell me about your employer, Monsieur Hatchet. I've been working for him for nine months. I should not wish to speak ill of the dead, but he was uh, not a gentleman, sir. Did you know that he had enemies? Yes, sir. I heard him discussing some threatening letters, sir, with Mr. McQueen. Did he mention these letters to you? He had been reading a letter when I came in. He asked me if I was the one who put it in his compartment. I told him that I had done no such thing, and he should report it to the police at the next station. How did he respond? He laughed, sir. <laughs> You're joking. I do not joke, sir. <laughs> Forgive me. I can see you do not. Was he taking sleeping pills? Always when traveling by train, sir. He said he couldn't sleep otherwise. Last night he asked me to give him two. I did so, along with a glass of water. He dissolved them in the water. Did you see him drink the water? No, sir. I left right <laughs> after I gave him the pill. Okay, interesting. Was Monsieur Ratchet a smoker? No. He finds smokers disgusting. Can you tell me again why you gave sleeping pills to Monsieur Ratchet? Yes. I gave him the pills because when he takes the train, he has trouble sleeping. The letter must have worried him. He specifically asked me to prepare the sleeping pills. I didn't see him drink the water with the This pills guy's pretty believable, but I don't know if he's bad or not. Confrontation. When he takes training, he has trouble sleeping. The letter must have worried him. He specifically asked me to prepare the sleeping pills. I didn't see him drink the water with the pills in. I actually don't know because I can't remember what the he last is thing happened. Dying, and I will prove it. Oh. Monsieur. I believe you are not telling me the truth. Okay. What? How can you say that? Scream in the we night? We heard Monsieur Ratchet call out during the night around 20 to 1. It's doubtful he called out after he took the sleeping pills, but it's possible he took them later. He asked me to make his drink for him. Maybe he drank it later. That's true, but it doesn't explain why Ratchet would want to take sleeping pills later that night. Hmm. He received threatening letters. One, it seems, last night. Did you know he had a gun under his pillow? And even asked for my help to watch over him? I find it strange that he asked you for sleep. That is a bit weird. When he was afraid for his life and prepared to defend himself. I'm sure I don't know. Maybe to calm his nerves. Maybe out of habit. You're gonna sneeze, guys. no sense. Wait, please. Isn't it possible that Mr. Ratchet asked me to prepare the pills, but didn't plan to drink them for some reason? It is possible. But I am a student of character, monsieur, and the Monsieur Ratchet you describe is not the man I met. If you'll excuse me, my toothache is getting worse again. I'm afraid this time you must prepare your own clove oil. Okay. He ended up being a bit more sus than I thought he was initially. Interesting. All right, well, there's that. I believe I am addressing Monsieur Hector McQueen. Guilty as charged. I beg your pardon? Oh, sorry. Just an expression. Uh, my father used to say it. You must have had an interesting childhood. I am Hercule Poirot. No need to be modest. You're a detective. You are Monsieur Ratchet's secretary? I am Mr. Ratchet's secretary. Just over a year. I mainly take care of translating certain texts for him. Mr. Ratchet only speaks English. Prepare yourself for a shock. Your employer, Monsieur Ratchet, is dead. So they got him after all. What do you mean? You are assuming he was murdered? I know he had enemies. It's not as bad as having enemies, hmm? What can you tell me about Monsieur Ratchet? He was American. He was an antiques dealer. I don't know much more. Mr. Ratchet never talked about himself or his life, but I think Ratchet wasn't his real name. 
And he left the United States to run away from something or someone. Yes? He started getting letters, threatening letters. Do you still have them? I have one. Did you know that Monsieur Ratchet had asked for my help? Asked you? No, I didn't know. He knew he was in danger. When did you last see him? Last night around 10 o'clock, I should say. Did you like your employer, Monsieur McQueen? No, I did not. He was, I'm sure, a, a cruel and dangerous man. Interesting. So everyone fucking hates this guy. Let's look about the letter. Can you give me this letter, please? Of course. Here it is. He had it in his pocket. Time to die. Wasn't subtle, was it? Let's be honest. The night of the crime. Can you tell me your movements last night? Bowel movements. I went back to my compartment. I read a little. In Belgrade, I went out onto the platform to smoke, but it was cold. I quickly went back in. I then went to Mr. Ratchet's compartment to take some dictation for him. I left around 10 o'clock. I saw Captain Arbuthnot. We ended up chatting in my compartment. Then we went out on the platform to quickly stretch our legs at Dinkovsky. He left around 2 o'clock. Thank you. I will need to check Monsieur McQueen's story with Captain Arbuthnot. Which is reasonable. All right, Ratchet's diary. I found a <laughs> diary in Monsieur Ratchet's safe. Did you know about it? I kept a business appointment book, but I know he had a personal diary as well. That looks like it. Okay. Smoker. Are you a smoker? Yes, I smoke cigarettes. I've tried to quit, but... A lot of people smoke on this train for the year that it's set in. Was Monsieur Ratchet a smoker? No, no, he hated the Okay, smell, so that corroborates so. that. All right, so we have quite a lot of evidence that he isn't the one that had the cigarette or the vape or whatever it was. Okay. Interesting. Oh, can I fast travel? Nah. It was worth a try. Okay, so we interviewed those two. We should head back and we got to speak to everyone else now. That, I mean, we, we really have to interview everyone about this, right? There's only like so many people on the fucking train. Like, this is a really exclusive club, as it were. This is the murder room, right? Oh, whose room is this? Is this ours? The mustache comb oh, it is. came <laughs> unruly nuts. We do need that mustache comb, Mr. Poirot. And this is his room with the murdered victim. Okay, yep. And this is the ladies' room. We already interviewed her. I guess we should talk to this dude if we haven't already. I can't remember if I spoke to him. Missing button. I found a button from an Orient Express staff jacket. Did you lose one by any chance? No, monsieur. As you can see, I have all my buttons. It is not mine. Interesting. That really narrows it down, by the way, to who it could be if, they, if it's actually related to that. Alright, who in here do I need to horrifically grill? Not these two. Or her. Please, do me the courtesy of leaving me alone, if you will. No problem. So, Poirot, I hope you are progressing in your investigation. I have not finished yet, but it is progressing, yes. I still have many questions that must be answered. I'll report to you as soon as I can. Okay. I feel like we've spoke to everyone. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can add to what I've already told you. Just refreshing my memory as to who all these people are, by the way. Can't talk to him, even though he has buttons, right? So he could be a suspect. That's something I do find strange, right? Because he definitely could be. All right, what am I meant to be doing? Let's look at my objectives. Ratchet talk. What can be deduced from the exchange with Mr. Michelle on the evening of the murder? Oh, shit, I can do this. All right. <clears throat> Ratchet apparently spoke in French during the night of the murder. Ratchet only speaks English. Well, that's wrong, right? Hmm. So, two elements of interest in the account of Mr. Michelle on the night of the murder. I do not think that's the right answer. Okay. Ratchet called Mr. Michelle at 12.37 a.m. Murderer pretended Ratchet was still alive at 12.37 a.m. 
Oh shit! The murderer may have impersonated Ratchet by calling Monsieur Michel to make it seem that Ratchet was still alive at 12 But he didn't speak French. That's really cool. My little grey cells did not. Alright, um, the hypothesis of the night of the crime. Is Mrs. Hubbard a suspect? I don't think so. This is the most likely answer. But this is our own conclusion, so it doesn't necessarily mean shit. Okay, the hypothesis here. What is the most likely hypothesis? Ratchet takes sleeping pills. The murderer enters Ratchet's room. He kills him with a gun and hides it under his pillow. He disguises the crime as a crime of passion with a knife. I don't think this is true at all. Ratchet takes sleeping pills. I don't think that either. They all say take sleeping pills. The murderer enters Ratchet's room. He stabs him with a knife. He then calls Mr. Michelle to make believe that Ratchet's still alive. He opens the window to escape. The train is stuck in the snow. He waits for Mr. Michelle to take a break to leave the room. I think this one. My little grey cells did not let me down. Apparently I'm correct. Is Mr. McQueen a suspect? No, I don't think so. According to the information I have, this is a solid choice. Is Mr. Mar I think he is. Very well, I choose to go this way. I mean, this doesn't mean anything. This is just our own conclusions. Like, we'll have our own things. I think we can just report the situation to Book now. I think we actually have done everything. All right. Oh, well, he's back here. So let's go and uh, tell him. Tell her the case is solved! I don't think it's solved. Considering this is a, a long game and we are early on. Book. Book, ma chérie. So, my friend, have you found our killer? Not yet, but I will tell you what I have learned. Yeah, this is just Please. a supposition. Our assassin could have gotten on the train at Vinkovsky disguised as a conductor. Entered Ratchet's room and killed him. Then he walked out through Madame Hubbard's connecting door, where he lost a button from his jacket. He had to wait for Monsieur Michel to be absent. He waited too long. The train had left the station. He was trapped aboard. Indeed. He had opened the window to make it look that he'd escaped that way. However, if he waited until the train stopped again due to snow, his footprints would have been found. The murderer is still among us. Uh, among us? The train. There's a problem with the second class toilets. What now? All morning passengers have been complaining that the door is locked. So I went to check. I knocked, but no one answered. I didn't think I should open it without speaking to you first. You did well, Monsieur Michel. Lead the way. The murderer is taking a really long shit. Holy shit. I use my master key. But who is she? Is she alive? Oh she shit. She's breathing. She's the and one from before. She's dead. Isn't she our murderer? That, my friend, is what we must find. Oh, she's the one from the platform that was spying on them, right? I did wonder what happened to her because she was at the thing. Second class. The ticket reads Joanna Locke, traveling in compartment 105. Okay. So she possibly was Please. a Can you hear me? Hmm? Hmm. She's breathing. Her pulse is strong. There is no sign of physical violence. She's just this sleeping. This woman is sleeping very soundly. Uh, she's alive. This woman is sound asleep. Given her location, I would say she has been drugged and deposited. Oh, here. is that what the... Well, at least it's not another murder on my train. The train is, of course, full. Monsieur, the list I gave you indicates that Hildegard Schmidt shares her compartment. I will want to talk to her later. For now, we will concentrate on this mysterious young lady. Let's return her to her more comfortable. She's been drugged with the sleeping Good pills idea. from the other room. Pierre, locate this woman. I'm fascinated by this because I don't know the story Listen. at all. So this is all exciting new stuff. I will question her when she wakes up. Please let me know what you learn. 
harem. Mademoiselle Locke's compartment is one or five. I suggest we return her to her more comfortable bed. Yes, hopefully she will awaken soon. All right. Investigate Joanne Locke. I need to know more about this person. If I search the room, I'll find something. I will say this game's really good at telling you what to do, like what clear route you need to do to choose the, you know, the investigation. A cup of tea with white residue at the bottom. Well, she's been drugged for sure, as we, we already established. All right, let's have a look through her shit, as a true detective would do. She has, how you say, a briefcase. Oh, it's locked with a number. Okay, a numeric code. What's in here? Anything? Oh, this is sussy wussy. And a wagon lee conductor's jacket. And the button is missing. Oh shit! I don't think she's. The, I don't think she's the killer, by the way, because I think if she was the killer, it's just too obvious, right? Like, but interesting nonetheless. And it's possible someone drugged her and then took it, right? Hmm. There's got to be something here that is also useful. I don't see anything. How are we going to work out that code? Yeah, I have no idea what the code is. There's got to be something else in here, right? But I don't know if there is. Like, everything else looks like it's completely shut off. What do you think? I don't like the fact you're blocking me in, by the way. Your job, right, is to be less of an asshole, okay? Nothing on the bottom of the cup, either. This makes no sense. Oh my god, look at the close-up of his moustache. His moustache is amazing, alright? Hercule Pyro making women moist along around the globe. A briefcase. And I, a said that. I can't do anything else with this. Are you sure, game? Like, where else would I get the code? I believe Kate. No, same shit. I can't... Hmm. I have no idea what to do here. First time I've been completely stumped, I feel, actually. Only found one of four as well. What the fuck? There's nothing else in this room! Hang on, do I have the ticket? Hints. So for the first time in the game, I had to look up what to do. Um, this briefcase here, you have to listen to the sounds. So, Poirot, any luck so far? And if he talks over wait, you. I can ask Jean to make you some coffee. There we go. Oh, shit. Oh, we got a gun. She has a gun. Come, come, Poirot. Criminals are often known to carry one. Ratchet was stabbed, not shot. But then why take it on the train? This badge says that Joanna Locke is an American detective with the Berkshire Police Department in Massachusetts. An American police officer? Oh. Oh, shit. So she was investigating him, I guess. <laughs> her driver's license confirms her identity. She is American. These are fake IDs. It's certain. I don't think so. Mademoiselle Locke seems very interested in our victim. Of course. She has studied her target. Possibly. Uh, possibly, but unlikely. I think she's probably, you know, 
That's the cat. The stuffed animal is the same as in the photo found at the crime scene. Interesting. What a coincidence. Mademoiselle Locke appears to have been investigating Monsieur Hatchet. Okay. Look, she's waking up. Thanks to you, I would not be surprised if our murder victim were also waking up. I... What? Was he just too loud or some shit? Is that what he's implying? Oh, my head. What's all the yelling about? Who are you? Give me a good reason why you should not be in handcuffs. I can give you a reason, Book. Whose handcuffs will we use? I have none. Do you? Well, I... You are Joanna Locke, mademoiselle? Yeah, yes, um... Joanna Locke. I'm, um... I'm a detective. Berkshire, Massachusetts Police. I have found your credentials, mademoiselle. And I know who you are. Mr. Poirot. Then if the introductions are complete, perhaps the explanations may begin. I... I I'll try. It's simple, really. I... I'm on the trail of a murderer. Oh, finish chapter two. It was not in the book, apparently. I do like Agatha Christie stuff. I need to. I, I need to like listen to audio books and shit. I had just been promoted to detective after five years on patrol. It was my first time on a major case. It had been a month since Daisy Armstrong was kidnapped. The Armstrongs were desperate for some sign of hope. I was there only for paperwork to fill in some blanks. Oh shit! We're playing as her. Oh wow, this is... I... I should go through the case file one more time. Alright. The Daisy Armstrong case. Daisy Armstrong, a three-year-old girl, daughter of John and Sonia Armstrong. Victim was taken sometime on the evening of February 24th, 2019. The abduction took place at the Armstrong residence where a reception was being held. Miss Moreau, da Daisy's nanny, discovered the child's appearance at 10.45pm. The investigation is now part of a pile of investigations, and my captain sent me here just to dot some I's and cross some T's. A ladder was found outside the child's bedroom window. It was used to remove Daisy from the house. The window, usually locked from the inside, was found open. Four-wheel drive tracks were found in the woods near the house. No party guest drove a 4 by 4 The crime was audacious. How could the kidnapper know which was the window of Daisy's room? No, they could use a ladder to reach it. And no, they could enter the room without being seen. I, uh, this is the ransom note, I guess. After law enforcement protocols were in place, the Armstrongs followed the ransom demand instructions and paid the ransom of $1 million on March the 1st, 2019. Since then, there's been no further communication from the kidnappers, and Daisy's not been returned. The investigation's ongoing. The misspellings are clearly on purpose, and they didn't return the child when the ransom was paid. All right, so we've got John Armstrong, retired colonel of the British Armed Forces. We're hosting a social event to raise money for a local museum. There were many people, some of them total strangers to us, and we were all very busy. Then we heard Suzanne, Daisy's nanny, screaming. It must have been 10.45 p.m. or 10.50 p.m. My wife and I went upstairs to Daisy's room. Suzanne was crying hysterically. Daisy was no longer in her bed, and on her pillow was a ransom note. How could the child be taken with so many people in the house? Sonia Armstrong, a housewife. The last time I saw Daisy was about 10.30pm when I went to check on her in her room. I noticed Suzanne was not around, but Daisy was sleeping peacefully. I stayed with her for 10 minutes or so. I assumed Suzanne would return soon, so I rejoined the party. I can't imagine the pain her parents felt when they realized Daisy was gone. How are they going to feel when they realize I have no answers for them? Only more questions. I guess it's That's failed. That's why I'm here. A damn computer glitch. Or somebody pushed delete instead of save. Whatever happened, we lost the nanny's deposition. So my entire contribution to the investigation is to take it again. Okay. The phone record of the night of the kidnapping. The last call was for 911. Okay. Interesting. This is really... I don't think this is in the book, right? Well, the trophy was called not in the book. A topographical map. Often more important than a road map in these mountains. I actually have no idea what that means. <laughs> I'm guessing it's like the the height of shit. <coughs> Very nice mansion. Hi. Good evening. Colonel Armstrong? Yes. 
You're the detective they phoned about. Joanna Locke. I don't remember you. I'm newly assigned to the case. It's about time more detectives were involved. My wife, Sonia, she... She hasn't been herself. Every day is a waking nightmare for us. Tell me you've uncovered something new. I'm here to speak to your daughter's nanny. There was a computer problem. Her earlier statement has been lost. Oh, I see. We had hoped. Well, do as you wish. I won't be far if you need me. But that was a bit of a letdown, considering that, you know, they're probably waiting for, like, news of everyone. All right, I've got to find the maid. This is a lovely house. Holy shit. Didn't expect to be playing as another character in this, I'm going to be honest with you, but here we go. Here we are. Leon, in France. Hello, are you Suzanne Moreau, Daisy's nanny? Yes. I'm Joanna Locke, a detective working on Daisy's case. Is there any news? I'm afraid not. How can I help you? I'm really sorry. I'm afraid I have to take your statement again concerning the evening of Daisy's disappearance. There was a computer problem. Your statement was accidentally deleted. Of course. I want to help any way I can. All right, summary of the night. Tell me about that night in your own words. The Armstrongs had a party to raise money for a museum, I think. Mrs. Armstrong is on her board. I was in charge of Daisy. I stayed with the little one all evening, playing with her and reading books to her. She couldn't sleep with all the noise and the comings and goings. Okay, that makes sense. When did you notice Daisy was missing? I was only gone five minutes to, to phone my mother. She's in the hospital. When I returned, Daisy wasn't in her bed. I thought she might have gone to look at the party, but then I saw the handsome note on her pillow. I screamed and screamed. I couldn't stop. Did you notice anything unusual before that? I was with Daisy all evening. Finally, she fell asleep. I didn't see anyone else or notice anything in particular. Okay. Do you have any idea who did I this? I don't think she no. did. I can't see who could have done such a horrible thing. The Armstrongs are such good people. Like my own family. Thank you for giving me your statement again. I'll get back to you if I have any questions. I won't be far. Okay. Okay. I have Suzanne's statement. But her answers need some checking. Check the facts in the file in the mind map. Okay. All right. Select one element which does not match Miss Moreau's testimony about her phone call. I guess one of these. Um, the Armstrongs hosted a party. Last of my saw days was 10.30. I know Suzanne was not around, but Daisy was sleeping peacefully. This information does not correspond to what Suzanne told me. Suzanne said she left Daisy alone for five minutes, but Mrs. Armstrong says she stayed with Daisy for a while and Suzanne did not return. Interesting. That's it. No rookie mistake there. It's so weird that, you know, so we got to cross check the stories. <laughs> All right. I guess we should talk to Miss Moreau if we can find her, right? No idea where she is, obviously. In this fucking massive fucking house. There she is. Mrs. Armstrong, my name is Mrs. Joanna Locke. Armstrong, I I'm mean. a detective investigating the kidnapping of your daughter. May I talk to you? When is your baby due? Mrs. Armstrong? Sonia? I don't want to talk. I just want to see my daughter again. That's all that matters. Poor well, woman. Great. Wonderful. Everything looks okay here. Send them in the file which can confront Mrs. Armstrong about. No? Nothing shocks me here. Everything looks okay here. Nothing shocks me here. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing here or what it wants me to do. Everything looks okay here. Nothing shocks me here. The detective gets it right. I have no idea what I did. Show the photo of Daisy. Let me show you this. 
Daisy, my little Daisy, I miss her so much. How good it is to see her face. I can't imagine the pain you're feeling right now. She loved her little stuffed animal, Luffy. She took him every What a shit name for a stuffed animal. took it as well. They didn't have to. That means they wouldn't hurt her, doesn't it? Every lead will be followed up. You have my word on that. Thank you. I shouldn't lose hope. She's heavily pregnant. Somehow. I know it isn't my case. But I just made a promise. And I mean to keep it. Tell me about the night Daisy was taken. Especially anything about your daughter and Suzanne Moreau. Apart from seeing to our guests, I took a moment to check on Suzanne and Daisy in Daisy's room. Yeah. Suzanne wasn't there, but Daisy was asleep. I sat with her for 10 minutes or so. Suzanne didn't return while I was there. So there is a lie there no or a contradiction. For her to sit there all night when Daisy is asleep. I went back downstairs. Okay, so that doesn't Do cross-check. you know where I can find Miss Moreau? She's in her room. We literally just spoke to her. Last door on the left. You fucking weirdo. May I come back? If I have more questions? Of course. Anything I can do. I mean, you just oh, refused to answer my fucking questions. Don't match. I should recheck my file and track. Phone numbers. That is not exactly what Suzanne told me earlier. It is not. Suzanne she said was on the phone more than five. Minutes. She was on the phone for like fucking half an hour, hey, thirty-five minutes. Good detective after all. So Suzanne is just lying. So yeah, Suzanne's lying about quite a lot of things here. She was on the phone for ages. She could just be trying to cover for the fact she feels guilty about it, but that's not an acceptable thing to be doing in this situation. If I understand you correctly. You left Daisy when she was not asleep? The party was very loud. Daisy was too wound up to sleep. I read her a motley mule detective story to try and put her to sleep. Daisy finally fell asleep. Right before motley mule solved his case in the book I was reading her. I had to make a quick phone call. No more than five minutes. But when I came back, Daisy was gone. Okay. Which of these sentences contain a life? A lot. I mean, I'll, I think quite a few of these. Are you sure you were only gone for five minutes? Five, six, what does it matter? It was very quick. You say you were only away five or six minutes, but Mrs. Armstrong says she was alone there more like 10 minutes. And the phone record shows that you stayed on the call for more than 30 minutes, way longer than you said. My mother is extremely ill. It's difficult for me. I may have lost track of time. When I came back, Daisy had disappeared. It must have been a coincidence. You Unless your mother precise, did it. Suzanne, a little girl's life is at stake. Why are you doing this? I didn't do anything wrong. I would never hurt Daisy. I need to check Suzanne's story. She's panicking. I should see if the Armstrongs can confirm what Suzanne told me. Verify Miss Moreau's story. Okay, so we've got to see if we can catch her in more lies. I spoke with Suzanne. She was phoning her mother. That's why you didn't see her when you went to check on Daisy. Yes, her mother. I tried to call the poor woman earlier that week, but the hospital said she's been in a medically induced coma for more than Excuse two me? months. Suzanne told me she called her mother, but she would have known her mother was in a coma. Oh my god, what a massive fucking lie again! Reconstruct the facts. Mrs. Moreau goes to make a telephone call. Alright, the kidnapper places the ladder under the window. The kidnapper enters the front door, goes upstairs, grabs Daisy, and then leaves via the ladder. That is a great detective job. I am a genius, after all. The kidnapper. Sorry, I'm doing more here. Oh. The places a ladder under the window to Daisy's room. Then he joins the party. Just one guest in the crowd. He somehow knows when Suzanne leaves the room, then sneaks upstairs. He opens Daisy's window, carries her down the ladder, and vanishes. Makes sense. We have another mind map, though. A suffering mother. 
Call Mrs. Moreau's mother to check her alibi. Oh, can I look at it in the report here? Uh, two seven hundred. No, two one four zero. Score one for the good guys. The number you have called is not in service at this time. Please hang up and dial again, or contact your service provider. Okay, this is incredibly sussy wussy. Called is not in service. A hospital? This is very sussy wussy. Suzanne? I should see if the Armstrongs can uh, confirm what Suzanne told me. I guess I gotta to talk to Mr. Armstrong too, but it's obvious that she's being a massive liar, pants on fire. She's being a massive liar, pants on fire, as Pyro would say. Pyro? I'm making him sound like a like a fart, like he's using a flamethrower. How are you doing? Are you holding up? You know, in the military, you're supposed to have the stiffest of upper lips. The Desert War taught me that soon enough. But this, it's difficult. Damned difficult. Harder on my good lady, of course. Miss Moreau? Do you know where I can find Miss Moreau? Her room is upstairs across the hall from... Daisy's. She seldom leaves it. Did you see Miss Moreau during the party? I remember seeing her at some point, but otherwise, no. I was too busy with my guests. Wear the smile, shake the proffered hand. Miss Moreau told me she called her mother. Well, why not? I believe they are very close, and the poor woman is not well. She's also very she unconscious. Needs some experimental treatment that isn't available yet in France. Okay. I won't be long. Take whatever time you need. Mrs. Armstrong told me Mrs. Murray and her mother had been in a coma for several months and the phone number was no way she was talking to her mum. Okay, we should probably confront her then, right? Because this all seems like bollocks. I'm on to you, nanny. The number you called that night is no longer in service. I I don't understand. That's that's the number the hospital gave me to call my mother's room. You told me you were on the phone with your mother when Daisy was abducted. As we said earlier, I didn't pay attention and was on the phone longer than I said. But since my mother is very ill, she had to leave her hometown, Lyon, because the treatment is not approved That lines up. France. She is in an hospital. In Boston for a special treatment. Unless someone impersonated I her, her mother? To check on her. When I came back, Daisy was gone. I'll never forgive myself. Um. Are you sure you called your mother? Yes. Every night since she was admitted in December. Coma. Suzanne, I think you really care for Daisy. If you do. Then tell me the truth. You can't have been calling your mother while she's in a coma. My mom really is in the hospital in Boston. She really is in a coma. I... I wasn't calling her. I was on the phone with my boyfriend, Noah. Why lie about it? Why are you panicking? Because he's gone. I haven't heard from him since the... Oh my god, he definitely did it! I'm afraid that he's somehow connected to Daisy's disappearance. That he was just using me somehow but i swear i talked to him yes for more like 30 minutes that night so he couldn't have kidnapped daisy at the same time we were talking but he could have kept you talking so someone else could take daisy yes you can see why i lied can't you i was afraid you'd suspect me of having something to do with it you can understand this is a massive yes. breakthrough suzanne i want to believe you but you've made it harder to find daisy do you realize that oh my god what have I done? What's most important is not what you've done, but what you do now. Go. I'll be back to talk to you. No more lies, Suzanne. For Daisy. No more lies. Noah. The name might lead us to that little girl. I am on this case now. Whether my captain wants me to be or not. 
Mm. An Eiffel Tower keychain, but no key. Okay. I oh, was gonna go through Small her shit. Box. By the size, I'm guessing earrings. I expect Suzanne must have gone through a lot of tissues these past weeks. I'm so the chair, holy shit. <laughs> Les Miserables. What's in the glass case? Oh, big surprise. Glasses. Excellent. I will say, they put a lot of effort into the voice acting for this game. Like a shitload. Not quite sure what I'm meant to be looking at here. Okay, French and English dictionary. Something I can't read. Romeo and Juliet. Oh, the Motley Mule detective book she was reading on the day to the kid. A locked diary? Let's see if I can shine some light on its secrets. Okay, that's important. We'll come back to that. Uh, a bunch of books in French. Excellent. Okay, so we need to find something. Lyon. In France. What a lovely looking city. A Lyon is not that nice, by the way. Now here I am on a real one. There are, there are lovely cities in France. I just want to clarify that. But Lyon is... Not one I would rate, I'm going to be honest with you, as a, as like a, a lovely, lovely city. I would say it's, uh, oh, hang on, there was something to investigate there. There's the key. Or maybe not. A card from the florist. It's signed N. For Noah. For Noah way did she believe that this wasn't a setup. We're not done searching this room yet. We're missing a key. But the problem is, where are we going to find the fucking key? Because it's not on the keychain. Can we just brute force it? A locked, a diary? locked diary? Let's see if I can, shine, if some I can light shine some light on it. Ignore that, guys. I just broke everything. A toy train. Now here I am on a real one. Hang on, what the fuck? Oh yeah, because we're narrating this from the train. I was like, we are not on a train right now, but I guess we technically are. I feel like... Am I just missing something? Can we open this? Oh my god, we can. The key's in there. Why put a key in a jewelry box? Sussy wussy. Okay. Now we can open the diary. In we go. Hmm, that doesn't work. What the fuck? It's not for this? Hmm, that doesn't work. Then what is it for? I'm so confused right now. Does it need the Eiffel Tower attached to it or some shit? I don't fucking know. An Eiffel Tower. What? It, that doesn't make any sense! What am I missing with the key? That doesn't make any fucking sense! I hate it. I hate that. Can we... I don't really know. Oh, does that work? Oh my god, it does. It's a okay, backwards Suzanne. key. Let's see what you haven't told me. Okay. Day at the park with Noah. I can tell he's opening up more and more with me. I chatted on about my job. I told him how much I liked uh, the Armstrongs, especially days. I really feel like he's invested in our relationship. The kind of man so rare to find these days. Valentine's Day, Noah and I went to the Blue Lagoon, our favourite restaurant for lunch. It was wonderful at first, but then something happened. Noah received a text message, I don't know what it was, but he said he had to leave. He wouldn't say anything else, instead we went away to somewhere in the mountains. Finally we arrived at a cabin in the middle of nowhere. He told me to stay in the car. Not very romantic for Valentine's Day. Noah gave me flowers, he's usually very attentive, but despite everything I felt he was more distant today. I hope he is well, I would like to be more present for him, but I don't want to interfere in his private life. 
It's been a while since I wrote in this diary. I haven't had the strength, and I think this is the last time I will write it out. My dear Daisy was kidnapped, and I haven't heard from Noah since that day. It was the night Daisy was taken. He talked and talked. I left Daisy too long, and now she's gone. I thought he loved me, but he was never called again or anything. He hasn't replied to my messages since the night Daisy... I'm lost. It's my fault Daisy's gone. I didn't want to watch over her. I can her. see why Suzanne didn't tell me everything about this, Noah. It's clear when he disappeared that she realized something was very wrong. And should have contacted the authorities immediately. I guess we need to go and interview her a bit more. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what I should do now, though. Just talk to her, maybe? I imagine these flowers must have been beautiful. Who gave them to you? Noah. The gardener. They're getting pretty wilted, but I hate to throw them away. That's just a massive lie! Tell me about your boyfriend. Have you been together long? My boyfriend? Why? He doesn't have anything to do with this. Please, Suzanne, the sooner you answer my question, the sooner we'll be done. His name is Noah Garretti. I met him at a Lunar New Year party in Great Barrington. He... he is a kind and caring person. Although, well, I miss him. He had to go away on business. He should be back. This is just a massive fucking lie! Sympathy and support for the Armstrong family during this difficult time. Like, she's lying through her fucking teeth. I don't really know what else I'm meant to do here, though. I won't be uh, Oh, we can ask whatever time. Oh, we can ask him about the boyfriend. Um, there we go. Know anything about Ms. Moreau's boyfriend? Her boyfriend? I know she went out with someone for a while there. More recently, I saw a man in a 4x4 who would pick her up on her nights off. Oh, well, that correlates with something. car just waited for her. She did seem to spend more time than usual on the phone these past few weeks, but she worked hard. We weren't going to begrudge her what free time she had, since Daisy... since the abduction. She keeps pretty much to herself. I won't be long. Take whatever time you need. So he drives a 4x4. I don't need to look through the file of the 4x4. I understand what this is. Immediately, their 4x4 tracks are here. These tire tracks could well be from Suzanne's boyfriend's 4x4. That's it. No rookie. Confront Moreau about her boyfriend. Okay. I mean, there's plenty of things to confront about. Tread marks of a four wheel drive vehicle were found outside the garden on the night of the kidnapping. Noah drives one, doesn't he? Where is he, Suzanne? If you know anything more about him, you have to tell me. I know what you're thinking, but it's impossible. He was very nice to me. He never did anything to make me suspicious. We went out to eat to the movies. Just like a normal couple, he's not the only man in the Berkshires who drives that kind of car. Confrontation. You really didn't notice anything strange about Noah until he vanished? He could get moody at times, as if he had a lot on his mind. Okay. Valentine's Day. In your Day. diary, you say that Noah took you to a cabin in the mountains on Valentine's Day. You read my diary? Because I I'm fucking sorry, did. But we have to find Daisy. We both want that. So yes, I looked in your diary. I... You're right. He took me to a cabin in the woods. I waited for him in the car. He came out after a few minutes. He was very sweet and apologetic, but... He never explained. We went back to the restaurant for dessert. Did you ever go back to the cabin with him? No, never. So what made Noah drive all the way to a cabin in the middle of nowhere? He left her in the car. Why was he there? This is important. I know it is. I can use Suzanne's directions to the cabin and compare them to the map of the area I have in my car. Find the location of the cabin. Did she tell me? They crossed two bridges and some thick woods. Okay, let's go back and look at the map, I guess. We're going to find Daisy. But I'm guessing it's going to be more complicated than that. Otherwise, why the fuck are we on a train in the fucking Alps getting drugged? 
you know? Thanks to the information Suzanne gave me, I should be able to find the cabin on this map. All right, we let, here's the town. Then cross two bridges. And some thick woods. All right, so. This is thick woods, but no bridges. This is just knows nowhere. So out here, one bridge there, one bridge there, and then some woods. And then past the cornfield on the left. That would have been on the right. Yeah, this one. This is the right way. Then just trees. And more trees. Finally, we stopped outside the cabin. That doesn't really match. Probably not here. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That can't be the right place. I have no idea, guys. I'm completely at a fucking loss. Um... doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. I have no idea where the fucking cabin is, okay? It could be literally anywhere as far as I'm concerned. Let's just press E on every I'm random thing here. and then hopefully we'll get it. I got it. The cabin has to be here. How? I have to find that cabin. I hope I'm not too late. Well, we're going. Excellent. Hey, at least we got out. Okay, here is this famous cabin. So it's pretty sussy wussy. Hello? Is anyone there? Probably wouldn't do that, to be honest with you. If it was just me, I'd have probably got back up. Nobody. I can't just waltz in without a warrant. Yes, you can. This is America. Where you can do lots of things without adhering to the proper procedures. I guess we can't take the axe. At least not yet. Maybe in a bit we can. That barrel is sturdy enough. I could climb on it. There we go. There's the cat plush! You can even see the cat plush from there! It's obviously where they took the fucking kid! Holy shit! It's Daisy's plush toy. If Fluffy is here, the kidnapper has been here. I have to get inside this cabin. Ugh, an old hunting trophy starting to molt. Well, this is getting exciting. Oh, there was a bottle of alcohol there or some shit, but I don't really care that much. Let's go and get the axe. God, this is this is getting exciting. A mall for splitting wood. Perfect for attacking doors. Yeah, no, we could get it now. Now we have a reason. A splitting wall. Just call it an axe. I don't think she's here anymore, but uh, she was here. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> a broken door to investigate. No need for a warrant. Some people seem to have played here before. Okay, so signs of life. The floor is scratched and worn in this area. Mm, the sofa must have been moved a lot. All the more reason to move it now, huh? Damn, it's booby-trapped. If I move, it could go off. And that countdown tells me it wants to go off anyway. Um, I'm panicking right now. I, 
I... Okay. I have no idea what I'm doing. Do we just match them up like this? Apparently so. Okay, are we good? We are not good. What is this? What am I even looking at? I'm panicking. I keep pausing the game because I'm panicking. What's this? What am I doing? Whatever it is, good. Oh no. Did I just die? I did. <laughs> Daisy's dead. Since I'm telling this story to you, Mr. Poirot, you should be able to deduce I didn't blow myself up. Let's see if I can remember how I diffused the bomb. <laughs> That's great! Holy shit! All right, what am I doing? I'm dead again. I have no idea what I'm doing. Since I'm telling this, let's see if I... All right. The top one here seems to be right. Okay. Let's do here. Let's go for the bottom one. And it's not the top one here, so middle. That should do it. There, we did it. Wow, I wonder if that's how close it was. This would have ended my investigation right here. I mean, it ended it multiple times These there. These rods are heading towards the canisters. It must be the trigger for the explosion. I smell a strong, sweet smell. Damn. I think these are filled to the brim with diethyl ether. Incredibly flammable. It looks like the kidnappers wanted to utterly destroy this place and whoever opened this hatch. A wooden crate? I... I have to open it. I don't think she's alive. Oh no. Daisy. No. Fuck. That's I fucked. my discovery of the body. Then there was nothing I could do except protect the site for forensics. That was fucked. The forensics team arrived an hour later, cordoned off the cabin with crime scene tape, and went to work, looking for physical evidence, fingerprints, testing for fluids, DNA, any clues science can uncover. Didn't expect a dead kid story, I'm going to be honest with you. So is Ratchet going to be behind this? Is that what's going to have happened here? They removed Daisy's body. The autopsy would take place in the morning. But I had one more stop to make. Oh, Jesus. Do we have to do this? I mean, we have to do this. <sighs> well, this is going to be really fucking depressing. Why haven't we arrested the fucking maid, by the way? Like, I feel like even if... She should be, like, interrogated heavily, right, at this point, about Noah. Oh, no! Jesus. That was depressing. What a dark chapter. That night, I swore to find the monster who killed that child. Guessing it's Ratchet. All right, we're on chapter four now. Ratchet uh, on... Train S saw me? How? Daisy. How is she still so discombobulated? She just told me a really fucking long story. She was awake. And then she collapsed again. I take the responsibility. She was weaker than I realized. Oh. Lie still while I examine you. Pupils dilated. 
I'm all right. You are far from all right. You have been heavily sedated. Your pulse is very weak. I... I have to... to finish my story. Ratchet can't escape again. Can't escape. Have no fear of that, mademoiselle. Ratchet will not escape. We must hear her story. This woman needs rest. I will let you know when she is recovered enough to continue. But I warn you, it will be some time. I understand, Doctor. Thank you. I have completed my preliminary examination of the deceased. I think that it will interest you. Indeed it will. And I have other witnesses to interrogate. You are right. Let's not put this poor woman in danger. There will be plenty of time for her to finish her story when she has recovered. And really interesting. Means. Tell me the results of your examination. All right, so she is American, she is a police detective, and she is 32. That was easy. Time of death. Can you estimate the time of death? Rigor mortis was advanced but not complete. I estimate the death occurred between midnight and two in the morning. Mm, that tallies with the witness statements I've collected so far. Mm, cause of death was the stab wound, surely, what right? What is the cause of death? Multiple stab wounds to the upper torso. It's odd there are no signs of a struggle that might indicate one of the first wounds was enough to kill him. It seems that Monsieur Rachet had taken sleeping pills during the night. Ah. That would explain the lack of defensive wounds. Ratchet smokes. Mr. McQueen and Mr. Masterman told me that Monsieur Ratchet didn't smoke. Can you confirm this? I can't say without a more extensive post-mortem. Okay, fair enough. Stab wounds. What can you tell me about They the were really stabby. Wounds? I counted 12 in all. One or two are so slight as to be practically scratches. On the other hand, at least three would be capable of causing death. The angle of the wounds is instructive. Most appear to have been struck by a right-handed person. But you see, this one, under the right armpit, it's not a deadly blow, given the depth, but a right-hander couldn't have done it. It was most certainly struck with the left hand. Two people? So, our murderer is left-handed. No, it is more difficult than that, is it not? As you say, Mr. Poirot, some of these other blows are just as obviously right-handed. Hmm. The body has been moved on multiple killers. Do we have a first and second murderer, as the great Shakespeare would put it? The first murderer stabs his victim and exits left, turning off the light. Then a second murderer comes in the dark, does not see his or her work has been done, and stabs a dead body. Magnificent. You think so? <laughs> I'm glad. It sounds to me a little like nonsense. It's possible though, right? Thank you, Doctor. Excellent work under difficult circumstances. Please let me know when I may speak again with Mademoiselle Locke. Of course. What's the best way to find out who is a vape smoker? Offer passage to Even the cigarette. A smoker might be. Okay. Yes, that's certainly a good place to start. All right. What's the best way to find out who's a vape smoker? Book doesn't smoke. I don't remember. I don't fucking know. Yes. I have personally seen some passengers. Have you? I don't recall this at I just all. I have to remember who they were. I have no idea who they were. Um. No. I have no official authority. Yes. I suppose it's likely they will give me the list of who smokes what. Et voila. I feel like that was just bollocks, I'm going to be honest with you that bit. But anyway, whatever. Um, time to do some interrogations, I guess. How is Mademoiselle Locke, Doctor? The vital signs are improving, but she is still unconscious. I understand. 
Thank you for looking after her. All right, he doesn't fucking... He doesn't smoke. But a lot of other people here do. Um, what are the links between Miss Lock and Ratchet? The stuffed animal in the trash and this. Uh, the police officer. And this and this. There we go. Ratchet is in shady That's business. The right answer. Well, we know he's an arsehole and he's probably behind the murder of a child, right? All right, six passengers to interrogate is our next objective. Let's go. I'm really enjoying this. Like, this is excellent. I definitely want to keep doing crime stuff, like, on this channel. I feel like a lot of you, like, this bed we made did really, really well for us. This is our room, isn't it? I don't know why I went in there. I'll start from the back and work my way to the front, I feel, is the best option here. All right, who smokes? Who, well, Most of the passengers pass by the bar during the day. They eat, drink, write. Maybe I can use this information for my investigation. You probably can, Mr. Poirot. What's the best way if I know someone's right-handed or left-handed? Hmm, yes, it could work. He appears to be an observant young man and serves the passengers regularly. Okay, interesting. What's the best way to know someone's right-handed or... Fantastic. Yeah, asking everyone to write something. Yes, if I ask them to write something trivial, they may do it instinctively with their dominant hand. Yeah, instead of being aware it's part of the investigation. Um... Right. So we've got to test everyone if yeah, they're right or left-handed. Remember which people use their right or left hand. God, this is going to be a pain in the fucking ass. Hey, voila. All right. Mademoiselle Debenham, I have a few questions for you. Of course. Um. Last night. Let's start with your movements last night. There's little to tell. I went to bed and slept. Did you know the man who was killed? I saw him for the first time during lunch yesterday. Did you notice anything about him? Well, if I believed in auras, I might say he seemed dark. I'm an empath. Would you mind writing your address on this paper for me? Not at all. Uh, what's her dominant hand? Right. That's it. Mademoiselle Debenham is right-handed. Okay. Do you recall what time Mademoiselle Olsen went to get some aspirin from Madame Hubbard? I remember glancing at the clock. She left our room just after 10.30 p.m. Was she away for a long time? About five minutes. That confirms what Madame Hubbard told me. Okay. Do you smoke by any chance? No, I never have. Okay. Do you own a scarlet nightgown? No, it isn't mine. Who's then? I don't know. What do you mean? You do not say, I have no such thing. You say, it isn't mine. Meaning that you know who it belongs to, am I correct? Oh, I see. No. I woke up this morning about 5am with the feeling that the train had been standing still for a long time. I opened the door and I saw someone in a scarlet kimono some way down the corridor. Her back was turned. It was impossible to see who it was. I understand. Okay, so that's probably really important Thank you information. Thank your assistance, Mademoiselle. God, I really, you really feel like you're interrogating them. It's really fucking cool. All right, you. Mademoiselle, I am I don't even know who this woman is. You, but I need to ask you a few questions. Are you the investigator? I am. We are lucky you are on the train. What do you want to know? All right. I have no idea who she is. I hear, mademoiselle, that you were the last person to see the murdered man alive. I do not know. It may be so. I opened the door of his compartment by mistake. I was much ashamed. It was a most awkward mistake. You actually saw him? Yeah. He was reading a book. 
And what did you do after that, mademoiselle? I went in to the American lady, Mrs. Hubbard. I asked her for some aspirin, and she gave it to me. I usually carry extra aspirin for the refugees, but I gave mine to a camp in Turkey. They needed it more than me. Interesting. So she is German, she is a nurse, and she's probably 46. This is wrong. 72? I, I do not think that's the right answer. There's no way she's 27. I must admit I'm not right this time. No, 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 not good. I have no idea about this that character. Is not a good answer. She's sweet. She said, yeah. How the I'm fuck was I supposed to know she's Swedish? That happens to Pretzel agrees. It's ridiculous. Did Mrs. Hubbard ask you whether the communicating door between her compartment and that of Monsieur Ratchet was bolted? Yes. And was it? Yes. And after that, what did you do? After that, I went back to my compartment, took the aspirin, and lay down. That was around 10.50 p.m. Okay. I Is plausible. There anyone else in your compartment? Yeah. A young English lady. Who we just spoke to. Very nice. Very amiable. After the train left Vinkovsky, did she leave the compartment? No. I am sure she did not. Why are you so sure if you were asleep? I sleep very lightly. I am used to waking at a sound. I am sure that if she had come down from the berth above, I should have awakened. Did you yourself leave the compartment after that? Not until this morning. Okay, scarlet kimono. Do you have a scarlet silk kimono, mademoiselle? No, indeed. I have a good, comfortable dressing gown of Jaeger material. Jaegermeister. Interesting. Smoker? Do you smoke, mademoiselle? No. I can't stand the smell of tobacco. <sighs> but what about vapes? Perhaps you will be so amiable as to write me down your address. With pleasure. Mademoiselle Olsen is indeed right-handed. That, yeah, that takes me way longer this than it's healthy. very interesting conversation, Mademoiselle. I thank you. If you have any other questions, I'll be in my compartment. Good luck, Mr. Poirot. Okay. So she's left. I got a contradiction there. Interesting. What contradiction is this? Miss Olsen went to bed around 10... Select two testaments to reveal the contradiction of the testaments of Miss Debenham and Miss Olsen. That can't... Because they slept at the same time. But she couldn't have seen her if she slept through the night. But she didn't. Strange, this story. If Mademoiselle Olsen is such a light sleeper, why didn't she tell me about Mademoiselle Debenham getting out of bed? She even made a point to tell me the opposite. Interesting. That's the right answer. Confront Miss Olsen. Oh god, I gotta walk all the way up down the fucking carriage to do that. I'll observe her instead. Oh, can I look at her? No. I'll keep an eye on them instead. Monsieur Fauché. May I disturb you for a moment? Of course. How can I help? Um... It is, of course, about the murder of Monsieur Ratchet. Can you tell me your movements last night? I understand. Yesterday evening, I took a break at Vinkovsky Station with Hotaru. We then went to our quarters in the staff accommodations, a section of the luggage car. Freya was there, reading, and I went to bed right after. Freya is there now, I think, and Hotaru is in the kitchen. Okay, we should interview them too. They can verify my story. What time was this? 11.30 p.m. or a bit after. The snow is beginning to fall heavily. I see. Thank you. Can you write your address on this paper, please? You want to pay me a visit? <laughs> Who knows, Monsieur Fauché? He's right-handed. He is right-handed. There can be no doubt. Are you a smoker? I'm trying to quit, but yes. I'm now down to just one pack of cigarettes a week. If you're looking for a heavy smoker, you should talk to Hutaru. Okay, that's actually Thank interesting. Thank you, Monsieur Fauché. 
I'll come back to you if I have more questions. What was the thing about the um, tracking dominant hands here? Is Miss Hubbard left or right-handed? Nice. I'm guessing here, to be honest with you. I wasn't really paying attention. He is right-handed. Fantastic. Who isn't, I wonder? Et voila. Dominant hands of bar car passengers. They're all right-handed. I'm right again. That happened. Okay, so we, we are narrowing down. Who smokes? Uh, Miss Hubbard does not smoke. Fantastic. Smokes electronic cigarette. No, 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 no. Not good. I he just... Adequate. He just smokes. Brilliant. He smokes. Because he's already told me. He smokes. Nice. But no one is owning up to vaping, right? I'm right, right again. So, ever, so far, everyone is right-handed and nobody vapes. Which is... Weird in this time period. Like, most people would be vaping, I feel, now, rather than smoking cigarettes. I just feel that's just much more normal. And definitely more socially acceptable in terms of, like, a perception. Do we have to interview so, him? I hope you are progressing in your investigation. I have not finished yet, but it is progressing, yes. I still have many questions that must be answered. I will report to you as soon as I can. Okay. I guess he just can't be a suspect book under any circumstances, because he's just... Poirot's like, he's a nomkin, okay? He's just an... Oh, God, the fucking voice acting's gonna suck. Ah, Monsieur Maury. Would you have a few minutes to give me? I have some questions to ask you. Do I look like I can answer questions? Oh, no. The room is spinning. My head is about to explode. <laughs> you were celebrating last night? Celebrating? When Freya always wins. Ah, oh, what am I saying? If you want my answers to your questions to make sense, help me recover. You see there, the magnet on the fridge. That is my special recipe. I call it my... Day after survival tonic. Oh dear. If you could make me my special tonic, I might survive long enough to answer your questions. Jean knows the recipe very well. He can help you with the preparation. Very well, Monsieur Mori. If I must, I must. There's all this, this is such convoluted bollocks, these bits. After survival tonic. Uh, he is Japanese, he is a chef, and he is 55. Looks a lot younger, actually, I'm gonna be honest with you. Et voila. I think 20 is too young to be like a fucking head chef on a train, though. A very prestigious train. Alright, here's the recipe. I can use this lemon squeezer to get juice if I find fruit. Okay, so I have to find all the fucking ingredients, unfortunately, for me. We got ginger. There's literally lemons right here. Ah, I'm missing half of the tonic ingredients. There's a lemon here. I guess that's the one we need. What the fuck is this? Hell yeah. I have all the ingredients for Monsieur Maurice tonic. I have to go and see Monsieur Fauché so he can prepare it for me. I'll see if the other chicks around here first of all. What's her name? Uh, I love the way we just storm into the toilets there, by the way. Uh, what the fuck is her name? The, the, the pastry chef chick. I don't know her name. Hmm. It's locked. Interesting. She doesn't seem to be here. Well, she, they said she was back here, but she did not seem to be here at all, right? Weird. I can only assume that she's the killer. I mean, she might be. I don't know. 
at this point in time. It could be anyone. Like, I have absolutely no fucking idea who killed uh, What's-His-Face at the moment. I know that he probably had it coming, though, and deserved it. And only had himself to blame. If you'd have been there, guys. Monsieur Fauché. you seen it. May I disturb you for a moment? Of course. How can I help? Uh, day after survival tonic. Monsieur Fauché, I need your help to prepare a cocktail. What is this phrase? This is music to my ears. What can I fix for you? A mojito? A gin and tonic? Or perhaps a martini? Shaken? Not stirred? A James Bond it's reference! For me, but for Monsieur Maury. Ah, his day after survival tonic. Unfortunately, I know it well. Here is everything that was listed on the magnet. Excellent! I can take it from here. Mr. Poirot, I'm uncertain about the lemon juice. Is it half a lemon or a full lemon for the recipe? Uh, half a lemon? Half a lemon. I can't remember if Hotaru prefers it with ginger or without. Do you remember? Uh, I didn't read any of this. I can assure you that he will want the ginger. This is where I kill him. <laughs> the murder on the Orient Express is when Hotaru drinks this. Shits himself to death. And dies horribly. Hotaru will be himself again. Excellent. Thank you very much. This is probably wrong. I wasn't. I didn't really pay attention to anything that was in the fucking thing. I'm gonna be honest with you. So. All right. It's better. It's better save you, Hotaru. I've got to interview you. You're the one that knows all about smoking, apparently. Here you go, Mr. Mori. I hope this will help you. Thank you very much. Please give me a moment. While this takes effect, it will be a while, I'm afraid. But I will not move from the kitchen. Since I have to wait, do you know where I can find Mademoiselle Nielsen? She is in the staff quarters in the luggage car. If the door is locked, John will have the key. Thank you. I will return. I hope you have a speedy recovery. He's going to be dead. When I come back, he will be dead. I like the fact they moved John so I can get the key. Monsieur Mori told me that you are the one who has the key to open the luggage car door. I will need it. Yes, that's right. Here it is. Please don't forget to give it back to me. I think I'll I keep will it, not actually. Forget, Monsieur Fauché. All right. Excellent. I have a favor to ask. Could you visit the passengers who are in their rooms and explain there has been an error with their allergy and diet form? But, Monsieur Poirot, I made no errors. <laughs> of course not. Call it a computer error. Yes, it is possible. But even if I can see this is part of your investigation, I do not understand it. I would ask that you observe which hand each passenger uses. Ah, you wish to know if they use the right or left hand when they write. That is my intention. I will take on this mission for you. Excellent. This guy could be the killer! For all we fucking know. He could be like, he could be just murdering them all. Just goes in there, stabs everyone. Just a fucking spree. Now the killer's taking way too much time to, uh, effort to get away from this situation. To, uh... That's it. Be risking killing others. He could have easily killed the police detective too. Hmm. They've been having a good time back here, huh? That's why Hotaru feels like shite. Hi. Hello, Mademoiselle Nielsen. May I ask you a few questions? I don't have a minute. My career is ruined, and it's not my fault. For fuck's sake. How did this terrible thing come to pass? My supplies, passenger luggage, our living space. There is so little room. I gave the cargo handlers in Istanbul strict instructions how to stack my crates containing the ingredients I need for my desserts. So as one box is used up, it can be discarded. And these fools of cargo handlers did not follow your instructions. Didn't we stack the cargo? Not completely. I have four crates that must be moved from there to here to correct the order they are stacked. But placing the wrong crate on top of a smaller crate... It's a Tower of Hanoi puzzle. Contents ...and my career. The worst Tell one. Tell yourself, mademoiselle. I understand. So, the problem is, these four crates must be moved there. I hate Tower of Hanoi puzzles. Carefully. Yes. 
I have to move these four boxes from this location to here. But there is not much space to move the boxes, and I have to be careful never to put a bigger box on top of a smaller one, or the smaller crate will be destroyed. The problem is clear. I shall assist you. Fucking hate these. Oh my god, like this is like the worst shit. Uh, fortunately, I do have a walkthrough for the game that I can refer to, because I'm not going to spend fucking hours doing this, I'm going to be honest with you. Alright, especially as this is like a 10-step puzzle, it seems. Oh no, no, I need to do it. Go back, go back. I have to move these four boxes I know. from this Let location to here. Alright, okay. But there is not much space to move the boxes. The problem. Alright, here we go, this is it. Alright. I am cheating for this, because I'm a terrible person. All right. I think I'm doing it. Oh yeah, we did it. Okay, that wasn't actually too bad. I only, I, I didn't really use the walkthrough there as like I thought I would. Et voila! You are a lifesaver. Or at least a dessert saver. Thank you, thank you. I will gladly answer your questions. Her career was over, guys. She was doomed. All right, last night. Can you tell me your movements of last night? Last night after dinner, I stayed in the kitchen until 12.15 a.m. Then I joined Jean and Hotaru in our quarters. Then we... Then all of us read quietly in our beds until we fell asleep. A very studious staff. However, Monsieur Mori doesn't seem to have followed the same literary pursuit as the others. And these rum bottles, do they have something to do with his hangover? <laughs> Um, I stayed in the kitchen after dinner, then I joined John and Hotter in our quarters, where he read- I mean, that's not I true. I rather think that you didn't just read last night. What makes you say that? Uh, the empty bottles and the deck of cards. The empty rum bottles? Were their labels part of your reading last night? My fault. I must have left them there before I put them in the bin. And these are straight from the bar. Our passengers must have drunk them. Hmm. I have my doubts, but why would she feel the need to lie? I spoke to Monsieur Mori. He seemed to be quite hung over. He even asked me to make him his day after tonic. He blurted out, Freya always wins. Wins what? Looking around, it is clear you were gambling and drinking most of the night. You don't understand. It's late when we're off duty, but we need to unwind. And now there's been a murder? Yes, I admit it. We went overboard last night. But please don't tell Mr. Book. It's against regulations. We Just get rid of the, the evidence is everywhere! Well, I realize your difficult jobs have been made more difficult. But as you say, there has been a murder. I must have the truth. Of course. I'm so sorry. It's not such a crime. I'll leave it there and check in with Monsieur Fauché. All right, uh, write your address. Would you mind writing your address on this paper? I'm asking everyone on the train for addresses, in case I need to contact them once they leave the train in Paris. I understand. Mm, she's right-handed. Yes, that's it. Mademoiselle Nielsen is right -handed. God, he looks so fucking happy about that as well. Do you smoke? <laughs> no, I never have. Thank you. Well, that's it. All right. Thank you for your answers, Miss Nielsen. You're welcome. I mean, the smoker could just lie, especially if they're like, shit, I left my banana vape next to the fucking murder victim's corpse. <laughs> they could just be like, yeah, I don't smoke. Oh, great, well done. I should take that at face value immediately. All right, sir, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. All right. 
It's better. Thank you. Then may I ask you some questions? It will not take long. Quickly, please. I have hungry passengers to feed. Okay. Last night, you were gambling and drinking. Très bien. Can you tell me your movements last night? Oh, nothing special. When I went off duty, I joined John and Freya in a compartment. I read for a short while, then went to bed early. Reading? <laughs> I'm not sure you have recovered enough to tell me. For fuck's sake, just stop lying! Don't waste what little energy you have recovered to lie, Monsieur Moy. Yes, sorry, Mr. Poirot. You're right. It obviously wasn't reading that made my head hurt like that. But if you told Monsieur Book, it could mean my job. I will keep your secret, but I am investigating a murder. You must tell me the truth. Thank you. Please, write your address on this paper. My address? I don't see why. I think I hear Monsieur Book approaching. My address? Yes, of course. He's right-handed. Another right-handed person. Not surprising, most people are. Which means you the left-handed person will stand out. My job. It is very stressful. Would you happen to know who vapes on the train? A banana flavor? Oh, yes. The smell disgusts me. What is wrong with a good tobacco? I do not have time to answer that. Who is it? I've only seen one person who vapes. It's Captain Arbuthnot. Captain Arbuthnot, I see. Interesting. Okay. Your testimony was invaluable to me. Thank you. Take care, Monsieur Maury. My palate depends on your good health. Okay, so we've got a lot more information now, which is excellent. Um, we have a lot of people to talk to, though. Uh, return the key in service. Here is your key. Thank you very much. My pleasure. About the little favor I asked of you. Aha, but of course. I was able to get new allergy forms from guests who were in their compartments. Monsieur McQueen, Monsieur Masterman, Count and Countess Andrani, they are all right-handed. I also asked Princess Dragomirov, but she had her assistant, Madame Schmidt, sign for her. She is right-handed as well. You have exceeded my expectations. Well done. Thank you, Monsieur Fauché. I'll come back. Okay. We got a lot more information there. We got a lot more profiles filled out on the right and left handed. All right, well, we have a lot more shit to do. So let's head further into back and down the train. This is gonna be a really long playthrough, probably one of the longest I've ever done outside of maybe Fatal Frame 4. But um, so far, it definitely stands up and is worth doing so. It's just excellent. Like I really, really like this. I didn't expect to come into this liking it so much, but it's just brilliant. All right, um, we have a few other people to interrogate now. Some are in their depart. that's our room. Okay, so all these are off limits at the moment. But some of these should not be. Captain Arbuthnot, there we go. I know that you are the only person on this train to smoke e-cigarettes. We found a vial of e-liquid at the crime scene. Will you talk to me about this, or should I pass on what I've learned to the police? All right. Come in if you must. All right, let's go. He's pretty sus, this guy. I have just a few questions for you. Very well. Let's hear them. The young English lady, Mademoiselle Debenham, was at the Tocatlian Hotel. Perhaps you it, met it, her? She was in her room! She exchanged a few words. Fellow Brits abroad, that's... She was in your fucking room! Hmm. What can you tell me about Mademoiselle Debenham? Nothing whatsoever. We barely spoke. The director of the Orient Express, Monsieur Book, thinks the assassin is a woman. And that is enough to accuse her? She had nothing to do with this murder. How can you be so certain? The idea is absurd. Ratchet was a perfect stranger to her. She'd never seen him before. Ah, 
Did she tell you so? Well, yes. Maybe she did. She may have commented once upon his somewhat unpleasant appearance. If a woman is concerned, as you seem to think, to my mind, without any evidence, I can assure you that Miss Debenham could not possibly be implicated. Hmm, it is clear that the captain is defending Miss Debenham, a woman he supposedly doesn't know very well. Uh, last night. What were you doing last night around a quarter past one? Masturbating furiously into a sock. I believe I was still talking to that young American fellow, Mr. McQueen, the secretary of the man who was killed. We were in his compartment. He was a friend or acquaintance of yours? No, I never saw him before this journey. We'd hit it off at dinner, and the conversation continued into the early hours. Until what time was that? Until 1.45 or so. Then I retired to my room and went to sleep. Okay. There is nothing you can recall last night that in any way struck you as suspicious? It's nothing. A mere detail. Allow me to be the judge. Well, before returning to my room, I went to the lounge car to get a glass of water. When I was passing through the first-class corridor, I noticed that the door, which is just after your room, 201, was not quite closed. And the person who was inside peered out in a furtive sort of way. Then he closed the door quickly. I know there's nothing in that, but it was the furtive way it was done that caught my attention. Interesting. Struck me as a bit odd. I understand. Thank you for letting me know. Could you uh, write down your address here, please? My address? <laughs> if you insist. He's right-handed. This man is right-handed. All right, the vape. Is this e-cigarette liquid yours? What flavor is it? Banana. Well, that is awkward. That's my flavor of choice. But I have no idea what it was doing there, whatever. Can you explain how it ended up there? I have no idea. I never entered the man's room, Poirot. That's the truth. But someone else could have taken it from him Thank and put you, it Captain. somewhere else. You're welcome. Okay. So he could he could still, like... I suspect he's probably telling the truth, but I'm curious as to... Okay, this is their room. I'm curious as to, like, what, um... You know, could have uh, happened. Pardon this intrusion, Mademoiselle Olsen, but something you told me earlier confuses me. Oh, please, come in. She's suspicious. How can you be sure Mademoiselle Debenham was in bed all night? As I told you, I am a very light sleeper. The slightest noise wakes me up. If Fraulein Debenham had gotten out of her bed, I would have heard her. I, I got up this morning around 8 a.m. She was sleeping soundly. Confrontation time, because you're lying. This? She is lying, but why? Oh, no, it's the previous one, I think, this one. Are you certain you would have heard her? Yes. Why are you asking? I spoke to Mademoiselle Debenham, and she told me that she got up around five o'clock in the morning. She opened the door and looked down the corridor. It was then that she saw a woman in a red kimono. How do you explain that? I think I must have been sleeping very soundly not to have heard Oh, it. she's lying. Oh, but does that make me a suspect? I am not accusing anyone, mademoiselle. Do not worry. I am just trying to determine what happened last night. Thank you for your testimony. I think she's pro That means the other woman's either lying completely or... I don't know. All right, so Mr. McQueen was talking with Captain Arbuthnot. Miss Debenham slept all night, confirmed by Miss Olsen. Mr. Michelle went to see Mr. No. They were playing cards. Okay, so that will make sense. That was easy. Okay, but there's still a bit more to this, right? Yeah, the vape liquid conclusion here. 
A bottle of vape liquid is seen at the crime scene. I must admit I'm not right this time. So Captain Abathon has an alibi, but he's the only one that smokes. I cannot accuse Abathnot. His alibi protects him despite the liquid found at the crime scene. Captain Abathnot is the only passenger to smoke an e-cigarette. Even if this liquid in Ratchet's room is a solid clue, he has an alibi. I cannot accuse him without any other proof. Unless they're both in on it, or someone okay, stole well, it from him. Report to book. Hey, we did a pretty good job here though, I feel. I like the music in it too. Everything about this game is just great. Like, it's just got, like... I know it's not AAA, but it has great production value for what it is. Um, and it just feels great. I just want... I want more games like this. Alright. Book's in the... right at the back, yeah? Like, he's right in the final area. I don't like the fact we have to walk back and forth through the fucking carriage the whole fucking time. Like, I want fast travel. But it's only a small gripe. I also think the camera is too close to Pyro in these sections. It was a much better distance than when we were playing the American chick. But, um... This is okay. It's not like it's not like so awful. Well, I hope you are progressing in your investigation. Uh, the vape smoker. I identified the person responsible for the bottle of liquid for the vape found at the crime scene. So, this is our culprit. Do we hold him? No, unfortunately, this bottle belongs to Captain Arbuthnot, but he has an alibi confirmed by Monsieur McQueen for the time of the murder. Okay. The murder weapon. There is no trace of the murder weapon on the train as yet. Could have been thrown out the window. Killer could have hidden it anywhere. It must be somewhere. Indeed, as you say, it must be somewhere. Couldn't it have been thrown outside and had the snow fall on top According of it? According to Dr. Constantine's report, the stab wounds were made by at least one right-handed and one left-handed person and with different strength. For the moment, Everyone I have checked is right-handed. It is impossible to draw any conclusions as yet. However, I still have a few people to interrogate. Not she looks... She, she's fucking knackered. There's no fucking way. You still have many avenues to explore? Indeed, the case is far from over, mon ami. Monsieur Book, Monsieur Poirot. Michel, calm down. But it's Mrs. Hubbard. She says she found the murder weapon in her room. She's Are you fucking kidding upset. me? Let's go, Poirot. To the Poirot mobile! Okay, so we've, the murder weapon has been found. Find Mrs. Hubbard. I'm guessing she's in her room panicking. Being, um, all sort of like Connecticut accent person. Connecticut? I can't do that. I can't say Connecticut. Connecticut. <laughs> I have absolutely no fucking clue, I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> but I do find it very funny. It's this one, right? I demand to be allowed to leave this train! Oh, freeze to death! We are in the mountains, trapped in a snowdrift. Stating the obvious, there is a murderer... Among us? He Again? He has to hide his weapon in my room. Please, Madame Bird, take a deep breath and tell us what occurred. The knife. Where did you find the knife? But there could be two I, murder weapons, right? I, I wanted to get a handkerchief from my purse, and when I opened it, I, I saw it. A bloody knife. Am I next to be murdered? Could be a blessing. I very much doubt the murderer would give you his weapon. What do you mean? Madame, he would have used it. Oh, my heaven. Did you touch the knife? Did you touch the knife? Of course not. What a question. I will take that as a no. I mean, we probably should uh, have a look at the knife. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the fucking murder weapon. A real murder weapon, or is it a red herring? A dead herring? Mm? 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 I should probably look at it some more. 
Is this knife the real murder weapon, or is it... A... I don't see any other examination points. Huh. Book. Mrs. Hubbard is distraught, Poirot. I should stay with her. Please go on without me. I have every right to be distraught. Thank you, Mr. Can we skip her sleeping tablets? There's loads on the train, apparently. Everyone's fucking baked out of their fucking mind. I'm not really sure what else I should be doing here, though. Like, what's my objective here? Prove the knife is the murder weapon. Oh, we just asked Dr. Constantine. I feel like sometimes it tells you stuff out loud. It's like, yeah, oh, Dr. Constantine, he would have known. He would know where's this knife, what this knife is for. We should go and speak to him immediately. But, um, I'm guessing the girl's going to be awake instead and she's going to fill us in with the next part of the story. I think we're going to be hopping between the two of them. Sorry, that's the wrong cabin. Uh, quite a lot, I'm going to guess. Dr. Constantine, we may have found our murder weapon. We need to make certain. There is a pretty quick way to be sure. I have estimated the depth of the wounds. You can easily find the depth of each wound by comparing the width. There are five of them that I am not sure about. Test them, and then we will compare our results. I will do as you say, Doctor. What does this mean? For each wound in the body, find the depth that could match the knife shape to check if it would be the murder weapon. I'm so confused here. Like, what is this? Do I have to, like... This is wrong. But I'm never far from the truth. Okay. Well, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I, I, I just... I'm just pressing random shit. Oh, we have to see how far they go in. Can I just mash on it? Okay, why is this working? Let's just go down every inch and just press... Okay. This is weird. I don't understand this. No, 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 no. Not good. My little grey says... What happened?! What do you think, Doctor? Is this knife really the murder weapon? There can be no doubt. You found the same depths as the estimates I made during the preliminary autopsy. I can assure you that I did you hold in your hands all. the weapon that took Ratchet's life. Thank you. I feel way better now. I the rest so. gave you time Let's to get the shit out of most me. of the effects of the drug. I'm still a bit groggy. That's understandable. Are you able to continue your story now? Yes. Yes, I think so. Where was I? You were explaining how you returned to the Armstrong house to tell them their poor little child was dead. Yes, that's it. I felt helpless. My part in the case was officially over, but I knew I couldn't let it go. Daisy deserved justice. End of chapter four. There is 13 chapters, by the way, so we are still very early days here. Very early days. Two days later, I returned to the Armstrong house to tell them Daisy would be released soon for burial. I was angry with myself that I couldn't bring them better news. I wasn't prepared for more tragedy. Hang on, there's more? Holy shit. I should probably save the game. Why can't I save the game? No, I can. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Exciting stuff. All right, it's another day for Murder on the Orient Express. We are back playing the American character, and uh, let's see what happens. Got my coffee. It's a fresh day of recording. Hopefully going to get a fairly hefty chunk of this done today. Let's go in and see. Love this game. Love it. Why is she still here? Why does she still have a job? Hello, Miss Moreau. I'm here to see Colonel Armstrong. Good morning, Detective. Colonel Armstrong is upstairs. He... He isn't well. What a fucking surprise. Oh, Jesus. Should I talk to her? No, oh, I can't. Oh, God. It's very depressing. They've lost their kid. Like, the game took a really dark turn really quickly. This is her room, right, again? 
Don't actually see shit in here that's worthwhile investigating this time. It's not like we're trying to catch her out this time. How has she still got a job? I know it was her information that led to the body being found, but in all seriousness, what the fuck? Isn't this the kid's room? Good morning, Colonel Armstrong. Is your wife here? Here? No, Sonia is not here. Always one step behind. She died of a miscarriage last night. What? My wife, Daisy, and our baby. My whole family is gone. I... I'm so sorry. I came straight here this morning. I received word that you can arrange for Daisy to be returned to you for burial. I didn't know. Well, then, now you don't have to come back. I can arrange for Daisy, my wife, and our unborn child to be buried all at once. Very efficient. Being a military man, I can appreciate efficiency. I know how hard this must be for you. No, you don't know. I don't want your sympathy. I want you to do your bloody job and catch the creature that did this. I know you won't believe me. But I swear to you, I will find who did this. If it takes me to the far corners of the earth, I will find them. Then go. Please go now. Go find them. Holy shit, this poor guy. The house that once held the laughter of a child now feels so empty. So everyone's fucking dead. I'm not giving up. I'm a part of this case. Or the case is a part of me. Well, we know who did it, presumably, or at least was the mastermind behind it. But he's dead now as well. All units, hikers in the vicinity of the cabin where Daisy Armstrong was found spotted a pickup truck drive through the barricade tape and then head up the dirt road toward where the subject cabin is located. Any car nearby who can respond? Unit 28, we can respond, but we're a ways away. Dispatch, this is 11. I'm on it. Copy that. 11, you're good to go. Copy that. Shouldn't I have, like, a partner or, like, a backup? You know. To stop me getting killed. Okay, there's the pickup. Let's see who ignored our barricade tape. Eleven here. I'm at the cabin. Someone has broken in. Are you requesting backup? Not yet. I'm going yes! to take a look around. Yes, you Copy stupid that, woman. woman. Oh my god. We're going to get ourselves killed. Footprints. Somebody ignored the barricade tape. Ignored is not a strong word. A forensics evidence identification marker. Forensics had to go through this place with a fine-tooth comb. He's not here. That's where I found Fluffy. Daisy's special toy. I hope we returned him to the family. There's only one member of the family left. Three, eight, ninety-two. Oh, when the poor deer was killed. Okay, that's probably a code for something. Three, eight, ninety-two. A forensics evidence identification marker. Du duct tape to silence Daisy's screams. Damn it, Daisy. I will find whoever did this to you. I mean, this person is clearly a fucking monster. Like, no two ways about it. can hear something. Ah. Don't shoot, officer. I'm on your side. Sir, keep your hands where I can see them. Sure, no problem. Sir, this is a crime scene. Who the hell are you? I'm a reporter. Boston 6 News. You can get us on cable even here in the mountains. They haven't heard of crime scene tape in a big city like Boston? All right. That wasn't my best move. I got all excited. I didn't expect to find the place deserted. It was hard to resist. You should have tried harder. 
I'm placing you under arrest. You should be thanking me. Look what you apparently missed and I found. We'll get to that, but you're going to answer some questions first. I'm more used to asking questions, but fire away. He has massive hands. Does the pickup parked in front of the cabin belong to you? Yes, indeed, it's mine. I'll check. What are you doing here? You should know a crime scene is off limits. I'm investigating the Daisy Armstrong kidnapping like you. Who are you exactly? I'm Michael Clark, journalist for Boston 6 News. Off camera, but someday I'm going to be anchor. You just wait. Do you have a way to prove that? My press card's in my truck. Show me your hands. I'm going to cuff you. I'm sure we can work out a deal. Put your hands in front of you. Aren't you gonna read me my rights? You have the right to remain silent. I really wish you'd exercise that one. You don't actually have to read some of their rights unless you're questioning them. Dispatch, this is Eleven. <laughs> I intercepted a suspicious individual at the crime scene. I'll check to determine how badly he's compromised it. Then I'm bringing him in. Copy that, Detective Locke. Right, let's check. I want to check the code again because I've forgotten what it was. There was a there was a, a lock on that bunker thing. Three eight ninety two. We'll check the bunker first because I'm going around there now. Although, how the fuck did they miss this? It's like right here. Yes! I knew I could do it. I can always use safe cracking as a career move. There we go. There. Now let's see what secrets you're hiding. What the hell is that gas can doing here? It's being a gas can? No, hang on. Let's look at it again. We can turn it. The cap's been damaged. And some gasoline has leaked out. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I was thinking. I thought it might be like a puzzle where you thing, but I think it's probably just you can have one on at a time. It's only what it seems to be, anyway. Oh shit. Okay, so one goes to two, two goes to one, and three goes to three. Not really sure what one we're meant to, what we're meant to be doing here. It's a follow the cable puzzle, that's for sure. But let's look around first. This blueprint. It looks like the bomb in the cabin. The kidnapper built the bomb here. Yeah. Should probably, like, you know, keep that as evidence or some crazy shit. I don't know. Probably should call for backup, actually, you know? Just... Call me crazy! <laughs> to turn the power back on to open this magnetic door. Hmm, no, it doesn't work. All right, so we have to restore the power. Oh, God, this is going to be a chore and a half, isn't it? <clears throat> All right. Question is, which one is the bottom one to follow first? Okay, the bottom one. So I guess three is the right one for this. 
Probably. Alright, let's try the second one here. The... So it's the third one as you come out here. So this goes to the same one as this. Oh shit, okay, you're right. Uh, uh, actually, uh... The other one doesn't go to that one, I just realized. I'm an idiot. Okay, so you gotta follow them to the fuse boxes and then flick the switch that it comes in on. All right, so this one goes into the second hole here, goes into here, follow the second one. So it's the third one, it goes up, along there. I swear it's the one on the left as well. Am I just being an idiot? Then this one, I have to start again because I kind of fucked it up. Alright, so the bottom one here goes to the third one there. So it would be first. If I got this wrong, well, it's not a big deal. Let there be. Hey, I did it! I'm a fucking genius. Oh my god. Perfect, it works. Well, that went pretty well in the end. All right, we have a gun safe of some kind. Well, it is a gun safe. That's what that is, right? February twenty fourth, the day of the kidnapping. They knew about the party and everything. Why is that a surprise? These police are fucking useless. Oh, I don't like this. No, that didn't work. I don't understand this fucking how this lock works. God damn it. All right. 0224 was probably the code though, right? I really should keep the walkthrough for this game open, like, because, like, otherwise I'm going to just get stuck like this, okay? And, you know, I am pretty incompetent. Hmm. All right. I have no idea how you meant to figure this out. This is a sound-based puzzle again. I, I am, I'm really deaf though, so I have problems with that sound-based puzzles. Yes, I knew I could do it. I can always use safe crafting. I you said that before, Eddie. That exact line. Alright, what do we have in here? It's Daisy's hair clip. The oh, same shit. as the picture I saw at the Armstrong house. Well, that's depressing. Alright. Um... An expensive looking pen with the initials JM? What's its story? That looks like a hair caught in the band around the money. Forensics will tell me for sure, but that doesn't look like Daisy's No, it's color. probably the fucking killers, I'm guessing. Again until forensics get here. All right. I think we're done with this part of the investigation here. Let's have a quick look at the mind map. Collect information on Michael Clark. Learn more about the gas can. What am I missing on the gas can? Can I just click that? I can. Oh, there might be a connection between the reporter and this location? Oh, I've finished inspecting the- okay, I don't really know. Let's go and talk to him. I'll secure the bunker for forensics. 
progress at last. You're gonna call them in, or no? Okay. Like I've seen like a lot of police body cam. If this was the U.S., like about 700 police would be here now, swarming the location. I don't need to talk to the suspect right now. Oh, let's go through his shit. The gas can I found in the bunker would match this outline perfectly. So he was gonna burn. He was gonna burn the evidence. I don't think he is a reporter. Clark's press card, and the phone number of the newspaper is on it. Ah, good. I can give him a call. Clark's press card. Ah, good. I okay, let's take that, I guess. He's got a camera. Well. Not an ideal situation, is it? Of the entire Armstrong family, a reporter just doing his job, or something else. That's before she was dead. That's weird. Hmm. The glove compartment is closed. Just force it. Hmm. The glove compartment is closed. Telephoto lens. Not so surprising I mean, for a journalist. No, I, I'd expect a journalist to have a telephoto lens. But there's other things I would not expect them to have. Can we interview him about that now? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, 613487? This puzzle is like, can you read? The detective gets it right. Hi, I'm Detective Joanna Locke. Berkshire Police. I'd like to speak to an editor, please. One moment, please. Hello, Detective Locke? This is Abby Wilson. I'm a senior editor. What can I do for you? Does a man named Michael Clark work for you? Yes, he does. Why? When was the last time you heard from him? Oh, it's been at least seven or eight months. That's not unusual. He works in the field? Yes, Michael Clark is what we call a stringer. He works as a freelancer. Comes up with a story we can use, we pay him. And we don't hear from him again for several months. Okay. What kind of stories does Mr. Clark write? Mr. Clark is an investigative reporter. Mostly crime stories, to tell you the truth. He comes up with some pretty macabre stuff some of the time. Is there a problem? Or a story? Do you remember what the last case he investigated was? It was a murder case. The victim was a millionaire named James Miller. He was called the Frozen Fish King of Gloucester, Massachusetts. That's where that guy's from. turned up in one of his nets. Or, rather, most of it did. Ah, well. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. You've been a great help to me. Pleasure. I hope he's not in trouble. He can be a little pushy, but he's a good guy overall. So what's he working on now, Detective? Are you sitting on a story? Thanks again. Smart move. Can we interview him now? I don't need to talk to the suspect right now. I mean, yes you do, because we need the fucking key. We need to go through his shit so we can find the fucking key. Alright, there's got to be something else in here that I'm missing. Oh, didn't see this. There's something in here. Or maybe not. This one? <laughs> Car keys in the sun visor. A classic hiding place. Well, at least on TV. Okay. We've got the glove compartment key now, so let's have a look inside here. Okay, Chicago Museum. 
Massachusetts driving license. Clerk's driver's license seems to be in order. So he is who he says he is. What is this, though? The vehicle registration is not in the name of Michael Clark or a rental company. Okay, that's probably important. The vehicle registration is not in the name of my... Okay, time for forensics to attack that bunker. And Clark? He's too sure of himself. I need to get him into an interrogation room and find out what really makes him tick. It's probably a watch. Let's fucking go. I know my rights. You can't keep somebody locked up in a car like this, you know. I mean, they literally can. You wouldn't do it if I was a dog. Do they have bathrooms at the station? No. We just shit on the floor. I have the right to make a phone call, Detective whatever your name is. That phone is an outside line. Hello, boss. It's Michael Clark. I'm still on the Armstrong kidnap, but there's a small problem. I got caught being someplace I shouldn't be. I'm at the police station. No, I'm not under arrest. Just questioning. Fire me. Why? The station's integrity? You're kidding me, right? If you think I've screwed up that badly, then fire me. Got that? Fire me. Oh, my God. Me. Yes. Do it. Oh, that was code. That didn't go well. I think I got my point across. That was code. What happens now? Go ahead. Then we'll have a chat. This is all really sus. He's going to get killed. Or going to get rescued or something. An extra computer so I don't have to go all the way out to my desk. That was so obviously code. Like... The fact that she didn't pick up on the fact that it's code is insane. Now that we've taken your DNA, we can begin. Interview of suspect Michael Clark, 6 p.m. March 30th, 2019. This interview is being recorded. By elves behind the mirror, no doubt? You were arrested at a crime scene where you damaged police barricade tape. I'll pay for a new roll. That's a Class A misdemeanor, and it carries a $500 fine. Oh, that's unfortunate. To begin with, where were you on the night Daisy Armstrong was kidnapped? I was watching TV in my motel room, but I had my police scanner on. I heard the first reports that the little girl was missing. No way the police at the scene were going to let me get close. I set my alarm so I could get on the story first thing in the morning and tried to sleep. It was difficult. Can anybody confirm where you were? No. Afraid not. I was alone and sleepless. A sad combination. And I realized a bad alibi. Okay, let's do the gas tank first. Let's do actually let's do the driver's license first because it's like basic. You say you're a journalist, a stringer for Channel Six News in Boston. I sell my stuff to lots of media outlets. Hmm. How is your editor doing? Last time we spoke, she was fine, but that was months ago. What's her name again? I, um, I work for lots of stations and lots of editors. She knows your name, but you don't remember hers? I'm not great with names. It's Kelly Johnson. Oh, yeah. Kelly. I just made that name up. Good for you. Her name is Abby Wilson. Mr. Clark, you lie like you... Wow, that was smooth. Well, that was mean. He thinks he's invincible. I need to play his ego. That's the key. That was good. What are you doing in the Berkshires? And what is your connection to the Armstrong case? For the past few months, I've been working on a big case. Boston Six News was looking forward to my next story. The Armstrongs have been on my list of potential targets for a long time. I changed gears when Daisy was kidnapped and started investigating the Armstrongs. Okay, confrontation. Because he has pictures of her beforehand. So you just stumbled on a major kidnapping story during your stay in the Berkshires. Yeah, I was researching PCBs in the river for crying out loud. Then, wow, the Armstrongs. That's not a Science Sunday report. That's a lead. Sometimes you just get lucky. Your camera in the pickup. There were photos of Daisy from before she was kidnapped. The Armstrongs are a famous family like the Kennedys or Hollywood couples. Gossip sites love them. 
People want to see how they live. I started out just stealing candid shots. Paparazzi live on getting that one exclusive shot. Steamy, intimate, whatever. Then when the kidnapping happened, I realized I was here first. What an opportunity. And I jumped at it. You have an answer for everything. It is a good answer, good but this, she's, he's lying. How long have you been on the job? Long enough to put you away for life. If you killed that little girl. Let's confront about the gas can now. Let's move on to the gas cans and what we found in your pockets when you were brought in here today. That sounds exciting. In addition to the gasoline in the back of your pickup and another in the bunker, you had a lighter and gloves in your pockets. You were going to set fire to the bunker and every scrap of evidence inside. Where to begin? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I wasn't planning to use these things to destroy the crime scene. I've been around crime scenes my entire career. I brought the gloves so as not to contaminate it with my fingerprints. The gas can in the back of my pickup, I use it to put gas in the truck. Gas stations are few and far between in your mountains. I didn't know there was a gas can in the bunker. If that's true, I did you a favor. My arrival obviously scared off somebody planning to burn everything. Do you also have an excuse for your lighter? The lighter? I'm trying to quit smoking. I use the lighter as a reminder not to start again. But the gas can, the gap in the gas can, right? That's the big deal. Why didn't you bring that up? That seems like a really fucking key thing. Regardless, we got this, I guess. Let's start with why you went to the cabin. If the police were interested in it, I was interested in it. How did you find the cabin? Police radio. I heard the forensic team getting directions. Then, when they finally left the scene late this morning, I jumped in my pickup and hurried on up the mountain. You tore the tape at the entrance to the property and stomped all over the house. This constitutes a serious violation of a crime scene, Mr. Clark. I'm aware of that. I'm sorry. I'll pay the fine. But I got carried away. It isn't often I get a crime this scene. This guy is super myself. sus. I don't believe he's, he's a journalist. Himself. I need to throw him off balance somehow. Surprise him into making an error. Explain to me again how you got to the crime scene. I listened in on the police radio frequency. Anybody can do it with a scanner. I headed for the crime scene in my trusty pickup, like I've done for years. After the forensic team left, I needed to see the crime scene for myself. I got to the bunker just before you arrived. Okay. The trusty pickup isn't his, right? You said you've been driving that pickup for years? You heard right. Thanks to it, I never miss a story. You say you've been using your pickup for years, but the title certificate is not in your name. The truck belongs to somebody named Stephen Baker. Okay, I don't get why the pickup is so important to you, but I guess my ego made me say that. Yeah, the pickup was lent to me by a friend. I couldn't afford it even with a loan. I think you stole it, Mr. Clark. You needed a pickup like that for our mountain roads, so you stole that one. Try proving it. But while you run off on some wild goose chase, you can't hold me. I know that Clark is lying. I need to reconstruct the whole... Okay, let's do it. Oh, it won't let me? Whole ...sequence of events in order to understand what happened. Oh, now I can. I had to wait for her to finish talking. Reconstruct the events. Here we go. Uh, I arrive at the cabin. Clark, barrier tape. Clark, no, 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 no. Clark arrives there. Clark opens the bunker. Clark throws the gasoline can into the tape. No, 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 no. I don't need Mr. Poirot to tell me I'm wrong. Hmm. There we go. Those two were in the wrong order. Score. One for the good guys. I'll tell you what really happened. You waited until forensics left and arrived in your probably stolen pickup. You grabbed a can of gasoline from your truck. You then went into the cabin to check if Daisy had been found. You then went straight to the bunker 
to see if it had been discovered, planning to set it on fire and destroy all the evidence inside. Before you could start the fire, you heard me arrive. So you hastily left your gas can and closed the hatch. You didn't think I could open the bunker. If I hadn't found you, I expect you would have burned down the cabin too. I'm not going to make fun of you, detective, or how you handled my interrogation. You're obviously very new at this. I swear I'm telling the truth. I didn't know the bunker was there until the moment you showed up. I seem to have trumped your entire police force. When I get the DNA results from the bunker, we'll continue this conversation. You have no concrete evidence against me whatsoever. The lab results will be in soon. You won't get away with this. See that call? That's your arrest warrant and a one-way ticket to prison. I'll be right back. She's going to be told to drop it by someone higher up. Hello, sir. I think I found the man who kidnapped Daisy Armstrong. I'm interrogating him now. Hold on, Detective Luck. I have some bad news. Someone set fire to the cabin in the bunker. The fire department is on the scene, but they say it's too late. Th that's impossible. My suspect has been in the interrogation room with me all evening. We can't hold him. Oh, the that's why he was saying fire me. Fire. fingerprints are on the wine bottle found in the cabin. We also found an unknown person's fingerprints, but they don't match your suspects. Sir, with all due respect, I'm convinced Michael... Oh, Hart that he told involved. them to the burn it. I'm cutting you some slack already, but we cannot hold your suspect simply because you're convinced he's guilty. We have evidence that Suzanne was working with an accomplice, Noah Garrity. I order you to release the reporter and arrest this Moreau. L let me just check my last lead. The DNA analysis of the hair found in the bunker safe. The results just came in. I know how hard this is. I... Okay. Get the DNA results. Detective Locke, I will give you one hour maximum. Then you close the file and arrest Suzanne Moreau. Thank you, sir. Holy shit, he said on the phone fire, so they went and set fire to it. Who did you call earlier? An editor from the Boston Six News. An editor you repeatedly said should fire you. That was your accomplice, wasn't it? You were telling him to start the fire. An accomplice? I know it was Noah you called. I'm saying nothing more without the presence of my lawyer. Stay right where you are. I'm not done with you yet. Wow. Do I hear grounds for a lawsuit? Some poor, innocent woman is being accused instead of you. You set her up, didn't you? You have to let me go, detective. All I need is one more phone call to the lab. I know it's you, and I'm going to prove it. Hello, this is Joanna Locke. I need the results of the DNA test I asked you for. Hi, detective. Sorry, we only have the DNA sequence. We haven't had time to compare it with the suspects yet. It'll take seven more hours. I'm sorry, but you are not the only one on the waiting list. Send your analysis to my computer in the office. I'll do the comparison myself. I need authorization. I have a murderer who is going to walk free unless I get those results now. Fine, we'll send it to you right away, but I'll have to log this. Okay. It's my last chance. We have to sequence the DNA. All right, how the fuck does this work? Unknown DNA found in the cabin, Michael Clark. So I need TT, I need to match this, I guess. Maybe it isn't him. TTCATA. I don't even see multiple. TTCATA, TTC, CGC. Okay, that matches. That lines up, right? But only a bit of it. So I guess I've got to like do the whole, I've got to find the whole fucking thing. Which I don't think is here.
Hmm. I have no I real idea what I'm meant to be doing with this. I'm going to be honest with you. It seems very confusing. It's going to be Susan, right? It's going to be too obvious otherwise. Let's see if hers line up. It does. God damn it. I don't understand. I was sure it would be Clark's hair. I'll have to let him go. God damn it. We're still too early in the case for it to be like a concrete thing, unfortunately, anyway. Early days. You can leave. Sorry it didn't work out for you, detective. Maybe you should consider a career change. We are not done. Oh, but we are, my dear. We are done. What a fucking asshole. I had no choice but to return to the Armstrong house to arrest Suzanne Moreau. She gonna have killed herself or something? Is the guy gonna be dead? What other tragedy is gonna strike this poor family? The cat's alive. I guess that's something. The arrest warrant for Suzanne Moreau. Okay. Suzanne was set up by Clark and Noah. They are the kidnappers, but I'm not giving up. When Suzanne comes up for trial, I will fight for her defense. But for now, the district attorney is in charge. If I want to stay a detective, he always has the last word. Nope. Let's get the fuck out of here. Hmm, the door is wide open. How strange. She's gonna be fucking dead. Everyone's gonna be dead. Everyone hey, is dead. Is anyone there? Miss Moreau? It's gonna be a fucking bloodbath. Miss Moreau? This is Detective Locke. No one in here. She's gonna be dead, right? And it'll look like a suicide, but it won't be a suicide. Miss Moreau, can you hear me? It's me, Detective Locke. You must get up now. Miss Moreau? Miss Moreau, can you hear me? Suzanne Moreau is dead. There are no traces of blows or injuries on her body. She doesn't seem to have defended herself from anyone. Great! Wonderful. I killed Daisy. I was scared she would tell me if I released her from the cabin alive. I can't live myself. She must have realized at last how she'd been used. And the self-righteous court of social media was as quick as usual to try and convict her. Hmm. Oh, shit. Wow. Wow. Dear Miss Moreau, please read the letter. Dr. Adams has been able to reach you for several days. We want to let you know that your mother passed peacefully during the night. Please contact us if you'd like assistance with the arrangements for her. Oh, Suzanne God. Suzanne was telling the truth about her mother. I thought she was. I thought she was just, like, besotted with the guy. Uh... It appears Suzanne killed herself by ingesting all these drugs. Can we take this again or not? The secret key. No, apparently not. No, none of this is relevant anymore, I guess. Nah, this is all the same shit. Do we ever see her wear glasses? Suzanne's diary is missing. Oh, now that is weird. What am I looking for exactly now? No, it's probably in the room. I just don't know what I'm looking for. 
The game does a good job sometimes of being quite sort of like, you know? You know, you know what I mean? Can I look at her body? I feel like that's quite an important thing to check. Like, more so, perhaps, but... <gasps> Looks like there's something in here still that I'm missing. Don't you have to look at everything? Okay, there we go. I had to look at the fuck. She wasn't- they were missing last time, right? I called the district attorney to inform him. This is Detective Locke, sir. I'm at the Armstrong house. Have you arrested Suzanne Moreau? She's dead, sir. Apparent suicide, but I need a forensics team. She killed herself out of remorse for her part in the crime. We don't know that yet. I'm calling forensics now, but I wanted you to know. What a mess. Stay on site until forensics arrive. Yes, sir. Standing by. The investigation was officially closed. I was certain that she was innocent, and Clark had been responsible for four deaths and then vanished into thin air with a million dollars. Dollars marked, though, and not easily spent. I didn't care if the case was officially closed. I swore, Mr. Poirot, whatever it took, I would hunt him down. Wow. So escalates quickly. These chapters are really long sometimes, by the way. This is a long fucking game. That was like 45 minutes for one chapter. Anyway, we're back to Poirot. Poirot. I waited for the forensics team, then went into the station to write my report. I was officially off the case. Thank you, mademoiselle. That obviously cannot be the completion of your story. If I might ask a question? Of course. Um, who was Ratchet? Ratchet was Noah, Miss Murrows. I reckon... Michael Clark, the reporter. He was Ratchet? Absolutely. I was the only law enforcement official to question Clark. I knew this wasn't his first kidnapping. You looked for similar cases. What do you Americans call the MMOs? Means, motive, and opportunity. Yes, I looked for someone in plain sight. Someone on the edge of a kidnapping case. Someone in plain view, keeping track of the investigations. An innocent witness, a concerned neighbor, even another reporter. And eventually you found a name behind an alias. Yes, I found a name. Cassetti, the real name. The real name of the man you call Ratchet is Cassetti. This explains much, mademoiselle, but not all. It explains why she is our number one suspect. But not how she came to be on this train. Attends, she has grown pale. I, I don't know... What's wrong with me? Excuse me, Mr. Poirot. I don't feel very well. You are exhausted and still feeling the effects of the drug. Stay with us, mademoiselle. One more effort. I need to know your recent movements. I snuck aboard the train. This I observed. You came directly to this room? Yes. Yes, and other than a couple of careful trips to the... The ladies, yesterday, I never left this room. I didn't want to be spotted by Ratchet. Yesterday, I, I chatted with my roommate, Miss Schmidt, I think, here in our room. She brought me some dinner. I got very sleepy and nodded off. Oh, shit. So did she drug her? And now she nods off again. Is this a joke? She must be faking so we can't interrogate her further, Poirot. No, Book. She really seems to have fallen asleep again. It is my fault. She must have been given a dangerous dose of sleeping pills last night. The effects should wear off soon, I hope, but I am afraid asking her to tell us her story was too much for her. Pinch her, Poirot. She's faking. Her eyes are dilated. She is not faking, and there will be no pinching. Dr. Constantine, please stay with her. Monsieur Book, ask the other passengers to gather in the dining car. There are still many questions I need to ask. But all of them together? Won't someone overhear your questioning the others? I will speak softly because I am trained to do so. They will speak softly because they want to. Very well. I will do as you say. Yeah, right, boot. Get your fucking arse in gear. All right, dining car, here we come.
All right. Hopefully this pan. What's? Oh, I thought that was like a tissue or something. I hope we will be leaving soon. No, we're gonna be here a while. Probably until the case is solved. I'm gonna be honest with you. I should go and interview the passenger. Yeah, I'm nearly there, Poro. Jesus yeah. Christ. The passengers who agreed to come and talk to you are assembled, Poirot. Mr. Masterman is already here to answer your questions. Perfect. Thank you, my friend. Sit down, Mr. Masterman, please. Thank you. Okay. Does the name Cassetti mean anything to you? No. Should it? Have you heard of the Armstrong kidnapping case? Of course. It was all over the news a few years ago. a few years? Your employer's real name is Cassetti. He was the man behind that kidnapping. Mr. Ratchet was... He murdered that poor little girl? Mr. McQueen, the man you worked for is a kidnapper named Cassetti. What? <laughs> what kidnapping? He murdered his victim, a child named Daisy Armstrong. The Armstrong kidnapping? You had no idea of Monsieur Ratchet's real name? Damn, skunk! Why are you so upset? My father was the district attorney who handled the case, Mr. Poirot. I saw Mrs. Armstrong more than once. She was a lovely woman, so gentle and heartbroken. If ever a man deserved what he got, Ratchet, or Cassetti, is the man. He didn't deserve to live. Okay, so we're Madame getting tidbits Orson, of information. This is an interesting one. I, Daisy Armstrong she's case. sus. No, I've never heard of it. It was only two years ago. It was famous. Maybe so, but it was not famous in Spain, where I have been helping the refugees from Africa. You've never heard the name Daisy Armstrong? No, never. Daisy Armstrong? No. Okay, no. so most of the no. Europeans don't seem to know no. her. Yes. It was all over the English tabloids before I went to Jordan. A horrific crime that claimed the lives of an entire family and their wrongfully accused nanny. That's right, isn't it? Quite so. I thought the culprit had been punished. Some might say that the culprit was punished last night. Oh, my heavens. May I ask you a few more questions? Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, Jordan. You were in Jordan? Yes, I was an English tutor there to the children of a high official. Until recently. Okay. You read about the crime, as you said, in the tabloids. Yes, that's right. For weeks, news of the royal family was eclipsed. Have you ever been to the United States, mademoiselle? No, never. Jordan was really my first trip abroad. Okay. What is your relationship? They're to fucking. Captain well, they were Ratchet fucking. Not? Who? A former soldier traveling with us. You must have met him. Oh, yes. I met him on the platform in Istanbul. We only had a brief exchange of pleasantries, nothing more. British Reserve and all that. Ah, the British Reserve. But she's hiding something. Yes, with this I am familiar. But I don't know what. Confrontation. Are you sure everything you have told me is accurate, Mademoiselle Debenham? Of course. Mademoiselle, I know that you met Captain Arbuthnot at the Tocat Leon Hotel. You were spying on me. I am very attentive to my surroundings. It helps in my profession. I... well, it's your word against mine. I had occasion to be of some assistance in recovering Captain Arbuthnot's train ticket. While searching his room, I also discovered one of your earrings. Whatever your relationship may be to the good captain, I doubt it has anything to do with British Reserve. Oh, shit! You cannot tell me your secret, mademoiselle? I... I can't. I... I don't know what you mean. Poirot, Miss Debenham's got nothing to do with this business. Nothing. You hear? Oh, shit. Archie, stop. 
Captain, no. This behavior is unworthy of an officer and a gentleman. Leave her alone. Have you no honor? Archie, we should go. Captain Arbuthnot, I am certain you are a brave soldier, but you are a poor actor. The truth is that your relationship with Miss Debenham is beyond doubt, Captain. Your reaction was apparently that of a man trying to protect the woman he loves. I might understand that if your relationship were some cleverly disguised secret, but it is not. You make puppy dog eyes at one another at every opportunity. You cannot hide your love. Everybody knows. I advise you to stop with your accusations, Mr. Poirot. I'm going to escort Miss Debenham back to her compartment. Make of that what you will. They're fucking. The captain and Mademoiselle Debenham are obviously adamant about not revealing their relationship, but this scene convinced me there is more that is not so obvious. This murder has everyone on edge. In my 25-year career, I have never seen such madness aboard the Orient Express. I understand, my friend. The more we learn, the more perplexing this train ride becomes. But we have other clues to pursue. What do you have in mind? The broken watch on Monsieur Ratchet's wrist, for example. And the handkerchief found near the body. Who does that belong to? This little drama we have just witnessed has not put you off the scent. Far from it, my friend. Will you return to your watch over Mademoiselle Locke? Yes, I will. Dr. Constantine can probably use a break. Good. Au revoir, Poirot. It's where we find out he's the killer. That would be such a twist, because he comes across as such a fucking idiot. All right, so we have other clues and other... Uh, we have to hypothesize about the watch and the handkerchief. Which letter was embroidered on here? H. That was easy. I mean, that was literally a question of being able to fucking read. So whose does it belong to with H? I don't think Hotaru would have a bre- I don't think Hector would either. Oh, I guess... Anyone with H in their name. Right? One, two, three, four, five. Who else could it be? Oh, we don't know his first, we don't know their first names. So I guess these two as well. Et voila. Yeah. Interrogate people with the unknown first name. Interrogate suspects whose name begin with H. Okay. Let's have a look at the watch as well. The watch shows the time Ratchet was dead. The watch shows the time of the murder is probably... I must admit I'm not right this time. Oh, I'm completely wrong there. Let me consider all the possibilities. Yeah, those. Yes, there are only three possible hypotheses. The watch has been tampered with, or it is out of adjustment, or it indicates the time of the murder. I shall explore these last two possibilities before reaching any conclusions. If the watch is out of adjustment, it may be broken. There may also be another reason related directly to Ratchet. Maybe the watch is set to another time zone. Oh, we got to look at contradictory information as well. Oh, well, we got a lot here. Holy shit. If I use it at 1.15 and the information is contradictory. That one. That's the right answer. But if R R Ratchet might not even be American, right? He could, it could just be a fake ID if he's this Castetti guy. This is wrong, but I'm never far from the... I have no idea what the fuck I'm going to be clicking on here. No, 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 no. Not good. 
I do not think that's the right answer. The watch was not defective because the second hand is still moving. Sorry, guys, I'm not a genius at, uh, at watch making stuff. Time zones. What time zone is Istanbul located in? UTC plus two. Fantastic. Uh, UTC plus Maybe. one. If this theory is correct, then the murder took place at 12.15 a.m. I must interrogate all the passengers to see if any of them have an alibi for this hour. So we have a new time. Monsieur Foscarelli, I would like to ask you a few questions, if you allow me. Ah, we have to fix this fucking wow, machine, don't we, first? It? I was wondering when you'd get around to me. Unfortunately, you find me on a mission of mercy. This is the Hello, car guy, Monsieur right? Poirot. Sorry, we have a small problem. The orange juicer has broken down and I can't fix it. Mr. Foscarelli has kindly offered to help me. It isn't a car engine, but I am doing my best. Even with the two of us, we can't manage. Let me guess. You call upon Poirot to help. I'd be happy to answer your questions when we finished. Okay, well, we got another one of these fucking puzzles. Let's do the ma the mind map here. Cross-check known alibis, right. Which of these people have alibis that overlap? I genuinely have no fucking idea. This woman, these two. Right? And they have with him. Okay. He has with him. So, yeah. My little gray cells did not let me down. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting outcomes to this. Alright, I fucking hate puzzles like this, but we'll figure it out, probably. Can I take this off? things like this, I really do. Not as much as I hate Tower of Hanoi puzzles. Oh, I see. That needs extra height to it. Oh, that's so dumb. It's like the worst fucking design I've seen. There we go. Should work correctly now. Fix the juicer. Genius juicing. Bravo. I should stick to automobiles. Well, now we can talk calmly. Monsieur Foscarelli, is it? Antonio Foscarelli? Delighted, Monsieur Poirot. You have, of course, heard about Ratchet's murder last night. Oh, naturally. It is all anyone is talking about. The Armstrong Have affair. you ever been to the United States? Yes, it has been a primary market for our cars for the last ten years. You remember the Armstrong case? Armstrong? The name, yes. It was a little girl. A baby, was it not? Yes, a very tragic affair. Did you know that Cassetti the kidnapper was actually Ratchet? Oh, no. Then he deserved to die. I mean, wouldn't you agree? 
Can you tell me your movements on the night of the murder? I went to bed right after dinner, but I slept very badly. My roommate, uh, Mr. Masterman, had a toothache. Oh, he moaned all night. It woke me up several times. Did you hear anything or notice anything unusual? No, nothing that I can think of. I stayed in my bed all night. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Foscarelli. I'm sorry I couldn't help more, Signore. I remain at your disposal if you should need me. Okay. Thank you so much, Monsieur Poirot. I can put orange juice back on the menu. We're saved! Okay. Just gotta keep going, I guess. How well? Enchanté, mademoiselle. You are Hildegard Schmidt? I am La Folle. And you, I know, are Herr Poirot. Correct. May I ask you for a few minutes of your time to answer a few questions? With pleasure, but uh, first may I Oh my ask god, they always have some fucking bollocks oh, for you to do! Not some Russian I, doll shit! I don't know. I am at your service, Fraulein. My mistress, Princess Dragomirov, has asked me to open this traditional matryoshka doll. There is a trinket inside she must retrieve. Madam, in my experience, each Russian nesting doll simply pulls apart to reveal the next one inside. Indeed. Yet try it for yourself. As you wish. Oh, you are a gentleman. This sounds awful. This sounds like a terrible idea. All right, let's have a look. Oh no. I see. Okay, so it just wants us to, to match them with each other. Right? But that also matches, correct? Oh. Well, that's easy. But each doll's gonna have their own puzzle, right? Huh. Are those patterns different? They all look the same, which makes it even more confusing. Oh, uh, that was random luck. Excellent. All right. This one... All right. Oh, no. Oh, okay, we did it. Excellent. That wasn't that bad. What are you? To my dearest friend. The inscription reads, To my dearest friend. Oh, thank you very much. This doll reminds her of her youth in Russia. It was very hard under the Soviet regime, but thanks to her strength of will, she rose to be the head of a museum of antiquities in St. Petersburg. Even though she now lives in Berlin, it is said that the Kremlin still fears her. She must be a formidable woman indeed. You are her maid? I am her companion. I help her in her daily tasks, and I keep her company. Ah, forgive me. You will have heard of Ratchet's murder last night. Yes, of course. Everyone is talking I mean, except about Ratchet. Have you lost a handkerchief embroidered with an H, madame? Oh, no, monsieur. I thought perhaps since your first name is Hildegard. It is not mine, I tell you. I could not afford something so nice. I have no idea who it belongs to. My apologies. I did not mean to alarm you. 
Okay. Can you tell me how you occupied your time last night? Just after we left Istanbul, I had tea with my roommate, Fräulein Lok. I went to dinner with the princess, and when I returned to my compartment, Fräulein Lok was already asleep. A little later, Herr Michel, the conductor, came to get me because Madame la Princesse needed my help. Her back troubles her. I massaged her for about an hour. Do you remember the time? Ah, I'm sorry. I do not, mein Herr. Okay. Thank you for answering my questions, madame. More information we've got, the better. Alright, now where are we going? I guess we should talk to everyone, bit by bit, right? Monsieur, I am Hercule. I know who you are, Monsieur Poirot. What do you want? Who the fuck is Answers this? to a simple question or two. Alright, but quickly. My wife is quite ill. I would like to stay by her side. I promise. First of all, I imagine you know about the murder. Of course. The Countess is terribly distressed. Your full name? Rudolf Adrini. Your home is? Budapest. And how do you come to be aboard the Orient Express? I am a Hungarian diplomat. My family has represented our homeland since the revolution from the Soviet Union in 1956. I was on my country's business in Istanbul. Business which I cannot discuss. And your wife often accompanies you on your diplomatic missions? Yes, and why not? Was there anything else you wanted to know? Um, so he is Hungarian, he is a diplomat, and he is 34. That was easy. I hadn't even seen this guy before. Can you tell me how you spent last night? I was in our compartment with my wife. She went to bed early. I, I played a video game on my phone. Around 11 o'clock in the evening, my wife woke up and couldn't get back to sleep. She took a sleeping pill. As for me, I went to bed soon after that and slept straight through until morning. Okay. Have you ever been to the United States? I was posted to the Hungarian embassy in Washington for a year. You knew perhaps the Armstrong family? Armstrong? Armstrong. It is difficult to recall. One meets so many people. Hmm. It was the kidnapping of a child, a very sad affair. I think this guy's just here. was the man on this train who called himself Ratchet, the one who was murdered last night. Indeed. It sounds like justice finally caught up with him. Thank you for your time. Now, I'd like to speak to your He's wife. He's not going to let us do that, right? Mind. It's impossible. As I told you, my wife is very ill. Thank you, and good luck with the investigation. Very suspicious, that bit. But maybe she is. Like, I mean, it is possible. Yeah. The good count does not appear to want me to talk to his wife. Right. Madame Hubbard, may I ask you a question or two? It won't take long. Anything I can do to help. Have this... you misplaced a handkerchief recently? No, I don't think so. Why? We found the handkerchief embroidered with the letter H, so I thought it might have been yours. I'm sorry, but it's not. It may belong to Miss Schmidt, Princess Dragomirov's lady's maid. I believe her first name is... We already Hildegard. checked her, and she denied it. It is a possibility. Anyone could be lying, of course. I thank you, madame. Yeah, is anyone going to actually own up to owning the fucking handkerchief anyway? Right... Like, why would you own up to it if you're the killer? This is Alrim, right? Yeah, this is Alrim. Hello. Can I do something for you? Hello, Monsieur Hardman, I believe. Oh, you got an H. Heard of the murder? Cyrus Hardman. Yes. And the fact that there's been a murder is all over the truth. I mean, it's you a very small environment. Sound about it, Monsieur. It's not the first murder I've run across. I had no idea the selling of toys was so dangerous. I did overhear you mention at dinner that this is your profession. Toy salesman is a cover. I'm a private detective, just like you, from the U.S. Okay. American, private detective, 30. This is wrong. 55? What? He looks like he's fucking 20! Et voila. I'm sorry, the ages in this are nuts. Alright, embroidered handkerchief. 
Uh, is this handkerchief embroidered with an H yours? Do I look like the kind of guy who would use a handkerchief like that? Not really. Monsieur Ardman, have you heard of the Armstrong of course he has. case? Armstrong? The kidnapping three or four years ago? Who hasn't? Why? Ratchet's real name was Cassetti. I have reason to believe he was the kidnapper. What? He killed that little girl? No, I didn't know. If I had known, I wouldn't have taken the job. Were you on duty last night? You bet. I kept my door open a crack and I watched all night. No one entered that car who didn't belong there. Did you see anything in particular? The conductor, Michelle. He was there most of the time, too, except for 15 minutes or so after we left Vinkovsky. He must have answered a call from Ratchet's room. Then he was absent again for a while around 1 a.m. After that, he didn't move until 5. Okay, does that line up with the otherwise? I don't know. I did not expect to find another detective on this train. I just finished a job in Istanbul when I received an email from Ratchet. He hired me to protect him. Something you failed to do. I'm not happy about that. He'd received some threatening letters. I was supposed to watch his back, and yeah, something I failed to do. But he seemed to think he was in more danger when he left the train. He was traveling to Paris? I assume so, but I'm not entirely sure. Can anyone on this train confirm your identity? Yeah, that McQueen kid. Ratchet's secretary. Okay. Do you have any idea who was behind the threatening letters? I don't know his name, but Ratchet told me he was a small man. Dark hair, with a womanish kind of voice. Oh, thank you for your That's help. Unusual description there. Okay. <laughs> thank you for answering my questions, Monsieur Ardman. Listen, Poirot. I know I fell down on the job, but if you need help, any at all, let me know. I'd like to make it right. Okay. Well, I'm not sure I want to work with an amateur detective like you who fails any case. I am the fucking Hercule Poirot, okay? I know my fucking shit. Seems somebody to fuck off, right? Or swing a punch at me. I am not prepared to receive anyone. Come back later. Very well, madam. I'll come back later. But you will need to speak to me. Okay, so that's the uh, Russian lady. So, my friend, have you finished your investigation? No, but I have managed to solve a few mysteries. Okay. I stay here to watch this young lady. This woman, this Swedish woman, I think, is the most sus. She has, like, serial killer vibes to me. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. This woman, I so sus. Your investigation is going well, Mr. Poirot. Why aren't we asking her about drugging the fucking food, by the way? The Call of the Wild. Ah, Monsieur McQueen, may I ask you a question? Anything I can do to help, Mr. Poirot? Uh, the handkerchief. This handkerchief embroidered with an H. Is it yours? No, I don't use cloth handkerchiefs. Who does? Thank you. I Who under you the age know. of 89? Use it doesn't use his cloth handkerchiefs in the year 2023. I feel like I've spoken to everyone now. Oh god, that door absolutely just flipped its shit. Yeah, I can't go in 101. Can't go in 102. 103. Yeah, some are definitely off limits. But she won't let me talk to her, right? I'm not really sure what I'm meant to be doing now. So, my friend. No. Okay. All right, well, we're not done here, clearly. Oh, we can ask these Excuse guys. Excuse me, Doctor. May I ask you a question? Anything that can help the investigation, Mr. Poirot. I wanted to know what your first name is, Doctor. My name is Robert. Why? To find out if the handkerchief embroidered with an H could have been yours. I'm a doctor, Mr. Poirot. Cloth handkerchiefs are a playground for viruses. I would not touch one. Yeah, they're fucking gross. Like, they're so fucking disgusting. They really are one of the worst things. Is that it? So, no. Okay. All right. I don't know who else I should speak to. I feel like I've been everywhere. She won't talk to me. 
She's gonna be like, oh, fuck off. I am not very well. So who haven't I spoken to? My game just froze there, what the fuck? That was really fucking weird. Maybe we have to talk to the guy and see if we can speak to the the woman again. You know what I mean? Like, it's all I can think of doing. Like, maybe he'll, like... We can convince him. Uh, convince... Uh, uh... Ask for Monsieur, the help. if I am to catch this murderer, I will need your help. My help? I am at your service, Poirot. Hmm, what should I say to him, though? Like... <sighs> you love your wife? You are obviously a devoted husband, Count Andrini. My wife means the world to me. There were questions in Budapest about a Hungarian diplomat marrying an American woman. It did not deter you. I would have given up my position for her. I would think it is universal. Are you married? Pyro is gay. No. I fear marriage is not for me. But her condition, is it very grave? She is suffering a bout of vertigo. You understand? Oh, okay. So nothing that serious. I mean, I understand it's like, it can be like, you know, a pain in the ass. You know what I mean? Like it can like really, really, really suck, right? But, you know. I think Dr. Constantine. It's not like she's dying. She's annoyed. She's upset. Train? I did not know. Where is this doctor? I think Dr. Constantine is in the lounge car. If not, perhaps the conductor can tell you where he is. Very well. I will find him. Thank you very much. All right. We got him out the fucking way. Forgive me for intruding, madame. I am Hercule Poirot. I know who you are, Mr. Poirot. I overheard you send my husband on a wild goose chase. Your husband cares for you greatly, madame. I apologize for exploiting that fact. But the situation is urgent, and I need to ask you a few questions. Apology accepted. I realize you must speak to everyone. This horrendous murder. It's very upsetting. That is a beautiful music box. Oh no, it's a Please fucking don't puzzle. Touch the music box. It's a fragile family heirloom. Your accent, is it American? Boston, perhaps? You have a good ear, Mr. Poirot. Yes. Born and raised in what we call the Back Bay. Are you in the diplomatic service like your husband? No, not officially. I was still in college when I met Rudy Ooh. two years ago. I keep myself busy handling his scheduling, travel, Appointments. Ah, what is this saying? Behind every great man, there is a great woman. That was the saying. Today, one might reverse the sentiment as well, don't you think? Of course. I stand corrected. Okay, so she is American, she is no profession, and she is 21. That's the right answer. A handkerchief embroidered with an H was found at the crime scene. By any chance, does your first name begin with an H? No, my first name is Elena, with an E. Okay. Um, can you tell me what you did last night? Well, my husband and I went to dinner. Then we came back here. We went to bed around 10 o'clock. I tried to sleep, but I couldn't because of the shaking of the train. I suffer from vertigo. I finally took a sleeping pill, and that did the trick. When did the train's motion prevent Is it normal to have sleeping pills coming out your arm? Everyone on this train is loaded with the fucking things. I know, because I must have looked at my watch about ten Is that a rich people thing? I don't know. <laughs> I see. Like, I've taken sleeping pills, but, like, you know. Uh, went back to... That's a lie, because it was Calm stopped. Come now, Countess. You are not telling me the truth. Why do you say that? The train was stopped. The train stopped at 12.30 a.m. due to snow. So there was no ah, shaking. Ah, gotcha. You lying bitch. But you told me that it was the shaking that prevented you from sleeping. I don't know. You're confusing me. 
My vertigo. Madame, a man died last night. You can't talk nonsense just because you're sick. You are hiding something from me. How dare you? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm going to find my husband. Well, what a bitch. Guess we should look through her shit. That was unkind, I know, but my strategy worked. I can now inspect this room in peace. It wasn't that unkind. I thought you were being completely fucking reasonable. Sleeping pills. These must be the sleeping pills that Countess Andreni took last night. Okay, some jewellery of some description. The Great Gatsby. Yeah, this is a puzzle of some horrific description. Look at it. Oh, God. What am I even looking at? <sighs> these, I will say, if these are like what the actual compartments of the Orient Express are like, they're gorgeous. I really want to go on the Orient Express, but it's so expensive. I think it like if you're gonna sew second class, four grand for two people, which would be really, it'd still be really nice. Like I mean, that's a lot of money, but if it's like a once in a lifetime trip, I think it would be cool. Do we actually see anything? Is this is this a clue? This fucking thing? Like I don't know. Everything looks the same. And this is I can interact with. There seems to be something missing here. Okay. I have no idea. We have a flower, a leaf. Oh, I see. So, flower, leaf, bird for this. At least, is the first bit. So, let's do that. Flower. That, is that the flower? Leaf. Bird. Okay. Good start. And we got the crank. I had to pull it all the way out there, otherwise it wouldn't have possibly fed it out. Okay. Now it's going to play a song, I'm going to guess. But the question is, what do I do with it? And where do I get the pattern from? Aha, uh -huh. okay. So three, 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 kind of. I'm gonna forget that rapidly, I'm gonna be honest with you. Is that right? I guess not. Here? Yeah! Alright, now finally we have a ballerina of some description that we need to do something with. But I can't click on the ballerina? Does this change the top thing as well? It does, okay. So we need to align these to a certain thing, right? But the question is, what is it? Oh, there's a star here and a musical note. So that? Yeah! Hell yeah, holy shit, we're just robbing her. An engraving written in, I believe, Russian Cyrillic. It looks and it starts like with an H. First name. Wow, we we just fucking holy shit. Holy shit. Is there more though? I might need to like look at it again. 
Oh yeah, this as well. Like a crest. For my beautiful young ladies, Helena and Sonia. Helena with an H. Indeed. Oh, no, 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 I want to look at it. Look at the picture. It's Countess Andreni with an older girl. Poirot, have you no shame? Oh, you could be in trouble here, Poirot. Monsieur, I am afraid shame is not a very helpful emotion for a detective trying to get at the truth. What are you doing in our compartment? I am investigating a murder, Count Andreni. My wife is ill. My apologies, monsieur, but your wife seemed in perfect health when she left the room to find you. I do apologize, but I needed to search your compartment. You will regret this, Poirot. Please, Count. You aren't going to challenge me to a duel. Wow, what a sulky little prick. Countess, I'm afraid I took the liberty of inspecting your little music box. How dare you? The message in the medallion was addressed to you and Sonia. Sonia Armstrong, your older sister. Oh, shit! The mother of Daisy, the murdered child. I am a Hungarian diplomat. You have no official standing here. You have no right to search- No, Rudolf. Let me speak. It's useless to deny what this gentleman says. I am Helena Goldenberg, the sister of Sonia Armstrong, and Daisy was my niece. The music box is a gift from my sister's godmother, a very close friend to my mother. We hid the truth from you when we learned that the man killed last night was the person who destroyed my family. I panicked. I didn't want to be accused. That is also why you lied about the H in your first name? Exactly. Your ferreting about looking for the H is obviously part of your investigation. If I found a anchor chief in Monsieur Ratchet's room embroidered with an H, I might suspect you had been there. A handkerchief? I don't have any handkerchiefs embroidered with my initial. To be honest, that sounds awfully old-fashioned to me. I give you my word of honor that last night, Helena never left her compartment. My wife is telling you the truth, Poirot. I hope so. I'll let you rest. Wow, so these guys have the clearest motive on here by miles. The the but the it's obviously not going to be as complicated. It's going to be much more complicated than that. But first, I should check the inscription on the back of the medallion. What medallion? Oh, fuck. I don't fucking know. I wasn't paying attention to this shit. Like, it's like fucking... Alright. I'm gonna cheat here, because I have no idea. Alright. So it's... N A T A L I A. So Natalia. I must admit I'm not right. This I got that wrong. Oh, it's time. yeah at the end, not. There's like one that's yeah. Natalia. There you go. Natalia. Natalia. Did we just, oh, we just remembered this. Natalia I thought we'd stolen Spanish. it, but we haven't. We remembered it. She is the only Russian passenger on the train. In addition, her first name begins with an H in Cyrillic. Oh, that is sussy. Et voila. All right. I guess we should go and interrogate her. Everyone's so connected. Oh, no, she's the other way. God damn it, I didn't mean to go in the bra lounge. She's like this one, right? This is her cabin. No? Is she 204? No, oh, she's in... She's in first... She's in standard class. Unlike us. Unlike us, the great master detective, Hercule Poirot. Hey, let's in, fuckface. Like we got, we got important info I'm here. Not prepared to receive any. I'm sorry, madam, but a man has been murdered. I must ask you a few questions. You must have misunderstood me. I cannot speak to you just now. Madam, I know that Sonia Armstrong is your goddaughter. 
Come in, please. God, it's just her. It's just terrifying. Please forgive my intrusion, madame, but I really must ask you some questions. Then ask. I'll answer if it pleases me. Hmm, we have not been properly introduced, yet I have observed her a couple of times, so I can already deduce some things. She's a hard ass, this is fucking for sure. She is Russian, she is director of a museum, and she is 85. That was easy. Alibi. I will first ask you about last night. Will you tell me your movements? I went to bed just after dinner. I read until 11, then tried to sleep. Later, I woke. What caused you to awaken? I suffer from back pain, a consequence of old age interfering with an active life. I called Schmidt around 12.45 a.m. to give me a massage. She did so until I fell asleep. How long was she with you? A good hour, That I lines would up say. with what she said, I think. I see. The first initial of your first name, Natalia, in the Cyrillic alphabet looks exactly like the letter H in the Latin alphabet. I'm Russian, Monsieur Poirot, and I was the head of a museum of antiquities in St. Petersburg for decades until I moved to Berlin recently. <laughs> I'm familiar with Cyrillic. This handkerchief is yours, isn't it? Uh, yes, indeed. Oh, shit. Okay, so we found it the handkerchief, Anna. It was found Anna. in Monsieur Ratchet's room. Can you explain to me why Madame Schmidt didn't identify the She was covering? She must have known it was yours. Possibly to protect me. She is very loyal. Your next question will be, how did my handkerchief come to be lying by a murdered man's body? A murdered man that you have a motive to kill, by the way. I have no idea. That is not an answer, madame. It is all I am able to give you. I must tell you, Princess Dragomirov, I have discovered... She knows, I think, and I'm pretty sure she knows this. And that is? You are Sonia Armstrong's godmother. You make that sound like a revelation. I have never hidden the fact, monsieur. You knew Colonel Armstrong well, then? I knew him slightly, but his wife, Sonia Armstrong, was my goddaughter. I was on terms of friendship with her mother, the actress Linda Arden. Linda Arden was a genius, one of the greatest tragic actresses in the world. I was not only an admirer of her art, I was a personal friend. Very well. But this links you to the Armstrong kidnapping case. Elena Andreni is the sister of Sonia Armstrong, the late mother of Daisy Armstrong, kidnapped and killed by the man who was murdered on this train. Ratchet. Indeed. Was it he? Then justice has at last been served. Allow me to summarize. Do I have a choice? Wow, First the sass. Incidents, I shall call it. You are close to the Armstrong family, and the presumed assassin of Daisy Armstrong was killed while you were on board the same train. Second coincidence. Your handkerchief happens to be found at the foot. I'm of guessing the she did the crap bed. knife wound, uh, like the the, the left-handed one that didn't one kill. One of the stab wounds inflicted on the body But somebody else did the primary by ones. By a left-handed person, you are left-handed. That is a lot of coincidences, Princess Dragomirov. Well, Monsieur Poirot, call it fate. If you report to the police your coincidences, they will laugh. A yeah, but the left-handed one was crap, killed, right? Like, it's not the one that killed. murdered a man? With how many potential witnesses who saw me doddering along the corridor in the middle of the night like Lady Macbeth? You are right, princess. You could not work alone. Which means you have one or more accomplices. And it is only a matter of time before I find out who they are. I would appreciate it if you would remove yourself from my room and take I think Pyro is probably to... right here. I keep making it sound like his name is like Flamethrower. I'm a Pyro. I like to burn things. Alright, well I think we're good here. So, my friend. No. Okay. Oh, we haven't finished yet? 
Oh, we've got to cross-check the alloys. Okay. All right, so... These two... Toothache man. And that. And these two. That's the right answer. But if the alibis match, they could just be accomplices. All right, we can report to Book now. And that oh, probably ends oh, the chapter, I'm going to guess. She hasn't moved. But she seems to be waking up little by little. What about you? Your investigation progresses? I find myself helping everyone with their problems before they can help me <laughs> with mine. I have shifted boxes, helped with hangovers, repaired an orange juicer, unlocked some Russian dolls, all so my investigation can proceed. It's a bit Don't weird. forget the dessert recipe. How can I? Truly. The <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact they address it. It's great. Clean out the Orgeon stables. Yet, I have managed to solve a few mysteries. Wow, oh, some contemporary references everything. there to the Twelve Tasks of Hercules. The embroidered handkerchief belongs to Princess Dragomirov. I also found out that she was Sonia Armstrong's godmother. On the same train with the little girl's murderer? Exactly. Also... Elena Andreni is the younger sister of Sonia Armstrong, Daisy's mother. Another passenger connected to the Armstrong case? Yes, Book. What are the odds, do you think? But I cannot see either woman stabbing Ratchet over and over again in a frenzy. And they apparently have alibis. I had three. I still suspect the Swedish chick. The, the one down the carriage from us right now. Could have been tampered with. It could have been out of adjustment before the murder. Or, of course, it could indicate the actual time of the murder. The only hypothesis I could rule out was that the watch was out of adjustment. For the others, they are impossible to verify. So the watch is of little use to the investigation. And I was convinced that it indicated the time of the crime. Two women involved in the Armstrong case. Let us not forget our patient here. There are three women. Look, she seems to be waking up. All right, time to play as her again, I'm going to guess. What's happening to me? Did I fall asleep again? Uh, indeed, Mademoiselle Locke. Did you take any medication? She was Sleeping drugged by her fucking up Swedish no. chick. I never use sleeping pills. I inspected your cup. You can clearly see that there is a residue of something at the bottom. I'm sure a lab test would confirm you were drugged. Most likely an overdose. That would explain your battle to shake off the effects. You think Fräulein Schmidt did it? She certainly had the most opportunity, but why would she? But no one knew who I was. I mean, someone it's clearly did know who you someone were. Someone deliberately targeted me. Choose the two most people likely to have drugged her. Um, I mean, a hundred percent. Her, sorry. Oh, it's her. I thought it was this. Oh, okay, it's not. Um, these two, right? This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. Maybe him. I do not think that's the right. Oh, the food, the, the chef. This is wrong, but I'm never far. I from don't the know. Truth. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. Genuinely, no, 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 idea. no, no, not good. Fräulein Schmidt or Monsieur Michel may have drugged the tea that Mademoiselle Locke drank. Okay. Fräulein Schmidt or Pierre Michel could have drugged your tea. They are really the only two people on this train who could have done it. But why would either one do it? Mr. Poirot, I'm feeling much better. I'd like to bring you up to date, to why I ended up on this train. If you are able, I would very much like you to finish your story. Very well then. After the Daisy Armstrong case was officially closed, I put out a standing request to the police departments in the Boston area for anything on Michael Clark. But he didn't turn up on their radar. I even set up an anonymous tip line for news about Clark. That's how I met Braid, a sketchy contact on the dark the web. The dark web? I found nothing I could use. Holy shit. 
Almost chapter 6 complete. Got a long way to go still, guys. Like, holy shit. Four long years passed without anything new. Every day I looked at the evidence board I put up in my apartment bedroom. Then this morning, a police report landed on my desk that changed everything. I paid a visit to the police property room and took home a box full of clues. There was his name. Michael Clark. Interesting. The death of Michael Clark. Should probably save our game here, as I haven't saved this entire session again. Interesting stuff. Hello, Nomkins, and welcome back. It's not a welcome back, it's the same video for you guys, but we are back uh, with Murder on the Orient Express. We are not playing a kill Poirot. We are playing American Detective Lady for a bit here, and she has a kitty cat, which is very nom. Um, but we now need to piece together, I believe, um, what's going on. So let's see what evidence we've been given about this mysterious killer. A bill from the power company with, I'm sure, plenty of excuses why my rates keep going up. Relatable. Orient Express magazine. Oh, for the discriminating traveler. Also for the overworked detective who never seems to have time for a vacation. Well, I can dream, can't I? Okay. Contents of folder kidnapping. The body of investigative reporter Michael Clark was found buried in his Boston backyard. Clark was killed with a single shot to the chest. State of decomposition says an estimated date of death and burial, fall 2018. So this guy, Ratchet, or whatever the fuck his real name is, has been killing people and assuming their identities for a while, Years it looks like. Of no new leads in the Armstrong case. And then this. Michael Clark, the sarcastic reporter, my prime suspect in the kidnapping, murdered four years ago? Was that before or this after the Michael killing? Clark? He it's not him. He doesn't anything like the journalist I interviewed. Michael, you have earned a place on my evidence board. Yeah. Okay, so Ratchet killed him and took over his identity and then murdered the little girl as him. All right. Lovely. All the important clues you find are added to the evidence board on the wall. You can consult them at any time by selecting the evidence board. Okay. Anything else in this? We should probably open this box of vital clues here. All right, so these are the found at the abduction cabin. It's a key ring with a chain. They found this keychain in the cabin, but they wouldn't have bothered to examine the keys once the DA shut down the investigation. The keys were just tossed in the evidence box along with everything else. It's Why are the cops in this so fucking useless? They didn't bother? What the fuck? All right, anyway, what do we have? All right, we have a, a bull with some dots, which is clearly a puzzle of some kind. Great. Easy. That was actually really easy. What do they call this? Brass knuckles? Knuckle dusters? Illegal in Massachusetts. Possession alone can lead to serious jail. So wait a second. You're allowed to have guns in the US, but not a hidden knuckle duster? Hmm. That's insane. 3569. That's a code for something. Maybe the dice, actually. A 20-sided dice, what a nerd. Um, three. Five. Six. Nine. Yeah. Oh shit, what the fuck is this? It's like a pill? Come on, game. Let me pull you out with the motion control, thank what you. What do we find? Oh, it's a cyanide. Capsule and a smell. Bitter almonds. Cyanide. Okay, so we have a cyanide tablet hidden inside a D20. Which is pretty crazy, I'm gonna be honest with you. Alright, we gotta make a picture here of some description, I guess. The question is, what is it of? Hmm. Oh, it's a skull. That was really easy. What do we have inside here? A oozp. Hmm, a USB key. Let's plug it into my PC and see what nasty little secret it contains. An oozp. 
Hmm. A US yeah, okay, just take the fucking thing, Detective. Don't just keep talking about it. All right, what else do we have? There was a few other things on the keyring. Papilla. <laughs> All right, we've got to make a sun. It's a torch with a sun on. What a unique idea. And we get... Ooh. What do we have here? A flashlight. It's they not... can also conceal knives. But yeah, I was going to say, it's a knife. We have... Lockpicks. Well, <laughs> give us one second, guys. Because the papilla just disconnected my keyboard when she ran out the room. Like a naughty little numkin. Alright, give me a second, guys, because my game is absolutely fucked from this. Hang on. Alright, what else do we have in here? Fluffy. Daisy's plush toy. I said she never got to see it again. So clever. All that evidence and yet no DNA found. What is this? The only fingerprints found on the bottle were Suzanne's. But she probably had it brought there, right? After she'd already touched Suzanne's it, I'm gonna guess. Hair, so conveniently left in the cabin for us to find. It was planted. I knew she was innocent. Yeah, she was framed. Like, I don't, for one minute, think she's a viable lead. Alright, let's put this ooze in the laptop. Okay. Shaved off the Metro beard. But I'd recognize that smug bastard anywhere. The man I interviewed four years ago posing as Michael Clark. This goes on the board. Hmm... Maybe they needed to show the ransom to someone to check if the serial numbers were still on record. I'll print them, and on the wall they go. Okay. Lan Franco Absolutely Cassetti. nothing on this Cassetti. His driver's license is almost surely a fake. Is that even his real name, Cassetti? Like, is, or is that just another identity that he's stolen, you know? I don't you know? have time to waste on magazines. Do you have time to waste on Moby Dick? One sec, guys. Hmm. Okay. Connect two items on the board. Autopsy report tattoo. This tattoo is the same on both pictures. Okay. Boston shooting victim star and I'm really confused here. All right, so we got the Michael Clark I met four years ago with I that one. It. The faces don't match at all. They are clearly two different men. But I these two are the same. Recognition on my computer. I, I will in a minute. Just give me a minute. I want to match these two up as well. So Ratchet's real name was Cassetti. Okay. Got a good amount of evidence here, which is good. Uh, facial recognition. Okay. The real Michael Clark has been dead for years. Let's see if the photo of the fake Michael Clark matches someone in the database of known criminals. I've tried this. It's this guy on the right. In the past Stop talking. Years, but came up empty. Maybe whoever he really is has finally made a mistake. That could be him. But he looks pretty different. Um, that's a rookie mistake. Yes, he seems different at first glance, but still, it's the same person. Good. Why okay. is the glasses right? He's not wearing one. I don't understand this at all. He's changed his appearance. Oh, it's a things lot. that are different. Probably had some plastic the rest are the same. on his nose, but there is no doubt it's the same person. Let's see why he was arrested. Arrested November 23rd, 2023 at Yerevan Airport in Armenia in possession of stolen ancient artifacts. The three Mesopotamian statuettes were confiscated and placed under sequestration by the court. The man paid bail. The trial set for January the 5th, 2024. Okay. Can we look him up now? Hmm. 
Hmm. Did we get any new information there? Why can't we search Samuel Ratchet on the computer? Because we got his name. Oh my god, I've got to click his fucking picture, look. Mr. Ratchet, you didn't just steal statuettes. What recent information does the database have on you? That's pretty dumb that I had to do that. Samuel Ratchet. That's so frustrating. I have a name, but I can't find anything about him. But I know just who to call. Who are you gonna call? Oh, your dark web contact? Robot Defense League, we are monitoring this call. Hello, Braid. Long time. Oh, Joanna. Hey, how may I assist you? I need you to search the dark web. Yeah, uh, can you narrow that down a little? Because, uh, it's pretty big and pretty dark out here. Could you find intel about a Samuel Ratchet? Samuel Ratchet. Got it. Bad dude? They don't come worse. Send me what you find by email. All right, hang on. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. This might be something. I gotta do a deeper dive, but uh, you should find this interesting. Could be coincidence if I believed in them. Emailing details. Domo arigato, Mr. Robato. We're here to save mankind. Oh, it's a cookbook. All right, let's have a look around here now. Uh, I think we got an email now from Braid, so let's see what he's got, yeah. So we have an Orient the Express Orient ticket. Express. I'm gonna print these tickets and put them on the board. And he paid for three, because he paid for his staff as well. Although, shouldn't he have paid for four? Because wasn't there four people, like the private detective too? But I guess he only hired him at the last minute, right? Okay. So. You got a lot going on here. Boston shooting victim, still unidentified, and him in Armenia a week ago. Is alive. The dead man can only be Noah. Okay, so Noah's been bumped off, which doesn't surprise me too much. Um, Goodbye, same man. Michael Clark. Hello, Samuel Ratchet, the man who stole your identity and your life. Okay, and then we got the Orient Express ticket and this him. This is Ratchet's ticket. Mm. Hector McQueen's Orient Express ticket. Who the fuck is Hector McQueen? District Attorney McQueen. Huh? The person traveling with Ratchet has the same last name as my district attorney during the Armstrong case? Okay, that's weird. We didn't know that. I don't I really understand how, what the context of that is. But probably really bad. These tickets were all booked by McQueen. I guess we should look up McQueen. Oh shit! I knew it. He's the son of my former. DM. Oh, we already knew that. We did already he know that. On the evidence board. But is he relevant to this or not? He could be out for revenge this whole time. He suddenly became. He just became our number one suspect. He's the son of my former DA. Right. I know. There's. I know. For some reason, nearly everyone on the fucking train has a reason to kill Ratchet because he's such a prick and apparently has ruined people's lives around the globe constantly. But this guy has one of the biggest reasons. Okay. Oh my god. All right. What else do we have around here? Now I can look at this. I guess the Orient the Express. The Orient Express departs from Istanbul next week. Interesting. I'll put it on the board. I'll just rip up the, the magazine. Event? Some old train. But that face, that man. Oh my god, it's the sp it's every literally every person on this fucking train a fucking suspect. By the way, I apologize the mouse cursor showing up randomly, guys. I don't know why it's doing it, it's really weird, but it's been doing it for a while. Um I tried restarting the game, but it keeps doing it, so fuck it. Uh anyway, um 
This guy works for Ratchet, and if that's a coincidence, I'll eat my badge. I mean, it could be coincidence. Like, Poirot actually dismissed it as a coincidence pretty, pretty quickly. Hector McQueen is the son of District Attorney McQueen. It's not that... Okay. There's no need to get quite as moist about this Here's as you are, McQueen detective. Like. All right. So they're the same person. Foscarelli will be on the Orient Express next week. What? Who is Foscarelli? I don't understand Foscarelli's fucking place. Am I meant to un understand this at the moment? Or like... Hector McQueen will be on the Orient Express next week. Yes, I understand that. Next week, a certain Edward Masterman will be on the Orient Express. Yeah, we know who that is as well, because we've met him. Ratchet will be traveling on the Orient Express in a week. Look, can we just buy a ticket for the Orient I don't think- Okay, right. I don't think tickets for the Orient Express are that, like, fucking easy to come by, by the way. Like, she's like, yeah, I'm just going to book a ticket on the Orient Express. No big deal. It must be booked out. Like, these are, like... People was like dream fucking things. I don't even know. I have no idea what I'm missing here, by the way. I feel like I'm missing something. Hmm. I have no idea what I'm missing here. Absolutely no idea. Hmm. Why can't I buy a ticket? I have absolutely no idea. Uh, maybe I can use the evidence board to like piece something together first. I didn't think about that. Oh yeah, we do. We do have. Okay, we haven't finished connecting the clues on the wall. Are you fucking kidding me? I feel like I've I, I feel like I've done everything. Like there's no other scenario that could possibly be connected here. And what have I missed in here? Oh, something else on the keychain. Apparently. I'm not entirely sure what else. I feel like I look... Oh, there's two keys. One we already looked at. This is the one with the code on, right? Yeah, we already used that code. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm missing. Hang on, how many fucking keys are there? Can we just take this key? Other than the... Th oh, shit. Oh. Oh. They sell them on the internet for self-protection. Well, that's pretty shady. Well, that's the evidence box side mission complete, at least. Okay, evidence box complete, but this is not complete, and I have no idea why not. Like, everything here seems to make perfect sense. I'm gonna have a little ch I've got a little checklist here of things I should connect, so let's have a look, shall we? Autopsy report with the tattoo to third photo of the ransom. Okay. The Michael Clark I met four years ago connected to Michael Clark, the journalist found dead yesterday. Michael Clark uh, connected to Cassetti. Done. All right. Perfect. That first phase, all correct. All right. Boston shooting victim still unidentified. To Samuel Ratchet, definitely not the same person. Samuel Ratchet to Michael Clark, already done, all fine. Samuel Ratchet to Ratchet's Orient Express ticket, boom. Hector McQueen to this, to the Orient Express ticket, yep. Hector McQueen's Orient Express ticket to Hector McQueen retires. Connect all three Orient Express tickets together, boom, that's all been done. All right. John Armstrong. Who the fuck is John Armstrong? Who the fuck is John Armstrong? Here. That's what I'm missing. These two. I know that face. That's John Armstrong's driver. Ta-da! We did it, guys. Please Man, be the end. Ratchet is taking the Orient Express next week. 
McQueen, the district attorney's son, is too. Foscarelli, the Armstrong chauffeur, is too. <laughs> it can't be a coincidence. McQueen and Foscarelli must have decided to take revenge and will undoubtedly attack... <laughs> Every Richard single Richard. person on this train has a motive I to murder this guy. <laughs> what are the chances? <laughs> and above all, I must stop Ratchet. But I can't do it in Istanbul because there's no extradition treaty with the United States. Ratchet can never be judged in the U.S. without an extradition treaty. I'll have to wait until he's in Paris to have him arrested. Okay. Holy shit. Like, every single person on this train! There's like 30 people and they all hate his fucking guts! <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the point. ...is taken for this special anniversary journey. Oh, it's impossible to find a ticket. What can I do? Um. Uh, I don't know. Buy a ticket from somebody else? Let's find out who's traveling on the Orient Express. All right, Time Braid. Hook me up. Braid. All right, Braid. Hook me up with a ticket, okay? That's how we get the tickets in this fucking world. We lie, okay? They cost like four grand for the basic ones. Braid. It's me again. I haven't found anything useful yet. I need one last favor. But it's a big one. Uh-oh. Can you find me the list of passengers of the Orient Express for that anniversary trip? Hold on. I bet that costs even more, the anniversary this trip. This is surprisingly good. Maybe because of the big event. I found the list, but they sealed my back door as I was starting to capture it. Oh, no. Oh, calm down. I got one name. Female. The name I got before they kicked me off the server was Stacy Johnson. Do you feel like a Stacy Johnson? The question is, how is she going to feel about helping me? That's one you'll have to figure out for yourself. I gotta go back to... Who the fuck is Stacy Johnson? Is this just a new character? I guess... I guess so, because she isn't on the train. We get her ticket. Alright. Oh, she's an actress. That makes sense, considering the clientele for the Orient Express, I guess. Hello, is this Stacy Johnson? Who's asking? Uh, I'm a police detective. My name is Joanna Locke. I'm a police detective. And I'm just an actress. Now what did I do wrong? Nothing. I need your help. I need to take your place in the Orient Express. Is this a joke? No way. Uh, talk about the Armstrong case. Do you remember the Armstrong kidnapping? Of course I do. That poor little girl. I'm a police officer. I have a new lead that may help me find her killer. Wait. Didn't they prove it was the nanny? I have new evidence. I have found compelling new evidence. I've reopened my investigation. You know, I had my doubts about the murderous nanny. I played a nanny a couple years ago in a slasher. I was killed in the first episode, but it got me interested in helping kids. Uh, you understand the situation? Stacey, please. You say you help kids? Well, I joined a couple of associations who are trying to help underprivileged kids. If this little girl's real killer is still out there somewhere, I'd do anything I could to help. Getting me on that train will help more than you can imagine. So, you want my ticket for the Orient Express? But I booked it months ago. I was so much looking forward to this trip. Um, make a nice gesture. Stacy, I can tell you care about kids. Here's your chance to help put this- <laughs> I can tell you care about kids, help this dead one. Of his life. Think of the publicity for those causes you care about. Think about the kids. The kids. Yeah. All right. We'll do it for Daisy and the kids who suffer. I'll take care of changing the tickets to your name and send it to you. Get him. Make him pay. I mean, we I made will. him pay because he's fucking dead. Thank you so much. <laughs> Although I don't think we had anything to do with him dying. I think it, I think she's too motivated to solve the case to have anything to do with the murder. Stacy was as good as her word. I received the ticket. I called my chief to let him know I was taking my vacation time. I had coming. I flew to Istanbul. I was finally going to nail the monster responsible for Daisy Armstrong's death, Michael Clark's death, even his accomplice, and I suspected so many others as well. You know the rest. Yeah, someone killed him before you got to him, which is a bit unfortunate, really. That's the end of the chapter. That was a short chapter compared to the other chapters. Like 30 minutes, we're back with Poirot. I will solve the case. And that's how I found myself on this train, on Ratchet's trail. The rest you know. My identity is easily checked with the Berkshire police.
Thank you for your detailed account, Mademoiselle Locke. In addition to giving us crucial details of the investigation, this is fascinating. You have made it clear that there are many who might wish to see. <laughs> there are many on the train. Literally everyone except the four of us wants him dead. And it could still. I don't even know about the doctor. Maybe the doctor has a motive. Maybe he flew to Kenya and killed somebody. The doctor knows. I don't know. What the fuck? Anyway, Miss Locke is innocent. You are innocent. You're. Oh God. Forthright testimony okay. and your movements, or lack of them, last night eliminate you from our list of suspects. But who drugged I her? I agree, without a doubt. Another detective will be great help to the investigation. Book. Although my friend certainly does not need any help. We have you three detectives on the train now, Thank by the way. Thank you for believing me. I'd like to help in any way I can. Do not worry, Mademoiselle Locke. Already, I see things more clearly. Free. It's obvious. Free. Whoever drugged you was trying to derail your investigation. You mean the person who did this to me is Ratchet's killer? Both Monsieur Michel and Fraulein Schmidt had the means and opportunity to drug you. While you get your strength back, I intend to... We, we genuinely you. have those two Excellent suspects. idea, my friend. All this excitement has... Whetted my appetite. I'm sure Mademoiselle Locke won't say no to a good, invigorating meal. What? No. I want to hear what the conductor and Fräulein Schmidt have to say for themselves. It is my duty to ensure the well-being of the passengers. If Dr. Constantine has no objection, <laughs> he just wants to eat. You to the restaurant car. On the contrary, some food will do her the greatest good. Well. I'm still a little shaky. Mr. Poirot, will you please keep me informed about what you learn? You may be certain of it. All right. Okay, so she's she is our only... So I, I don't think, I don't think uh, uh, Book did it either. I think he's too stupid, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> All right. All right, anyway, let's have a look around, shall we? Who's this again? All that snow. Are you familiar with the concept of entropy? Monsieur McQueen. Oh, Mr. Poirot, I didn't see you. Entropy? Randomness in a system or something? Yes, unpredictability. Even the best laid plans can go astray, thanks to something as simple as... An unexpected passenger? Perhaps, or snow. Hmm. Are we, like, trying to... That sounded quite threatening, like... So he has a really good reason to kill. Ratchet, but he's denied that he knew that who Ratchet was, right? Which is possible, but unlikely. I've got the. F I wonder if. I don't know if this is the case, right? But in my head, I wonder if everyone on the train stabbed him once, which is why he's got like fifteen knife wounds. What if everyone went to the carriage and stabbed him, and they're all covering for each other? It is in. That is the sort of thing that Agatha Christie would write as well, so, which makes me wonder. I don't know the story, so I genuinely don't know, but um. I, I feel that that's plausible. Anyway, we should talk to Miss Schmidt here, because she is one of our major Good suspects. Good evening, Fräulein Schmidt. May I disturb you for a moment? You asked so politely, mein Herr, but I do not think I have a choice. Um, how to approach the subject of Miss Locke? Let's just I be play cool. I wanted to let you know that your roommate, Mademoiselle Locke, is awake. Ah, yes, I'm glad to hear that. I was worried about her. Did she tell you what had happened to her? Um, residue in a cup. We can't call her out directly. She doesn't remember much, but we found a residue of a sleeping pill in her cup of tea. Since you two were alone together in your room when she drank it, who else but you could have dragged her? Must I point out I do not make the tea on this train? You should question the conductor or the kitchen staff. She has a point. But she did almost die. Mademoiselle Locke could have died. Whoever wow. drugged her must not feel any empathy for their fellow human beings, given the dose that Mademoiselle Locke ingested. She was close to death. Oh, my God. What did I oh, wow, she's going to confess. Hurt her. Just have her sleep for a few hours while we had time. We? Time Holy shit! I didn't expect it to crumble what? like this. You think I feel nothing? Nothing? That poor, poor little girl. Indeed, that poor, poor little girl. Fräulein Schmidt is somehow connected to... Holy shit! Point. I didn't expect this to escalate so quickly! <laughs> she just admitted it! Um, 
The Armstrong Cook, I think, is going to be the connection here. I'm right again. That You're always right, Pyro. Thank Fräulein you. Schmidt, I have a certain reputation for sniffing out. I am not a murderer. Forgive me, but I was going to say brilliant <laughs> chefs. Did, we you didn't burn her. The Armstrong family's <laughs> cook, were you not? But, yes. I was the cook of that lovely, lovely family. I'm sorry, but I must ask you to give me some Yeah, time. sure. Let's give the murder main murder suspect a bit of time to chill out. To collect myself. It wasn't supposed to be like this, my darling, my poor darling child. I will give you that time, Fräulein. You have given me much more in exchange. I must check in so, with my other So, she's not admitting to the murder, but she's admitting to drugging all the cop. The pieces of the puzzle in my possession. But why wouldn't she, why would she drug the cop if she wasn't going to fucking murder? You know? I don't know. Mr. Foucher, you got anything to say? Can I get you something, Monsieur Poirot? Everyone is so tense. Uh, an aperitif soon, Monsieur Fauché, with pleasure. When I don't I'd drink anything on this train, to be honest with you. I feel guaranteed that I was going to be drugged or dead. Oh, moustache. Wow, guys, we've only found four of these in the entire game. Another golden moustache to treasure. All right. Who else do we need to... Oh, we should fill her in on what's going on, right? You're right, Mr. Book. This dessert is delicious. I'm glad we didn't wait for dinner. I promise the entree will be superb as well. Detective Locke, you are recovering well, I see. Yes. I should be helping with the investigation. Do you know who drugged me? It is early yet for conclusion. It's not early! When I return, then we shall see. Do not worry, Poirot. She is in good hands. What? Is Poirot, Freya, what? Truly are looking after her. Do you know who drugged her? Yes, because she literally confessed to me seconds ago. But apparently we're going to keep that on the download for now. Can I talk to this guy? Not now. Not now. Oh, another I golden moustache. How many? Of, I missed so many of these, and I just found two in rapid succession. All right. I guess whatever happens, we have to interrogate Mr. Michel, right? Because he's the only, uh, he's the other suspect. But the other woman, the woman confessed, so I don't understand. Like, what, why, why isn't she just handcuffed at this point in time? I guess we're not a cop, though, are we? So I guess we can't handcuff her. We just sort of, like, can look at her disapprovingly and be like, all right, we'll let you off. <laughs> anyway, um, let's find Mr. Michel. I don't know where he is. He has his own compartment, right? No idea where that is, though. Oh, it's the other end. Because the staff things are off the kitchen, right? The staff, like, area, and he's staff. Alright, let's check. I think, I think this is the right way. I don't know what room he's in, but there is a room after... There is a... The, after the restaurant car is the staff quarters, and he's on staff, so... If he's not, like, sitting, watching... Which he doesn't seem to be, because we're not moving. So, you know. The snow definitely has played a big deal in this, because this was obviously... They were obviously meant to have fucked off the train by now, whoever killed him. But, um... I mean, to be fair, should just applaud them, really. The guy was a fucking arsehole. Alright, this is awkward. Good evening, Michel. Am I bothering you? You seem... stressed. With everything that's going on, I must admit, it's difficult to be relaxed. Of course, I understand. Especially since we know that Detective Locke's tea was drugged before it was served to her. Detective? Come now, Michel. Surely you would have taken the opportunity to search her things and found her badge. Luckily, she woke up and was finally able to tell us her story. Otaru boiled the water, Jean made the tea. I just brought it. Sir, it could have been any of this. Stuff. That's true. Your defense is to... I mean, he's got a point. Others? They could all be murderers. Like I said, I think everyone's in on it. Who the fuck is this? Oh shit! Oh my god! You have a <laughs> work connection? No. Suzanne Morose's daughter! Automatic Holy shit! Friend. I always forget. Her. He has like the biggest motive out of everyone! Michelle had to be involved in the murder. They literally the killed her! Tea, his post at the end of the hall, and now. I know why I know more than one of those people on the screen. 
Oh my god, this is insane. Who is the person on the list? It's Pierre Michel. Yes. Oh god, the other guys, they're fucking... Oh my god, they are all in on this! Suzanne Moreau is the woman in the middle who obviously died as a result of the murder inquiry case that falsely accused her. And Cyrus Hardman, the other fucking detective, is in this picture too, so they were probably going to get married before she got fucking killed. Yeah. Holy shit. It's really weird that he's still got this as his phone lock screen, by the way. It's really fucking strange. It's been a long time. All right, it's really fucking weird. are the father of Suzanne Moreau, Daisy Armstrong's nanny. My condolences on the death of your wife. What? But I... My wife... Enough lies. Suzanne does not bear your name? No. Suzanne's mother and I were divorced. Suzanne kept her mother's name. My most sincere condolences. Holy shit. Michel, on the deaths of this is Suzanne... This is insane. ...and your wife. This job... I love them. But I was never there for them. Then, a year after the divorce, Solange became ill. Suzanne took her to this special hospital in the U.S. Got that job as Daisy's nanny. I understand your pain and the reason that led you to drug Detective Locke. <sighs> we really can't did they both drug her? Me, Many have been foolish enough they did. to try and keep the truth. That's why she's fucked. Poirot. Yes, I admit, I drug the tea. But it was only to keep her quiet until we... I could... But she reacted so much to the sleeping pills. It's because there's... She was lucky, as are you, that she didn't die. To be frank, there is one more thing that puzzled me. But I think I understand now. Okay, so literally, this is, this is what I'm calling now. And I'm 100% sure I'm correct. Every single person on this train is in on the killing Ratchet. But they all have their own groups and plans. So they all fucked each other over. Because they were all trying to do it, but they weren't aware that everyone else was trying to do it. And the reason the detective got a double dose of sleeping pills is the two different factions that were trying to kill Ratchet both drugged her. And that almost killed her. They didn't intend to try and kill her, but they did. Because they both drugged her and she didn't realise. And that's fucking insane. And I love it. I love it. Monsieur Hardman was Suzanne's fiancé. Huh. I have the impression my whole life to you is an open book. Yes, Cyrus was my daughter's fiancé. I almost consider Cyrus as my own son. Of course, much more is clear now. I have been patient long enough. It is time to go and see what all the commotion is next door. What the fuck was that noise, by the way? I thought the game was freaking out, but I think someone's just... in here? Oh, it's Cyrus. Humping the table. Man, excellent. The gods who watch over detectives must have trapped you here. Why didn't they watch over me? I'm a detective too. I um, I was talking to Michelle about a, a leaky faucet, and I wanted to go out, but um, you showed up. No need to invent some preposterous story. But really, I. Michelle has told me everything. You are the fiancé of Suzanne Moreau, his daughter. Oh. I see. Surely this is not a big surprise. So they must have broken up no. before? Suzanne was the only woman I ever loved. And I failed her. They got into a spat. It was nothing. Okay, so that's why no, she was dating Noah, apologize. which fucked her. We weren't speaking at all. Suzanne never really cared for that guy, Noah. She would have forgiven me, if only. I mean, Cyrus, look on the bright side. If Noah's only. dead. If only. Then you're not. <laughs> a common refrain between lovers who quarrel. Obviously, Pierre Michel and Fräulein Schmidt both drugged Detective Locke's tea, causing the overdose. No wonder she had so much trouble waking up. Time to report my findings to her and Book. Okay, this is crazy, though. Another delightful talk. Is there anyone on the train that isn't in on this, apart from the like the four like people who were like trying to solve the case? Probably not. Which is insane. Although, I don't know, maybe maybe Hotaru and um, uh, the the other pastry chef chick, so they, they probably aren't in on it. I don't see why they would be. So, my friend, tell me, you have something new? Mademoiselle, look. I know who drugged you. Fräulein Schmidt and our conductor, Pierre Michel. 
both admitted putting sleeping pills into your tea. This explains your overdose. They are relieved you are recovering. Michelle drugged a passenger? On behalf of the company, I offer my apologies to you, Mademoiselle Luck. Michelle will answer for this outrage. Both of them? I was pretty sure about Fräulein Schmidt, but I admit that I did not suspect the conductor. I have uh, uncovered multiple connections with the Armstrong case. Pierre Michel is the father of Suzanne Moreau, Little Daisy's nanny, and Monsieur Hardman was Suzanne's fiancé. As for Hildegard Schmidt, she was the cook but of we never the saw Armstrong her. family. What a coincidence, don't you think? But it's incredible! What are the odds that so many people <laughs> it's linked ridiculous to the tragic ended up on the same train? About the same as you winning the lottery, my friend. I wasn't the officer who interviewed Fräulein Schmidt back then, so she couldn't recognize me here on the train. How could they know who I was? There were other passengers who might have. Or she may have seen you when you visited the Armstrong home. It is now clear to me that some of the clues to this elaborate plot were staged for my benefit. So someone's fucking with Pyro as well? What the fuck? False lead. What did they want me to believe? The murderer got on the train at Vinkovic, killed Ratchet and got off immediately. That's what they want us to believe, but that's not true. That's the right answer. Some clues and information collected so far could lead to a hypothesis. The murderer boarded the train in Vinkovsky, killed Ratchet, and then left the train immediately. Okay. How did you come to that possibility? Monsieur Hardman told me about a short man with a high-pitched voice who threatened Ratchet. Imagine for a moment that this man wearing a wagon lee conductor's jacket, killed him while Michel was on the platform at Vinkovsky. This murderer then hid the conductor's jacket in Detective Locke's room, then fled before the train left. Why choose Detective Locke's room? Why, indeed. Let me re-explain from the beginning. Okay. So we have a lot to deal with here. I feel like this is the conclusion of the original story because I know this has extra stuff like for the, the final third of the game. So I feel like we're like at the set two thirds of the way through now. All right, so let's go through this. Reconstruct the events of the false lead. Hmm. The train stops at Vinkovi at midnight and Mr. Michelle goes down to the platform. The murderer gets on the train disguised as the conductor. The murderer kills Ratchet and exits through Madame Hubbard's room. The murderer leaves the knife there in the process. The murderer leaves his jacket in that room. The murderer gets off the train. Mr. Michelle gets back on. This is bollocks. This isn't what happened. Et voilà. Okay. Mon Dieu. Oui. That must be it. Everything fits so well. It fits too well, my friend. Other clues lead to a second hypothesis, much more plausible. Okay. There are several murderers who all are related to the Armstrong case, which is definitely true. Question is, is it two or more? That was there's, easy. Like, there's like 10 people right on this so train that are accountable. We have multiple murderers, all related to the Armstrong case. The murderer from Vinkovsky was a fabrication to turn suspicion away from those on the train. They expected the investigation to be led by some small-town official who could easily be misled. Um, Mr. Poirot? <laughs> Detective Locke, forgive me. You are an obvious exception. You tracked Ratchet with the tenacity of a bloodhound. Unfortunately for the killers, they not only had you to deal with, but now they had, and I say this with all modesty, the world's greatest <laughs> I'm just amazing. Your shit. Dropped into the midst of their <laughs> meticulous planning. Multiple murderers? Multiple detectives? This is a crazy story. Well, I'm interested to see where they're going to go for the final third. Who is linked to this case 
And who is not? My poor right. friend, I have gone speeding out of the station without you. I will continue. Okay, so who out of these people? Nine people um, are potential murderers. Hector McQueen. Big, big, big suspect here, right? Let's go from the beginning. Archibald Arbuthnot. No, I don't think so. Book, No. Robert Constantine. No. Mary Debenham. No. They have their own story. Natalia Dragomirov. Yes. Antonio Fossarelli, yes. I don't really know why. I don't really understand that lead still. Pierre Michel, sure. Uh, Joanne Locke. Technically, she could be the killer. Um, Caroline Hubbard is a no. Cyrus Hardman is a yes. Rudolph Andreni and Helena Andreni are definite yeses. I guess Greta Olsen, who I thought was really bad, uh, is innocent. This is wrong. I've got one but person left. Who am I missing? Far from the truth. Who am I missing? Oh, Mary Devenham? Think no. Oh, that is not a good answer. Who am I missing? I must admit I'm not right this time. Oh, why wasn't he highlighted? I do not think that's the right answer. Oh. Oh, Hilda, guys, I'm an idiot. I thought I clicked on her. I'm right again. Okay, anyway. That happened so, to nine me. suspects. Fraulein Schmidt, Pierre Michel, Monsieur Hardman, and Monsieur McQueen are all linked to the Armstrong case. I also know that Sonia Armstrong's sister and godmother, Countess Andreni and Princess Dragomirov, are on this train. And finally, Detective Locke discovered that Mr. Foscarelli was the Armstrong chauffeur. If we add Detective Locke and Ratchet of the 12 passengers in that coach, nine have a connection with the Armstrong case. What next, Poirot? Or should I say, who next? I wonder if we're going to narrow it down to one to or if it's going to really be all of them. Because we have 13 stab Dr. wounds, but nine suspects, right? The train crew other than Michel? So Dr. four more not, uh, unaccounted yes. for. I will need him. But we don't want the others as witnesses. I will see that their duties keep them occupied elsewhere. Excellent. I have always thought this moment in a case is much like Rodin unveiling the thinker before a captivated audience. A work of art. Have you not felt that way, detective? No, Mr. Poirot. I'm happy just to slap the That's because you're an actual well, police officer as opposed to Poirot who's pretending to be one. Well, <laughs> Where would you like the unveiling, Poirot? The lounge? Perfect. Then I will gather all the passengers all right. the lounge. This is going to be the conclusion of the main story arc here, but then there's extra stuff as well. But it, finish your pudding! Jesus Christ. Yeah, I just don't see where this is going to go after this bit, but it's going to go somewhere because there's 13 chapters and we're on chapter 8 still. Uh, which way is the lounge? This way. All right, Poirot, let's fucking go. Let's fucking... Is this the lounge? Hang on, this isn't the lounge? There's a lounge? <laughs> Why did no one inform me about the lounge? Oh, no, I know where... I think it's before this one, right? It's before the restaurant, the bar car, right? Am I just being a complete idiot? There's a lounge? Oh, apparently this is it. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess I've walked through this every single time and then just completely forgot it. <laughs> Sounds like something I do. Alright. Here we go, Pyro. This is your moment. Your moment of moisture. Let's go. Are the train crew locked in their quarters? Yes, they are. Then the stage is set. He locked the them in? Final. What the fuck? It's not the final act, Ladies though, because there's four more chapters. Gentlemen. Five more chapters. I have gathered you together to hear my reconstruction of the murder of Samuel Edward Ratchet, also known as Cassetti. There is not one, but two possible solutions of the crime. I shall put them both before you, and I shall ask Monsieur Book and Dr. Constantine here to judge which solution is the correct one. Two solutions? Mr. Poirot, I am hardly qualified. Nevertheless, your assistance is required. This is interesting. 
Everyone's just shitting themselves, look at it. <laughs> now, you all know the facts of the case. Ratchet was found stabbed to death this morning. He was last known to be alive at 12.37 a.m. last night when he spoke to the wagon lee conductor through the door. His watch was found to be badly dented and it had stopped at a quarter past one. Dr. Constantine, who examined the body, puts the time of death as having occurred between midnight and two in the morning. At half an hour after midnight, as you all know, the train ran into a snowdrift. After that time, it was impossible for anyone to leave the train. So, here is my first theory. The enemy, as Ratchet expected, joined the train at Vinkovsky by the door left open by Captain Arbuthnot and Monsieur McQueen, who had just descended to the platform. He was equipped I do wonder with if still a one murderer. jacket, which two murderers. he wore over his ordinary clothes, and a pass key which enabled him to gain access to Ratchet's compartment in spite of the doors being locked. Ratchet was under the influence of a sleeping draft. This man stabbed him with great ferocity, a dozen wounds in all. He left the compartment through the communicating door to Madame Hubbard's compartment. Yes, that's so. Scared me half out of my wits. The murderer thrust the dagger he had used into Mrs. Hubbard's handbag in passing. Without knowing it, he lost a button of his uniform. Then he slipped out of the compartment and along the corridor. But that's not what happened, he put right? The uniform jacket into Detective Locke's suitcase to cast suspicion on her. And a few minutes later, dressed in his ordinary clothes, he left the train. Yeah, this is this is the incorrect outcome. Off again, using the same means for egress. The door near the dining room. So this is what they wanted us to believe, but this is bollocks. That is the first hypothesis. But there's a second. For that, we must examine the motive for the crime. Why was Ratchet killed? Uh, revenge. The motive is clear. Because he's a Revenge, dickhead. of course. Nothing was stolen. And we know that Ratchet had made many enemies. This was a premeditated crime, meticulously planned. Okay, uh, this was planned several months before his departure from Istanbul. Since the kidnapping and death of little Daisy Armstrong, which traumatized many people close to the family. Even when the police concluded that it was Suzanne Moreau, Questions remained. Detective Locke continued her investigation, as did others. They became convinced the truth lay elsewhere. We now know who the real murderer of Daisy is. The real murderer of Daisy is Ratchet. It is clear now that Daisy's killer was Ratchet, also known as Cassetti and Michael Clark and how many other names. But of course, Many of you have known this for a long time. It is obvious that the 12 stab wounds are not a random number. Dr. Constantine's analysis revealed that some stab wounds appeared to have been caused by a right-handed attacker. Others indicated the knife wielder was left-handed. They've all some stabbed him. Some wounds were deep. More than one fatal. Yet... Others were not much more than mere scratches. What they all work together. This is nuts. Discrepancies. <laughs> this leads us to an obvious conclusion. They are symbolic. Uh, what do they 12 stab wounds symbolize? A jury. 12 stabs. 12. The same number. That's a United States a jury, though, not jury in everywhere the else. United States. But not just a jury of 12 members condemning him to death. But 12 executions. But we only have well. nine suspects. Self so we're missing four. The jury had meticulously Three. planned four. for everything except Snow. Snow. 
the avalanche that stopped us, as well as the presence of not one but two detectives on the train. They had to improvise, to hastily add clues and false leads. All right, so the false clues, the red kimono, without a this doubt. woman in a red kimono does not exist. I don't know which of the passengers it was. It does not really matter. It was just a performance, a charade to introduce another possible culprit to muddy the waters. The broken watch. The time on Ratchet's broken watch was deliberately set to conceal the true time of the crime. The vaping liquid. The vial of vaping liquid incriminated Captain Arbuthnot. However, he had a solid alibi confirmed by Monsieur McQueen. Impossible then to suspect him. The conductor's jacket. The conductor's jacket found in Detective Locke's suitcase was put there only to cast suspicion upon her. All these false leads were intended for me. But I am Poirot. I understood the truth. We have a train full of suspects. It's time to identify who the All right. real culprits are. Comes down to Let's the wire here, guys. With Detective Locke. Did Detective Locke stab Ratchet? No, she did not. And she was drugged, so she was unconscious. The conductor's jacket in her suitcase was an attempt to implicate Detective Locke, but she couldn't fake her drugged condition. Dr. Constantine can testify that the drugged tea incapacitated her for hours, and she had two relapses. Let us move on to Monsieur McQueen. When I told him about Cassetti, he looked very surprised that I managed to make the connection between him and the Armstrong. Ah, so he was surprised he about that. Me, but I thought we had. I think he meant. Hmm. So we got a bunch of people here. I thought we had eliminated all the clues. You is what he meant. thought you didn't leave any real clues linking the murder to the Armstrong kidnapping. Moreover, you insisted that Ratchet did not speak French when you knew I had heard a voice calling out in French that was supposed to be Ratchet. Did Mr. McQueen stab Ratchet? Yes, he did. He's one of the suspects, and his father is you the reason. You took some pleasure in leaving me false clues, I think. It was quite annoying. But you told me yourself that your father was the district attorney who handled the Armstrong case. The case haunted my father. At first, he believed Suzanne. Just gonna confess. These people just fucking come out with it. It's not even like I want a lawyer. It's like, okay, Poirot, I'll tell you everything. Even though there were questions that went unanswered, and a young policewoman refused to let it go, continuing to find discrepancies, but never enough to reopen the official investigation. That police woman sits there. Her name is Joanna Locke. Then tell him. Tell him how in the end my father believed you. How he resigned a job that he loved. Racked with guilt that he may have let that monster go free. He died young. Broken. His faith in justice broken. That's what Ratchet did to him. Thank you for your... Honesty, Monsieur McQueen. Your father is one more victim of the man who called himself Ratchet. All right. Now I will turn to Ratchet's valet, Monsieur Masterman. Okay, so I think this guy is involved. He wasn't on the list, but I think he was because I think he drugged him. Ratchet sensed danger close to him and naturally wanted to stay awake. You gave him sleeping pills without his knowledge. Once he was sound asleep, you could do what you had to do in peace. Sir, I'll tell you the truth. I was Colonel Armstrong's adjutant in the war. Yeah, there we go, another time. And afterwards, I was his valet in New York. I'm afraid I concealed the fact this morning. It was very wrong of me, sir, but I knew how suspicious it would look. Is that all you have to say? That's all, sir. Okay, so he isn't confessing, but he's sus as fuck. To leave no suspicious stone unturned, let us move on to Monsieur Book. What? Me? A suspicious This guy is stone? not sus at all. He, he did Mr. S no, he didn't. He's, he's too stupid. 
Um, he found me a room on the train. Book, my friend. Of course you are not guilty. You did everything you could to get me on this train. What madness would cause you to ensure, and I speak with all modesty, that the best detective in the world could be present to witness your crime. But doesn't our friendship count as well? Most assuredly, but a murderer can wear all sorts of masks, including friendship. Let us consider our ever-efficient wagon-lit conductor, Pierre Michel. He did stab, and it's because he drugged um, the de other detective. Your admission that you drugged the Detective Locke immediately incriminates you. But the murder could not have been possible without your very capable assistance. Your knowledge of train procedures made the murder possible. And your position in the corridor of the train allowed you to be the perfect alibi for several passengers. And your motive? Suzanne Moreau. Daisy Armstrong's poor nanny, who was wrongly accused and committed suicide, was your daughter. C'est un foiré. He got what he deserved. My poor daughter has finally been avenged. My Suzanne. My child. Yeah, he just confessed. He doesn't like, give a fuck. Let's move on now to Monsieur Hardman, one of three detectives on this train. Yeah, he did it, and we know because of Mr. Michelle's testimony Monsieur just telling Arman, us that he did. I think you are a real detective, but you were never hired by us. Yeah, we don't have a ticket for Your him, right? alibi was that you were watching the corridor to protect Ratchet, which, of course, you never did. You protected Pierre Michel. However, we just saw that his alibi doesn't hold up, so neither does yours. I don't know about the conductor. Being Suzanne's fiancé, you had a substantial motive to punish Ratchet. You used your detective skills, just as Detective Locke did, to hunt him down and finally avenge the death of your beloved. I... That's right, Mr. Poirot. I do have some detective skills. I never doubted it. Okay. Now, well... Fraulein Schmidt, the lady's maid with the soul of a cook. Did she stab? Yep, she did. And we know because she also drugged uh, Miss Locke again. Fraulein Schmidt, you told me of your remorse for drugging Detective Locke. I believe you are sincere. However, as the cook of the Armstrong family, you experienced the drama from within. The death of Daisy, then Sonia Armstrong, who died in childbirth, and finally, Suzanne and John Armstrong. So much misfortune in that poor family. The death of this criminal... You're the only so person in the house who survived. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let us move on to Countess Andreni. I was impressed by the earnestness of her husband when he swore to me solemnly on his honor that his wife never left her compartment that night. Should I believe it? I don't think she did. I think he did it on her behalf. Let's go, she's morally incapable. Countess Andreni. Being Sonia Armstrong's sister, you had every reason in the world to want to avenge her. But you were incapable of stabbing someone, even after what he had done to you and your family. The night of the crime, you simply took a sleeping pill. I appreciate the irony that nearby, Detective Locke was also in a drugged sleep. When you awoke, you thought the nightmare was over. Rudolph? Hush, my lord. Hush. Excellent transition. I was coming this to guy you, did stab. Andrini. Did you stab? He did. And he replaced Mrs. Andretti. Well, people, a jury. This was very important to all of you. If Countess Andreni did not stab Ratchet, someone had to take her place. And you, Count, the beloved husband. I've seen how fiercely you love and protect your wife. Enough! Jesus! He's the only one who got angry out of everyone. Anything. 
Even that. I would yes. do anything Even for that. love. Let's move on to Monsieur like murder Monsieur everyone. Uh, yes, this guy did because he was the driver, and Miss Locke found that out, right? Yeah, Miss Locke's investigation. Detective Locke found out that you were the Armstrong chauffeur, and that you planned to travel on the same train at the same time as Ratchet. That is what made her decide to obtain a ticket as well. Unfortunately, she could not prevent the murder. Ah, eh. Uh. Oh, oh. Uh, have you lost your tongue? Mr. Just admit it, everyone else has. You may as well. She was the delight of the house. Tonio, she called me. And she. she. she would sit in the car and pretend to drive me. And you, Mademoiselle Olson. A champion for. I have no idea what this woman's link is here. Hmm. I actually don't know. I don't know. She's the one that was involved with the latch on the door. Let's risk it. Because we need more bodies. The latch. Mademoiselle Olsen, you supported Madame Hubbard's story about her connecting door latch. A story that I later demonstrated to be impossible. So, you deliberately lied to me and you also lied about Mademoiselle Debenham's whereabouts. Enough! I can't take this anymore! I know what you want from me, Mr. Poirot! Very well. Here it is. She was my little daisy. My angel, so patient. When I patched a scrape or took uh, a... Ah, so she was her nursemaid? That was my job. But she was so much more to me. She was a shining light in an ever-darkening world. I've tried to honor her by caring for children who have lost everything. Okay, so that's Thank why she you, became what she Mrs. is. Olsen. You too shed light on your part in this mystery. So she was the nurse of Daisy. You were Daisy Armstrong's nurse. I will ask you no more questions. It okay. is enough that you have admitted what I know to be the truth and I understand. God, this is taking forever, but it Let's is pretty cool. On. Dr. Constantine. Okay, so I, I think Dr. Constantine me. is probably innocent. I know none of these people. I didn't know Ratchet either. And I've taken a solemn oath to help people, not murder them. Uh, I don't think he did. And... Oh, Book's testimony backs you him up. You are one of the few people in this room not to have any connection with the Armstrong case. Moreover, your alibi is confirmed by Monsieur Book, whom I would trust with my life. That is... That is very kindly said, my friend. We now come to Mademoiselle Debenham and Captain Arbuthnot, whose relationship was not in doubt from the moment I inspected your room at the hotel. You have a bloody nerve. Indeed, I do. We're getting married. Congratulations. But I would rather talk about your relationship to John Armstrong. So this is where we get into grey areas. I'm not so sure about these people. So... They're both soldiers. That's the only thing I can see here. That's the right answer. Okay, well, that was the right answer. <laughs> Captain Arbuthnot, you served in the army with John Armstrong. What I don't understand is why a man your age is still a captain. One might expect you to be a colonel as well. Ever fought in a war, Poirot? It was war that first brought me to England. Then you know what it's like. There's a... Shattering sound and death and mistakes. It's a nasty scar he's got. That proved to be wrong. I I sent a patrol to their death. Good men, brave men, wasted. John testified on my behalf at a court martial. I'm not a colonel. I don't deserve to be, you bloody fool. But I'm also not in prison. John remained my best friend until. Until... There, you have my story. Understand now? Archie, calm down, please. You're right, Mary. What you see in me, I don't understand. Oh, Archie, I see in you what John saw. Miss Debenham, I'm sorry. My turn, is it? I'm afraid so. 
And you have She's one of the. the I have no fucking episode. idea who she could Your be relating to this. With the Armstrong family was not obvious. She was an English teacher, right? Then I remembered the job you currently hold. So she's a teacher. That's the only. That's the job she mentioned, right? Yes. That was easy. You were the teacher of. Uh, she wasn't the teacher of Daisy Armstrong because she hasn't been to the U.S. So Helena. You were the teacher of Helena Andreni, whose maiden name was Helena Goldenberg before she married Count Andreni. Yes, absolutely. Why lie to you? She was an excellent student. I feel this is a very tenuous connection. Holy shit, they know each other? <laughs> Captain Albertnot. Uh, did he stab her at you? Yes, he did. And the proof is not the vape liquor, because that was designed to throw us off. Let's go with Mr. McQueen's testimony, because he's going to have lied. To Mr. McQueen. But he wasn't there. But his testimony melted like a snowflake. There went your alibi. Poof. Unless you have another one. Nope. Okay. As for you, Mademoiselle Debenham. Yeah, she did. We'll go with the S. Uh, and because Olsen covered for her. Yep. Mademoiselle Olsen was the only one who could confirm your alibi. I think you know where you stand. Very good, Mr. Poirot. Are you satisfied? I will be, soon. Now I must turn to Sonia Armstrong's godmother. Princess Dragomirov. So she did it because she's the only left-handed person on the train, uh, and as a result, that means she calls the left-handed stab wound. Princess Dragomirov, you weren't on my list of suspects at the start, given your social position. I left my social position in a cold country. Do you object to being addressed as princess? I deny people the opportunity. It makes a good story to tell their friends. It also guarantees a good table in the best restaurants. Princess, there is also, forgive me, your extreme physical fragility. It does not stop me when I must be strong. Indeed. Of more importance, though, is the fact that you're the only left-handed person on the train. And the single blow to ratchet from a left-handed person was very, forgive me, weak. Finally... I'm afraid I know the alibi that you shared with Fraulein Schmidt is false. You have been very thorough, sir. There's one person left. We have eleven. We have eleven murderers right now. Alike. I am honoured. Wasn't there? Was there thirteen stab now wounds or twelve? I know he's saying this twelve, Mrs. but Abird, I can't remember. I say? Uh, so this is Linda Arden. I'm guessing. I don't know who that is, but I'm gonna go with the fact she's probably the mother of. Um, the, the woman, the pregnant woman that died. Linda Arden. I guess no one here knew. If Princess Dragomirov hadn't told me about her relationship with this famous actress, I might not have made the connection. But you are a great actress, madame. Your performance as a flighty, self-involved woman was superb. I never would have guessed something entirely different. As for what ties you to the Armstrong family, She's Sonia's mother. it is obvious. So she is Sonia's mother. It's the only other possibility because this is the right age. Et voila. She would have been the grandmother of Daisy. You are the mother of Sonia Armstrong and Mrs. Andreni. And she did. That means we have 12 suspects. What well, implicates? Um, the toilet bag, right? That would be the big... I mean, all of these fairly implicate... I think this Madame one, though. Ivard, you really are a remarkable actress. You put so much effort into your character and into staging the murder. I saw it as a perfect mosaic. Each person playing his or her allotted part. So carefully arranged that if suspicion should fall on any one person, the evidence of one or more of the others would clear the accused person and confuse the issue. Everything was meticulously planned. But you hadn't expected that Detective Lock. She looks so smug the entire time, Detective Lock's like, yeah, fuck yeah. And the avalanche would fuck block you, it on the night of the murder. You had to improvise. 
But again, improvisation would be another of your skills as an actress. So, you came up with the story that the latch on the door that communicated with Ratchet's compartment was hidden by the animal. But that was bollocks, because we I tested it. I always fancied myself in comedy parts. That slip about the sponge bag was silly. Shows you should always rehearse properly. You know all about it, Mr. Poirot. You're a very wonderful man, but... Even you can't quite imagine what it was like. That awful day, I was just crazy with grief. So were the servants. We decided then and there that the sentence of death that Ratchet had escaped had got to be carried Holy out. Holy shit, so they planned it. this from the funeral! Rather eleven. Suzanne's father was over in France, of course. First we thought we'd draw lots as to who should do it. But in the end we decided on this way. It was the driver... Antonio, who suggested it. Mary worked out all the details later with Hector McQueen. It took a long time to perfect our plan. We first had to track Ratchet down. Hardman managed that in the end. Well, then we had they to all did it. They all stabbed him. Hector into his employment. Well, we managed that. Then we had a consultation with Suzanne's father. Captain Arbuthnot was very keen on having 12 of us. He seemed to think it made it more orderly. It's like a jury. He didn't like the stabbing idea much. But he agreed that it did solve most of our difficulties. Well, Suzanne's father was willing. Suzanne had been his only child. We knew from Hector that Ratchet would be coming back from the east sooner or later by the Orient Express. With Pierre Michel actually working on that train, the chance was too good to be missed. My daughter's husband had to know, of course, and he insisted on coming on the train with her. Hector wrangled it so that Ratchet selected the right day for traveling when Michel would be on duty. And then, at the last minute, you came. For the rest of the story, you worked out everything, Mr. Poirot. You were right about all of us. What are you going to do about it? If it must all come out, can't you lay the blame upon me and me only? I would have stabbed that man 12 times willingly. It wasn't only that he was responsible for my daughter's death and her child's, and that of the other child who might have been alive and happy now. It was more than that. There had been other children kidnapped. Oh, he was a serial Jersey. killer, scumbag. And like, he deserved all this. In the future, society had condemned him. We were only carrying out... I'd the let them all go, to be honest with you. Unnecessary <laughs> to bring all these others into it. All these good, faithful... He's a child-killing scumbag, and he deserved every single stab wound. You are a director of the company, Monsieur Book. What do you say? In my opinion, Poirot, the first theory you put oh, forward... Oh, Book's being smart. Twilight. Decidedly so. I suggest that that is the solution we offer to the police. You agree, Doctor? Certainly, I agree. As regards the medical evidence, I think uh, that I made one or two fantastic suggestions. They're letting them all go. having placed my solution before you, I have the honor to retire from the case. I guess that's the end of this main first story. But what the f what the fuck is going to happen for the next five chapters? That's chapter fucking eight. Chapter eight finished. There's still five to go. What is happening? What is going to go? What I don't understand. What they could possibly do? We just concluded the story. There's even credits. This isn't the end. All right, can I skip this? Because this is going on for ages. Oh, hang on, there's more. What the fuck? Oh, is this like a summary of everything that happened? I wasn't really paying attention. I'm sorry to wake you up in the middle of the night. Oh, it's not. But it couldn't wait. There was a detail that bothered me in my preliminary autopsy of Ratchet. The thirteenth stab wound. I, I told you. To I fucking told you. And I discovered a wound covered by another. Oh, look. Oh, the there. The blow it. I hadn't seen was delivered by a thinner, sharper blade. So there were not twelve. But 13 stab wounds. Okay, well, he didn't actually say it, but... For 12 jurors. That's how they it extend it. work with 13 wounds. The symmetry is destroyed. It can't be one of the culprits who stabbed him twice? Doctor, a different knife was used. There is only one explanation. Somehow, some way, there is a 13th murderer on this train. There's a 13th killer! killer and that's the rest of the game. It's not served. It was not in on the plan. Holy shit! What a twist!
I already thought that was actually the case. I thought there was 13 for some reason, but still, whatever. Okay. Are we moving now? Oh, I guess time's ticking, huh? Exciting stuff, though. Please, come in. Ah, book. I see we are moving at last. Yes. The way was finally cleared while we slept. If all goes well, we will arrive in Venice this evening. The train will be there for several hours for refueling and reprovisioning. What do we do with the 13th murderer? Do you have a lead? I thought about it. There is one clue that was left aside in my investigation. The diary I found in Ratchet's safe mentioned an appointment in Venice. Someone with the initials A.W. He will never keep the appointment, but there should be enough time. I must try to keep that appointment for him. Oh shit, this is completely different. Where and when? Meeting point. Well, that sounds Venice-y. Uh, I think I have no idea. We'll just brute force this. Uh, Venice. And day, it's the 18th, which is today. Oh, there you go, first time. Not too bad. Pick That's something vaguely right Italian down. sounding and you win. All right. Talk to Dr. Constantine. All right, so we let everyone off, but there's someone who is unaccounted for who also stabbed him. And I don't really blame them. It is what it is. Doctor, a moment. Have you made arrangements for Ratchet's body? Yes, it will be collected by the Italian authorities when we reach Venice. The autopsy will be performed there. However, there is something odd. Oh? Since the train is French, jurisdiction must be shared. When I told them you were already on the scene, they have both agreed to support your investigation until we reach Paris. Ratchet's compartment will be sealed until we arrive there. All of those who conspired to kill Ratchet are to be confined to the train until then as well. So, thanks to you, I am the rope in a tug of war between two countries. Oh, but I thought you would want to be in charge. And isn't it odd we continue on our journey with a trainload of people that police consider potential murderers? Calm yourself, Doctor. It is not the first time I find myself in the middle. And, to be honest, I welcome the chance to see this case through. It is fast becoming one of the most challenging of my career. All right. Who else do I need to talk to? I wasn't paying attention. Um... Find your Hastings. I had to find someone who can help me with my investigation in Venice. Well, it's going to be the chick, right? It's going to be, um, what the fuck her name is? Locke. That's her name, right? Detective Locke? It's very hard to remember everyone's names. There's like five billion characters. Well, here she is. So let's see. Come with me to, come with me to Venice, Locke, mademoiselle. You are clearly an excellent police officer. Could you accompany me to Venice for an investigation into Ratchet's activities? There is much we still need to know. I... well, yes. It would be an honor to work with you. And... and I'm glad you trust me. What do you have in mind? There was a notation in Ratchet's appointment book. He had an appointment. With who? There were only the initials A.W. They were to meet at 10 o'clock at the Fontana dei Conigli. I want to know who Ratchet was meeting and why. But you've already discovered the 12 conspirators. Why is this meeting important? Unfortunately, the case is not complete. Dr. Constantine has discovered the presence of a 13th stab wound. One of them could have stabbed him twice. The wound was made with another finer blade. Why would one of them have used two knives? Did they want to confess they killed him more than the others? And if so, why bother to deny it when they have already confessed? No, it makes no sense. And I do not close a case until all questions have been answered. You of all people must understand this. You're right. I do understand. I'll help you. Thank you. Together, we will uncover the truth. We will arrive in a few hours. 
Take the opportunity to rest. Gaslight gatekeep well girl boss, side. let's go. No more effects of the drug. Excellent. Then be prepared when we reach Venice. We have another mystery to solve. I've never heard the term find your Hastings before, by the way. I have no idea what that means. I'm guessing it's a reference to the Battle of Hastings. No idea why, though. Are we, just got, are we actually going to walk around in Venice for this chapter? Wow, the music's changed and it's taking fucking ages to load, so I'm going to go with a yes. We're not going to be on the fucking train anymore. I mean, we have spent about nine hours of gameplay on the train. I suppose not, because we, we did do the American side of things as well. This is the third embarking Yeah, we're in Venice. No gondoliers available at all. With Carnival, you can't find I was going to say, this isn't normal, normal now, fucking booked. Italian outfits. The worst thing is that the fountain is just across this canal. We're almost there. Oh, that's kitty cats. Oh, wow. There's a fucking shitload of people here. Great music. Watch every fucking background track in this game get claimed on YouTube so you didn't hear any of this that I just said. I see a gondolier just over there. All right. Oh, we're playing as her. The mysterious meeting in Venice is our new, is our new thing. Holy shit. All right. Hello. Hi there. We'd like to cross the canal, please. There is a bridge about a kilometer down the canal. Please. According to the map, the Fontana dei Canigli is just across the canal here. No. I, Gabriele, cannot help you. I'm sorry. We'll miss the 10 o'clock rendezvous if we try to get through this crowd. And have to walk a kilometer in both directions. Why is he refusing to take us across? Do we have to deduce? I should try to find out why. All right. Uh, well, it's probably not money. Let's have a look at his boat, first of all. Can we look at his boat? All right, fine. We'll say money. If it's a matter of price, I'm sure we can work it out. Money? Money won't help me now. His problem isn't money. What is it then? It's probably a goal. There's flowers here. Bella Chiara, the beautiful Chiara. A beautiful name for a beautiful gondola. Okay. There's some broken flowers here, it looks like. Ah, what a sham. A beautiful bouquet crushed by revelers. Hmm. We got a new note. The gondolier problem. Uh, he had a fight with his girlfriend. That's it. Yeah. Uh, his girlfriend is called Chiara. Great. That is a great detective job. You're not as I'm afraid you're not as good as Poirot, okay? Look. Don't sit with him. Jesus Christ, we haven't got all day. I'm sorry you had a fight with Chiara. What? How did you know? I'm a detective. I'd like to help, if I can. If you have a spare engagement ring, detective, I'll take uh, it. Okay. Ah, I see. You lost the engagement ring you were planning to give Chiara? Lost? It is worse than that. I threw it away in the canal. I bitterly regret this gesture. I now find myself without a girlfriend and without a ring. Okay, so we need to find a fucking ring. How is this going to happen? If we find the ring, maybe the gondolier will take us across. You are right. There is not much time. I will help you. Do you actually mean you'll help us, Poirot? Are we going to play as Poirot? Oh, no, we're not, no. So by help, Poirot, you mean stand around doing nothing while we do all the work. Excellent. Moving over here. Yeah, there it is. This looks like it, right? Yeah, there we go. I know someone who will be happy. Someone will be happy. I know someone. Okay, take it. I've always pressed the wrong button on the take it screen here. All right, go. All right. 
think he'll take us across the canal now, and we can get to the rendezvous. Rendezvous. <laughs> Hi. Excuse me. I believe I have something that belongs to you. Mamma mia, grazie mille, signorina. With this, I can now win my Chiara's heart again. I know it. How to thank you? My friend and I need to get to the other side. We have a very important date at the Fontana di Conigli. Ah, yes. The rabbit fountain. Of course, I'll take you across. Then I will call Chiara. Hopefully, she will forgive me. I'm sure she will. Well done, Detective Locke. How did you hear that conversation, Pro? I guess that'd be fucking miles away. Well done. I didn't really pay attention to anything that was happening. This district of Venice is very charming. You will love it. Do you think we're on a date? I've never been to Venice. I'd like to go at some point. Never been. I've been to places in Italy, but not Venice. Should go before it's completely underwater. <laughs> what lovely music. It reminds me of the Legend of Zelda festival music in the town. That one. If it's not too much to ask, can you wait for us until we return? Yes, no worries. I can call Chiara from here to find the fountain, walk along the quay on the left, then cross Hang the Hang on, did you just call it a quay? There. You cannot miss it. It's a Got key. It. Thank you. Thank you. You don't say quay. Selena. You have made me the happiest gondolier in Venice. Yes, I assure All you. Right. I found your ring. <laughs> All right, come on, Poirot. Let's fucking go. Find the fountain. Well, it should be just up here, right? God, this festival's terrifying. Getting some Hunchback of Notre Dame vibes. Alright, well this is the fountain. The rabbit fountain. Hmm, hotel. Do we know the woman who just came out of there? Is she the pastry chef check? It's 9.55... The right time in the right place. Now A.W. just needs to show up. You made me run, Detective Locke. Poirot does not run. I'll wait sitting down. Alright, Pyro's gonna wait here. It, what, it highlighted the hotel, so I'm gonna go over the hotel quickly. Discover who A.W. is. Well, if you're staying at the hotel, there's someone called Awu here. Nobody. The desk clerk must be asleep. Or off partying. If there's no one to help me, they won't mind if I help I'll just myself. steal all their personal information. There we go. Aziz Wadi from Switzerland. Aziz Wadi. That's the only name that corresponds to the initials AW. Spacente. Non ti ho sentito. Posso aiutarla? Uh. Hello. I'm looking for the Fontana de Canigli. Do you know where it is? Oh, it's right in front of the hotel. It's easy to recognize because of a rabbits. Thank you. I had an appointment with someone, but I can't find him. I wondered if he might be staying in your hotel. I can't help you unless you give me the name. Uh, Aziz Wadi. I have an appointment with Mr. Aziz Wadi. Do you know if he's here? Well, unfortunately, he left the hotel this morning. He seemed to be in a hurry, but he left a carta. You are? Uh, Mrs. Ratchet. I'm Mrs. Ratchet. Mr. Wadi asked me to give the message to the Signore. But I suppose this is okay. I think I'm being watched. I changed our meeting place. Alice was sitting on the fountain. She glanced at the statue of the white rabbit. Suddenly the beast hopped away. This is like a puzzle we're going to have to go through. Great. It's going to be different statues in the town. Let's see what Pyro thinks. <laughs> so, mademoiselle, was our mysterious A.W. here? No, but I managed to get his name, Aziz Wadi, and a letter he wrote for Ratchet. It seems to be a kind of riddle rhyme. Let me see. Well, 
Ratchet and Mr. Wadi must love this book to refer to it so much. Yes, I think we have to search and find the tracks that this person left for Ratchet to find him. I think so. Lead the way, Mademoiselle Locke. We have to do fucking everything here. We literally have to do fucking everything. <sighs> okay. So we start off at this fountain. There. Why does that not count? I see a number. Do I need to just remember the number? Okay, maybe we just need to remember it. So two would be the first bit here. Right. Then what's the... How do I view the note easily? Um... She glanced at the statue of the right hand. Suddenly the beast hopped away. Alice followed it. Okay. So walk down a narrow alley and cross the bridge from the way the rabbit here is facing. Narrow alley first, which is this. And there should be a bridge. Right? This isn't particularly helpful, I'm going to be honest with you. It's got to be that this is the only alley, but there's no bridge here. Hmm. <laughs> is there a bridge here? There is. Let's assume that this is right. And it should be across here. There, eight. Okay. All right, what's the next clue? Uh, after walking through a narrow alley across the bridge, two men who are arguing had the tallest hat. But, what? So we have two and eight. Her feet led her back to the narrow alley and then to a small square where she found a cat drinking tea. Okay. I know where that is, I think. And then a barracks? I guess these people are arguing about hats or some shit? I don't fucking know. Or maybe it's just because the hat shop. This is a lot less structured than the rest of the game. It's got to be in this square somewhere. Right? There, four. Okay. And then this way, I think. It says barracks. This is just back here, though. Oh, we can go this way. Let's try this way. Army barracks. Oh, this is a police station six. There we go. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. We're getting there. Hmm. I have no idea where I'm going now. I think it's this way. <sighs> we're back here, though. I have no idea where I'm going now. I'm kind of lost. 
The last clue is a Gorgon, but I haven't seen anything that would constitute a Gorgon. I don't think, anyway. We've already been here. Maybe down here? Uh, we're just going around in fucking circles. God damn it. The notes say go left to the police station, but do they mean, like, left as you're facing it, not as you're leaving it? This would be the right way if that's the case. So maybe I got confused. So anyway, the code I've got so far, I have completely fucking forgotten. I'm going to have to go and check it again unless I can remember it. Nine. So there we go. And here's the Gorgon. And this is where we put the code in. The question is, what the fuck was the code? I think it's 28469. All right, we're going in. Oh shit, someone's been killed? Hey you. I can't lose them. Oh shit, this is a chase? Oh my god. All right. Oh, this is crazy. I didn't expect something like this in the game. Kind of cool, though. Oh my god, you fucking bitch. The fucking crowd of people really fucked me there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah! No rush or anything. Take your time. Did it! Finish the chase without losing sight of the killer. Move over. Holy shit. Too many! Too many masks! The murderer could be standing there watching me and, and laughing. He probably is. Yes, Detective Luck? The murderer got away. I'm coming back. But it looked like he dropped something when he climbed the first wall. All right, I'll go and see. For my part, unfortunately, I could do nothing for the victim. He was already dead. I have already alerted the Italian authorities. I will see what I can find while I wait I will interfere them. with the crime scene casually while I wait for them. Alright, guess we're playing as Pyro now for a bit. Pyro. Oh. A pair of women's glasses. Was Ratchet planning a new identity? There must be several tens of thousands of dollars in this bag. Some shady stuff going on here. I'm guessing the dead guy's gonna be Aziz. The victim was stabbed. <laughs> Apparently the method of choice in this case. Okay. Let's see who he is. It's Swiss, so yeah. It's him, yeah. Wadi Aziz. Mr. Wadi's Swiss passport. I'll see if I can find a match on the internet to confirm his identity. His nationality is Swiss. That would be Geneva. I'm gonna guess he's 45. This is wrong, but oh. I'm never far from the truth. Aziz Wadi. My little gray cells did not let me down. Okay, let's keep looking through the suitcase, I guess. Uh, 
a bunch of keys. If, as seems likely, Mr. Wadi is a resident of Geneva, then one of these may belong to his home there. A bunch of keys. If, as seems... I'm just going to take these. Various clothes in his suitcase. Mr. Wadi was obviously planning to leave this city. Hmm. Okay. What did he drop? The uh, killer. And where did we go again? I wasn't really paying attention. This way? Yeah, there. He dropped something, see? It's another passport. A false passport with Ratchet's picture. Clark, Ratchet, how many others? Now he will become Enrico Caldo. It appears Ratchet changed his identity as often as his socks. But why would the killer have that? Ratchet's dead. So, money in the backpack, mind map. It's probably from the Armstrong case this ransom. This appears to be a good lead. I'm sorry I couldn't catch the suspect, Mr. Poirot. There is no need to apologize, mademoiselle. Your efforts were marvelous. I found some information about Mr. Wadi. Did you access the FBI database? Don't worry. My little gray cells were enough. However, the database may confirm the origin of these banknotes. No need. I included them when I continued my investigation. Excellent. All right, let's have a look. I guess we're going to identify the money. <sighs> okay, so we got to match the fucking, the fucking things here. Oh no! Look at this. Dark. This is gonna really, really fucking suck. All right. Holy shit! We have to find each one. All right. So this is N A. This one. That's it. No rookie mistake there. Okay. We have more here as well, right? Yeah. And I this one. The detective gets it right. Uh, this one as well. Score one for the good guys. Mr. Poirot. It's part of the ransom money from the Armstrong case. You are surprised? I suppose not. So Ratchet had it in an account at the Banque du Lac. It would seem so. He knew the serial numbers on the banknotes could be traced, and he could not spend it. So he stashed it there. But now he's run low, something he didn't count on. He hopes enough time has passed so he can begin to spend the ransom money. Ah, uh, there is something else he didn't count on. What's that? He didn't count on you. Detective Locke, and your tenacity. Thank you. But we are still left with a murderer on the loose. But we progress. We know Mr. Wadi had an appointment with Ratchet. He had a bag full of money and a passport with Ratchet's photo, but a new name. What is your opinion about the passport? Um... Fake identity. I discovered that he was arrested in Armenia for trafficking and stolen art and was supposed to be arraigned in January. Once again, he changed his identity and vanished. You are correct, mademoiselle. He also told me that he was threatened, and that threatening letter we found in his room was real. He had to disappear once again. Why do they, uh, it's not, they don't care about them. This is like revenge again. The bag isn't very big. He could have easily run away with it. If he didn't take it, it was deliberate. He wasn't interested in the it's money. It's just if another revenge killing. Money, it leaves passion or revenge for motive. So, Detective Locke, what do you think? Passion or... No one's going to be passionate with that fucker. The motive's revenge. Revenge seems like an obvious motive to me. The murderer carefully followed Wadi from the fountain to the new meeting place despite Wadi's precautions. That is cold and careful. Excellent. We cannot yet know for certain, but that is a sound psychological analysis. 
We have an idea of the motive. It is the same motive as that of our twelve would-be murderers on the train. But we still must know the 13th who was murderer. under that mask. I think Wadi's killer is also Ratchet's murderer. The motive for both deaths was revenge, and both are related to the Armstrong case through the ransom money. Exactly. So our murderer is linked to the Armstrong case. The money is linked to the Armstrong case. But these glasses that I found in the bag, they must have something to do with this case too. Wait, those glasses mean something to me. Oh shit, they're Susan Moreau's glasses from the missing glasses case at the crime scene. Wait, I know. I've seen these. They belong to Susan Moreau, little Daisy's nurse. I remember seeing them in her bedroom, but they were gone the day she died. I remember the press saying that the nurse had committed suicide. I've always believed otherwise, and the glasses are proof that she was killed by Ratchet or his accomplice. He took those glasses. I always had a gut feeling, but now, Mr. Poirot, now I have proof Suzanne was innocent. Yes, you do. But the question I ask myself is this. Why did Ratchet keep these glasses? Serial killing trophies? In my investigation at the time, I had already found Daisy's hair clip in one of Ratchet's hideouts. And now, Suzanne's glasses end up in this bag, which was a delivery to him. Two objects from two victims of Ratchet. Keeping an object belonging to his victims as a memento of the murder. He was a fetishistic killer, a trophy hunter. Okay, we managed to clear up some of the gray areas. What now? I have no fucking idea. only contained a fraction of the one million dollar ransom of the Armstrong case. The rest must still be in a secure place. I will make a wager with you that it is the Banque du Lac in Geneva where Mr. Wadi worked. Wadi was also the keeper of Ratchet's secrets. They were killed by the same murderer. Agreed. Well, there is nothing more we can do here except wait for the police. Prepare yourself for a long evening with the police. We have a lot of explaining to do. And after that? A visit to Geneva, perhaps? Oh, finished chapter nine, holy shit. Here you are at last. I was worried about you. We just left the police station. We had to explain to the Italian police that we were not murderers. What? Another murder? I'll tell you when we are underway. Are all passengers and staff aboard? Yes, everyone is here. We were waiting for you. Excellent. Let's not waste any more time. So the killer's we definitely on the train still. Longer than usual stop in Lausanne. What? How long? Long enough to do a little banking in Geneva. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Just Book's like, yeah, whatever. What if it is Book? It could be. No, he was too, he was way too good a shape, that killer, to be Book. To be, so, I'm gonna go with Doc, I'm gonna go with the Doctor. I reckon it's the Doctor. I reckon he stabbed him afterwards because he was like pissed or something. But this is madness. A 13th murderer of Ratchet? Mon ami, he was not well liked. Yeah. Not a likable man. Shen would have seen anyone enter Ratchet's compartment. And there were another ten people milling about, taking their turn at stabbing him. How could they not notice an uninvited killer? Hmm. Uh, he was smoking. Did he actually go and smoke? Maybe, yeah. The 13th killer could have acted when Michelle was smoking on the platform at Binkovsky, but even after the train departed, Michel was absent from his post at the end of the corridor several times the night of the murder. I must know where he really was and when. Is the murderer still on the train? Yes. Yes, he most certainly returned to the train. How can you be sure? It's obvious. I mean, I hope Mr. Poirot agrees. Please continue, Detective Locke. Um, there is no one missing on the train. All the passengers and crew are still aboard. If the killer of Mr. Wadi had remained in Venice, we would have noticed right away that someone was missing. 
And we could have alerted the authorities. I promise you, I made certain everyone was aboard before we embarked. Book, calm yourself. Calm myself? But we're back where we started. I mean, there is really. still another murderer on my train. Wait a moment. Can I change my mind about my verdict? Can we turn everyone <laughs> over to the police? Everyone? <laughs> Including ourselves? What? No. I... No. No, no. Oh. It's gonna oh, be Doctor Constantine. Oh no, maybe not. Let it could be. Take it step by step, my friend. The bar guy is Swiss. Start by eliminating all of the members of the Ratchet jury. All right. So who are the twelve people who were uh, the Ratchet jury? Uh, Captain Arbuthnot, Miss Devenham, the uh, Mr. Michelle. Dun 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 dun. Um. Yep. So, we have a few My left. Grey cells did not let me down. If we eliminate the 12 jurors, we are left with seven additional suspects. Seven? It's still too many. I agree. We must reduce our list. Excuse my impatience, Poirot. It's as if my beautiful train is cursed. Can you exonerate any of us? Three of us, right? Four of us, I guess, without Pyro. Is Book a suspect? No. Fantastic. Book worked hard to get me aboard the train. He is definitely not a suspect. Is Miss Locke a suspect? No. Adequate. Mademoiselle Locke cannot be a suspect. She pursued Mr. Waddy's murderer. And um, I don't think Dr. Constantine is either. Nice. Okay, so these three are out. Dr. Constantine alerted me to the 13th stab wound. Yeah, why would he bother he doing that? He's not otherwise? a suspect. Et voila. Okay, so that means... I have four suspects... Four left, left. ...who I must now examine more closely. Miss Nielsen, Monsieur Maury, Monsieur Fauché, and Countess Andreni. One of my employees? Suspicious? All of them! Three got off the train in Venice to restock supplies. Any one of them might have slipped away. It's probably not Countess knows. Andreni. I suppose. I suppose. But what of Countess Andreni? You cleared her yourself. She is cleared of the first murder. But we know little of her movements here in Venice. So we still have four suspects to interview detective Locke. i can't join you poirot my chief saw something on the news about the case and my involvement he's demanding an explanation if i want to keep my badge i have to call him then you must do so by all means i'm sorry no need to apologize i understand i'll make the call for my compartment if you're looking for me i'll be there I hate to say this, Poirot, but I must. There is, of course, one other suspect with a motive for murder. The ransom money. You mean Detective Locke? Then who did she chase? Who killed Aziz? We both saw the masked murderer standing over the body. Yeah, she can't be the killer. All right. Well, we got four suspects. And uh, it's time for me to drop a save because I've been recording this for like two hours. We have four chapters left. Holy shit. Exciting stuff. All right, we have a new murderer to catch, so I guess we better get going. Question is, as I briefly tab out, <laughs> is uh, where uh, the people we're looking for. We've got to interview everyone that we... We have four suspects left. There's only four people it could possibly be, unless they're going to be like, well, it's somebody you haven't met yet, which would make no sense. So, uh, oh, hi. It's, it's, you guys all right? Doctor, I need to question Countess Andreni. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Mr. Poirot. The Countess had an anxiety attack when we arrived in Venice. That's pretty suspicious. She was terrified the police would come for her and her husband, despite how you concluded your investigation. I had to give her a sedative. She has been sleeping since. You have stayed with her all the time we were in Venice? Count Andrani begged me to watch over her. I have not left this Okay, room. so she has an alibi. You're the reason she's in this state. Book <laughs> voted to absolve you all. I accepted his verdict. I told her. I tried to reason with her. 
what she has already suffered. You're the one that fucking murdered the guy. Just chill out. Days. It was too much. I understand, Count. It's quite all right. I have the answers I came for. Okay, so she is innocent. So we're down to three. All the t all members of staff on this train, by the way. Ah, Michel, I have a few more questions to ask you, if you will allow me. Anything, Monsieur Poirot. We are in your debt. Um. Or well, were we asking him what Please he did in Venice? Tell me your movements when we were stopped at Venice Station. Once the compartments were cleaned and the linen refreshed, I stayed in my quarters. Did you notice anything special? Comings and goings? Monsieur Book had asked everyone to stay in their compartments. I would occasionally walk the train to ensure everyone was comfortable. Oh, I saw Monsieur Maury was all alone loading his crates of provisions. A great chef like that, reduced to petty labor. I would have helped him. But Monsieur Book had ordered me not to leave the train for any reason. So, Monsieur Maury was forced to labor alone. Okay. Let us review the actual timeline of the night of Ratchet's Why are we doing murder. this? I don't Not seem the to... one manufactured to hide your crime. I left the train in Minkowski for a smoke. Then I resumed my post. That was the truth. The train departed on schedule. But then, of course, an avalanche of snow blocked the tracks. At 12.45, Madame Hubbard and I met in her compartment to discuss how to adapt our plan. Due to the snow and whoa. The little play we had staged for you had to be rewritten. I left your compartment at approximately 1.15. Then the curtain went up. Calls in the night, the red kimono, all for my benefit. And all for nothing, as it turned out. Do not blame yourself, Michel. I am the theater critic no playwright wants to see in the audience. Okay, I don't know why we're asking him this shit. I feel like it's not relevant. Like, he's not. He, they, they, there's no reason to lie now that they've all been caught out. There's only the three remaining people that are worth talking to. Like, and this guy's one of them. You play well. I didn't mean to interrupt. He's also Swiss, Thank which you. could be a link. Many years of piano lessons thanks to my mother. I try to play in a few clubs in Paris when I get the chance, but as you can see, it hasn't made me rich. What can I do for you? Conversation only. Um, what are you doing in Venice? Tell me about your time in Venice. I had Monsieur Book's permission to see my sister. She lives in Marghera, just outside of Venice. She had a baby a few weeks ago. This was my first chance to meet my new nephew. Monsieur Book gave you permission? Yes, you can ask him. Most assuredly, I will. What time did you leave, and when did you return? I left around 9, 10 p.m. I was back by 10, 45 You only served for like six minutes! Like, what Kitaru the fuck? was in a lot of pain. I gave him a back massage. That would have been enough time to kill Monsieur Wadi and return to the train. Okay. May I see your knives? Of course. They are here. If you don't mind. Help yourself. They are under the bar counter. Okay, and the night of Ratchet's murder. Tell me again about your poker game, the night of the murder. It's a regular game to help relax after a long day. Let's see, we started around 11 p.m. We took a short break in Vinkovsky, Hotaru, Pierre, and I. The game finished up around 2 a.m. We'd all had quite a bit to drink. Ah, yes, I left for about 10 minutes to refrigerate champagne for the next day. That must have been around 1 a.m. Okay, so... Again, he had the means to do it. He has, the, he has the time where he could have done it. None of these come close to the wounds on either body. But is he going to keep the murder weapon just, like, lying around? I mean, he might do. Everyone else seemed to fucking do. They put the fucking knife that killed the guy in the fucking bag right in front of us. All right, Book. Give me an alibi. You told Fauché he could go into Venice? Marguerite, actually. Not so far away. It was his only chance to see his sister. He's been working every train for weeks. There is never time to see the new baby. Enough, Book. Your heart does you credit, but your common sense, it... I know. But it's fine. Isn't it? He did come back. I mean, he could have killed oh, somebody. it's fine, as you say. Unless he saw the baby, then killed someone else and returned to the train. 
But that's monstrous. Murder is always monstrous, my friend. Again, but this guy that they killed, he was probably a really, really bad man. Okay, like, the, the second guy, I mean. The first guy, you know, is a terrible man. He's a serial killer of children, like, uh, you know, like, I have absolutely no sympathy Good evening, for Mr. him Murray. at all. May I have a moment of your time? I have a few questions to ask you. Of course, as long as you don't mind if dinner is rude. What a prick! I promise to be as brief as possible. Uh, what did you do in Venice? What did you do while we were stopped in Venice? Could be this guy. With Freya's help. I loaded fresh produce for the next part of our journey. Then, you may not believe this, but my job requires a lot of physical labor. My back suffers. Fortunately, Jean has become quite adept at separating my vertebrae. I wish this guy didn't have a voice actor. It just, it just feels so bad. Know, I have solved the murder of Monsieur Hatchet. That is a shame. I beg your pardon? The bastard sent my steak turtle back, telling John I was to burn it. I will add it to the list of his crimes. One wound on Monsieur Ratchet's body was struck by a very sharp, thin-bladed knife. We haven't found it yet. You think one of mine was used? I'd like to have a look, if you don't mind. In that drawer. Okay, none of them look thin. Ooh, an impressive set of knives, but their blades are too wide to have been used with the crime. Doesn't mean shit though, right? Tell me about your poker game the night of the murder. We started around 11 p.m. when John finished his shift. We played until around 2 a.m. From what I remember, it's a bit vague. You played without a break? Actually, we did break once. And the chick was missing move. in that time frame, apparently. Jean, Pierre, and I. When we stopped in Vinkovsky. When was that? Around midnight. Okay, so that probably lines up, but the woman stayed behind that means. The pastry chef. I keep calling her the woman. I can't remember her fucking name, that's why. The pastry chef chick is the only one unaccounted for completely, but. I mean, they could just be lying as well. <laughs> you know. Hang on, what the fuck is this? A black feather. Hmm. A black feather. That reminds me of something. I think I missed something about this way quickly. Give me a second. What does it remind him of? A black feather. I'm trying to think of instances where we've seen a black feather, but like genuinely can't think of any. This is what I wanted to look at. There was something on the table. What the fuck is this? Saffron. Oh. It must be worth a small fortune. Is saffron expensive? I had no idea. It's disgusting, so, you know, makes sense. Um, all right, so I guess we'll do some nosing around their quarters. Or can I even nose around their quarters? Oh, what is this? Can I look at anything? The box is secured by some sort of locking mechanism. The design is formed by three commas. What is the word in Japanese? Tamoe. And it's obviously missing a piece. Okay. So we need to find a missing piece for a puzzle box, it looks like, if we're going to go through his shit a bit more personally. Oh, she's here. I was like, who the, who the fuck Good is she? Good evening, Mademoiselle Nielsen. May I talk to you for a moment? Of course, Mr. Poirot. I'm not going to bed right away. Right. Can you tell me your movements while we were stopped in Venice? Uh, that'll be easy. I didn't move much at all. Let's see. I helped Hataru load all of the food crates aboard the train. Hataru had everything he needed, but I realized they forgot half of my order. I spent over an hour on the phone with the supplier without success. I had to change the dessert menu for tomorrow. All right, let's see your knives. Dr. Constantine found a stab wound on Ratchet's body that was caused by a much thinner and sharper blade than the others. Possibly a chef's knife? My thought, precisely. And you'd like to see my knives? If you wouldn't mind. I would gladly show you if I had any, but I don't. I use the regular kitchen knives. You may search if you don't believe me. I see. She's probably All the lying. The staff use are in the kitchen or in the lounge. Except... Except? Otaro prefers to use his own. 
Monsieur Mori doesn't use the kitchen well, knife. You know that. You literally just spoke to him and he showed you the fucking knives. Traditional Japanese oh, shit. Knives in a box in oh, shit. So he it's different. anyone else use them. Although now that I think of it, he has been using the kitchen knives lately. Sussy wussy. Can you tell me exactly about your poker game, the night of the murder? We started around 11 p.m. In Vinkovsky, we took a short break. Hataru and Pierre went outside to smoke. Oh, and Hataru got sick around... a few minutes past 1 a.m. 1, 10 a.m., maybe? He spent about 15 minutes in the bathroom, but he didn't want to quit on a losing streak. Did his luck improve? No, so we played to around 2 a.m. He lost every hand. Okay, so there's lots of contradictions here and lots of holes in the alibis. Some elements of the testimonies do not seem to correspond. Quite a few of them, actually. Check a few things. All right, so here, right? Um, things that don't cross, okay? Things that don't work. These two, because... I must admit what? I'm not right this time. Hmm. Ah, uh, so Miss Nielsen does not smoke? Okay, so she was not on the platform. Her movements are unaccounted for at that time. Okay. Then we have... No, 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 no. Not good. Hmm. I have no idea what the fuck I'm clicking on here. I'm gonna be honest with you. I do not think that's the right answer. Oh, I have no idea. Um, Miss Nelson didn't leave the. Mr. Michelle entered Miss Hubbard's room at twelve forty-five. I have, n I genuinely have no idea what to click on here. Like, but none of this, none of this makes sense together. For the first time, this has like been like no, 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 bollocks. I'm just gonna have to try everything with everything because I can't think of anything else. There we go. Apparently that. I have no idea why. Okay. And these two apparently. I've no, again, no idea why. Mr. Murray reported the train at 1:10 a.m. and Pierre Michel was not watching the corridor. Okay, so. Any of the three staff members had the opportunity to kill Ratchet okay. when Monsieur Michel wasn't watching the hallway. That is true. Uh, but he, well, wasn't he already dead? I don't know. Was this the killing blow? Uh, well, let's confront them all. Remind me of what you did when the train stopped in Venice. No problem. I helped Ataru load all That's the crates That's a lie. That's a contradiction. Ataru had everything he needed, but I realized they forgot half of my order. I spent over an hour on the phone with a supplier without success. I had to change the dessert menu for tomorrow. Okay, so confrontation here. Um, I bought in the food case with Hotter as a lie. I believe you're that is a lie. hiding the truth from me. What makes you say that? Uh, testimony of Mr. Foucher. Monsieur Fouché did not see you helping Monsieur Mori. He couldn't have. He wasn't there. Indeed, Monsieur Fouché did not mention seeing Miss Nielsen or Monsieur Mori. Oh, who's. Who said that then? Oh, Mr. Michel said, said that. So, Monsieur Mori I'm an idiot. That was my fault. Food alone. You weren't on the platform. I did help Ataru. The entire time? He carried so many crates, his back was sore. Ah, I'm sorry about that. Okay, I'm guilty. I did leave him before we were finished. But I had to. There was no saffron he needed for a recipe. I volunteered to go into Venice and get him some. The Rialto market would be open late because of the carnival. He gave me money. I knew we weren't supposed to leave the train, but I only wanted to help. Mr. Mori can confirm this. Ask him. I saved dinner. And there is saffron there as evidence. Oh, on behalf of my palate, I thank you. How long were you gone? I left at 9, 10 p.m. and was back with the saffron around Plenty 11. of time to That's kill somebody. I called my supplier for the items I was missing. What's with these weird little pauses here? had almost two hours to buy the saffron, find a costume, kill Monsieur Wadi, elude Detective Locke, and make it back to the train for that phone call. So yes, she has plenty of time. It's possible that was enough time. Thank you, Mademoiselle Nielsen. That is all for now. Okay. 
Sorry again, Mr. Poirot. I hope you enjoy tonight's dessert. God, that was a horrific smile she did there. Jesus Christ. She's been on Canny Valley the whole time, but you know. Hmm. We can do this? Oh, what is this? What even is this? Some kind of puzzle box, but... Are we making a shape? We just gotta reveal the flowers on each side? Would that make sense? Okay, so there's a three there's a hole drawing there. Is there some on top? Hmm. I've absolutely I don't I don't really understand this at all, I'm gonna be honest with you. Okay. Well, whatever that was. An object that looks like a broken comma. It must be part of something else. So I guess we just pulled the bits out and got the thing. It's a magatama, which goes in here. And this is his knife collection. They gonna, none of these look great. Sushi knives, razor sharp. Sushi knives, razor sharp. Okay. Sushi none of these knives, lives look long and thin. Razor sharp. Oh no, this one is. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This might be important. Ah, it's not. It's not ja Japanese. Corteria Venezia. Okay, so that is different. Let's confront him about that. Ask Mr. Mori about his personal knives. Okay, and we know that one of the knives has been made in Italy. Which doesn't make that much sense in terms of him bringing it on the train with him, but we'll see. He didn't, like, just pick it up. I'm sorry, Monsieur Mori, but haven't you forgotten something? You haven't told me about the knives hidden in your room. Ha! Yes, indeed. I forgot to tell you about those. They are my personal knives. I only use these knives. There are none better. I bought them all in Japan. I mean, that's a lie. No one is allowed to touch them, except me. That's just a massive fucking lie, dude. Like, you're clearly fucking lying. Uh, I bought them all in Japan is the lie, because we know you bought I one in Italy. I'm you are better at sushi than lying. What? What do you mean? Uh, One of the knives has an inscription, Coltelleria Venezia. Did you happen to go shopping tonight, monsieur? Damn you, Poirot. Very well. One of my sushi knives has been missing. Oh, the night shit. Of the murder. I thought you were going to believe I killed Ratchet. He routinely sent back my dishes to be ruined. Why does God give rich people the money to afford the best cuisine? But not the palate to appreciate it. I... I panic. I know a very good store in Venice. I went to buy a knife to replace the one that had gone missing. So, I wouldn't be accused. I assure you that I had nothing to do with any murders. I would have an easier time believing you, monsieur, if you put that knife down. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. What time did you leave on your little shopping trip? He's gonna have I time as well, yeah. 9.30 p.m. I was back a little after 11. 11.15 So they PM. all left the train. Time enough to stab Monsieur Wadi and return. Very well, Monsieur Maury. That's all for now. 
If I have another question, I'll be right here, cooking. Okay, so let's be real. His sushi knife is probably the fucking um, a murder weapon for the 13th stab wound, right? Like, it just makes sense. Who doesn't have an alibi? These three. She does. My little grey cells did not let me down. Okay. Who should we fucking talk to now? Uh, Miss Locke, maybe? No idea where to find her, though. What does this say, actually? Oh, report to Detective Lock. There we go. Alright, so they all... Three of them... Could have done it. They all had... They all left the train, they all had the means. Sushi guy's knife is missing. It's probably the murder weapon. At least for war, for the 13th stab wound. I don't know about Mr. Wadi yet, right? But, like... It's all, it's all plausible at this point in time. Um... I don't know what room she's gonna be in. 100 and something, I'm gonna guess. Second class. <laughs> there you go. One I five. What have you been doing, Poirot? I am completely in the dark. I will shine some light on the situation, my friend. I have three new suspects who could have killed Ratchet. And Monsieur Wadi. Miss Nielsen, Monsieur Fauché, and Monsieur Mori. They all had periods of time during both murders to commit the deed. And their alibis are weak. A visit to family, and not one, but two shopping trips. But, but, all are my employees. <laughs> I feel sorry Alas, for Book. Yes, my dear Book. But we have no proof against any of them. None of the three appears to have any motive whatsoever. At least but not right now. This is a tragedy. Do not give up hope. We will catch this murderer. There is still one place that may hold the evidence we need. Geneva. Exact. Do not give up hope. Well, that's easy for you to say. But what if it's Freya? Oh my God. What becomes of desert? If it's Sodaru? <laughs> <laughs> Me? Holy well. shit. If it's Jean? Who will serve the dream? The true horror. I've been checking up on the Banque du Lac. I had to confirm my identity for Interpol, so they contacted my captain at the Berkshire Police. I suspect he was not pleased. That my vacation was actually an unofficial investigation? I'll say. I would be happy to speak to him on your behalf. Thank you. But he'll get over it. It's a chance to close the books on the Armstrong kidnapping. He stopped yelling, asked for a report, then granted me an extra week. Excellent. What did you learn from Interpol about the Banque du Lac? It's had a bad reputation for over a century. Customers have included the Mafia, Nazis, corporate swindlers of every description, even heads of state. It is true, this. It is the worst kept secret in banking. They take advantage of the bank's strict policy of protecting the anonymity of its clients. This is in defiance of many laws from multiple countries including Switzerland itself. Of course, I have never taken advantage of such a corrupt system. That goes without saying, my friend. There are ongoing investigations, subpoenas, court orders. The bank will eventually have to comply or its assets may be seized. But until then, it still thrives, thanks to its wealthy and powerful clients. It sounds perfect for the late Monsieur Ratchet. Do you have any ideas? The serial numbers from some of the bills match those from the Armstrong kidnapping. We agreed in Venice that the bulk of the money must still be physically in the bank's vault. I concur, Detective Locke. Exemplary work. So, our next task is clear. We need to get into Ratchet's safety deposit box. There will be codes, passwords. And Monsieur Wadi would, of course, have known them all. The bag of money he carried is proof of that. We'll need to find information about Ratchet's box in Wadi's office at the bank. Most assuredly, but remember the secrecy involved. I doubt his office will contain all we need. Where else must we dig? Oh, my. His apartment? Yep. 
That was easy. Easy as pie. Mr. Wadi couldn't keep all of his secrets at the bank. Hopefully we'll find something in his apartment. We already have his address thanks to his passport and his keys we retrieved from his body. The train stops in Lausanne. We sk at interfered with the crime scene. But that's far from Geneva. I can delay the departure until 11 a.m. No later. The police are expecting us in Paris by the end of the afternoon at the latest. They won't tolerate any delay. The bank doesn't open until 9. I can see only one way that gives us a chance to be on time. Uh, taxi. Let's take a taxi. I checked a map. It should take us less than an hour to get to Geneva from Lausanne, which leaves us just enough time to access that safety deposit box. We have no choice if we want to be back to the train by 11 a.m. Uh, we have to split up. The best up. thing is to separate. One of us searches his apartment, the other searches his office. To access the safety deposit box, we need to find the key, the box number, and the passcode. Suppose you find all this. How do you plan to get into the vault? Uh, impersonate Ratchet. We are going to use the bank's anonymity policy to our advantage. And the quickest way is for you to impersonate Ratchet. I would rather impersonate Jack the Ripper, but in the interest of justice, I will do it. We need to find the account number. Along with everything else. I will say I want access to the vault. They don't ask for papers or even names. The vault information is enough. I'm not hearing any of this. I run a trade company. I don't rob banks. Perfect. Let's recap the plan. Okay. Go to Geneva by taxi. Separate. S search Mr. Wadi's office and apartment. Meet up at the bank. Pretend to be Ratchet. Search Ratchet. Find information on the safe. Search the thing. This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. Yeah, this should be further up, right? There we go. That's the right answer. All right, we got it. To sum up, we're going by taxi to Geneva. Then we'll split up. You're going to search Mr. Wadi's apartment. I'll search the office at the bank. When we have all the information we need, you pretend to be Ratchet, and we can finally find out what Ratchet is keeping hidden in his safety deposit box. It sounds impossible. Not for Detective Joanna Locke and Hercule Poirot. We should get some rest. You are right, Detective. We face our greatest challenge tomorrow. Together. This is cool. I'm enjoying this a lot. Chapter 10 done. Well, that was a short chapter compared to the others. All right, we have three chapters to go. Time to handle the bank de lac. Dun dun dun. <sighs> Nine o'clock. Our driver did well. It took barely an hour to get here from Lausanne. But we must conclude our business in one hour as well. Book can only hold the train until 11 o'clock. One hour to find the key of Ratchet safety deposit box, the box number, and its passcode. A lot to ask. Indeed, which is why we must split our forces. I will take the cab to Monsieur Wadi's address. You must search his office. I have you on speed dial. And thank you. Mr. Poirot. For what, mademoiselle? For trusting me. <laughs> look at my moustache. Look at how it, look at how amazing it is. I will twirl it aggressively to show you that I trust you, mademoiselle. Look. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> We're getting near the end, even if there's still going to be like, I'd imagine at least another hour and a half to go of this, I would assume. It depends how short the final conclusions are, I guess. Alright, hi. You there. I have an appointment with Mr. Wadi. Let me check. I'm sorry, I don't see any appointments this morning at all. Mr. Wadi hasn't even arrived yet. Although he should be here by now. Um. Even though your customers are anonymous, considering the amount of money involved, you should still have a mention of a meeting. Yes. I can't understand it. I'll be sure to ask Mr. Wadi when he arrives. In the meantime, you are more than welcome to wait in his office. 
I'll see you're not disturbed. Please follow me. Oh, wow, that was fucking easy. This place has shit security! Just non-existent! What the fuck? I will say, there's a good variety of environments in this as well. Like, it's not all on the train. I can't understand where Mr. Wadi might be. You're right. I don't have much time at all. All right, uh... Got a locked drawer. I'm assuming it's locked anyway. Uh, it's closed. Hmm. There's something up with this. But I can't... Hmm. I need the password. Maybe Poirot can help me. Hmm. Locked. What do we got here? A souvenir tower of Babel. Hmm, makes sense. We know that Mr. Wadi oh, is from no. Iraq, and the ancient tower is said to have been built there. Alice in Wonderland, again. Mr. Wadi seems to have really liked this book. Okay, this is just like text. Oh, okay, well, we got clues in here highlighted. Two, three, fourth. Nine. Two, three, four, nine? Six, two. Wow, there's a lot in here. Two, three, four, nine, six, two. I don't know why she's got nothing to Oh, now she has. I was going to say, this is uh, super sus. I'm All taking right. a picture of it. I'll send it to Poirot. It might be useful to him. Okay. Call Mr. Poirot. Will it let me do it? Is there a phone in here that I can just use? Or oh, I'm just going to call him, apparently. There we go. I managed to get into Wadi's office. I did a quick preliminary search. Everything is locked, including his computer. All I could find was a photo with a date on it. I just sent it to you. Maybe you can use it. Thank you. That might help. I've just arrived at the apartment. I'll call you when I find something. As quick as you can. I can't stay here long. Oh shit, we're playing as, as Poirot now as well. Okay. This is definitely not Mr. I don't know Wadi's which one of these dickhead. Just open the right ah, one. Ah, here we are. His name's on the Let's door. That's weird. see if the key I picked up in Monsieur stole. Wadi's luggage in Venice will open his door. Let's see if the key we stole will work. Great. All right, what do we have in here? Another copy of Alice in Wonderland. My game tabbed out there, actually. Oh, shit. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Fuck. How long was that like that? God damn it. It tabbed out and fucking clicked on that across the screen. Just give me one second, guys. I don't want to miss anything. Okay, so fortunately, that was only a few seconds that, uh, that fucked that there. That was so stupid. I've no idea what happened there. But... There's a bunch of torn things in here. This is the same book that she has access to, but we ha there's much better access to it. Hang on, what the fuck is this shit? There's more here. Oh, is there a dart or something here? A dart. A familiar projectile found in any pub in England. A dart. Oh my god! Take the fucking dart, dickhead! I hate the fact that escape is the fucking pickup key. It should just be E. 
Uh, okay, we'll leave the book for now. Anything else? Yes. Meet me in Venice on December 18th at 10 p.m. Confirm the appointment. The key to the password is close. Okay. I can feel it. So we have the old edition of 1865 on the following pages. So we're going to have to use both books to get the different things is what we're going to have to do. That may be useful to Mademoiselle Locke or me. I'll take a photo. Not quite sure. Oh, this Tara Babel puzzle. Okay, cool. We've got a laptop, probably a password. Swiss and Arabic keyboard. Oh no, that's gonna suck. You appear to run out of error. This computer won't give up its secrets easily. Are you a boomer when it comes to technology, Pyro? Alright, we got a lot of things Staring in here. At the clock won't help. Wow. A lot more conventional puzzles here, I would say, in this part of the game, compared to others. This is probably mm, important. This could be the password to Monsieur Wadi's office computer. He must change it every month. It seems to have a logical sequence. I'm but so I need bad to at this. Find the one for December. I'm so bad at that kind of thing. I hate that. Oh god, what am I supposed to do with this shit? I'm going to cheat here, guys, because I have no idea. If that's the password to the computer in Monsieur Wadi's office, we still need to translate the Arabic characters. And there weren't any Arabic characters on the office computer's keyboard. How does he know we that? We need to find out which keys these Arabic characters correspond to on a Swiss keyboard with its Latin characters like the one in Monsieur Wadi's office. Et voilà. Okay. Well, we can use the... Staring at the clock won't help. Wow. Hmm. What was the dart for? We picked up the... Oh, there's a dartboard here. Oh, this is another I fucking puzzle. This, this is ridiculous. This is like the most crazy security. Like, ever. That was that door closing by itself, right? So we have some of the pages now, okay? So it's page 88, 94. Okay, so the code is three blank. Nine, six, blank. So we're missing two. So it's... Three blank, nine, six blank. Okay. No idea what I may be doing the dartboard at the moment. Just a load of, a load of crazy fucking shit. I've got a chessboard as well. Oh, someone's at the door. Absolutely ridiculous, like fucking ridiculous levels of puzzles. I mean, I know this guy is like a bad guy. Right, and he's doing shady shit. Oh, it's the guy from the picture. Who are you? What are you doing in there? I am Hercule Poirot. I am working with the police. You are Monsieur Wadi's neighbor? Uh, yes, next door. I heard a noise. I thought it was... Mr. Wadi, who had come home. I don't know him very well. A delivery man left a package for him with me. That's a lie. And we know because of the picture that Locke sent us a picture of. You don't know your neighbor very well. Yes, what of it? How is it that Monsieur Wadi has a picture of you on his desk? There is quite a family resemblance. You wouldn't be his brother by any chance why are you going through his things as i told you i am working with the police all right yes i'm his brother Mediwadi. do you know where he is i am very sorry sir but i have some terrible news for you your brother has been murdered you have my sincere condolences 
Oh no, Aziz, my wife, my son, their hearts will break. Everything he did was for his family. He brought us here from Iraq to give my son a better future. We can't go back. You won't. You won't. Do not fret, Monsieur Wadi. I do not want to cause trouble for you and your family. I am here to catch his murderer. When did you last see your brother? <coughs> I'm dying. He was on his way to Venice. It was not a journey he was looking forward to. I knew something was wrong, but he promised all would be well soon. My son will be heartbroken. Aziz made the point of reading to Fadi every night so he could learn English. We hope to legally emigrate there one day. Your son, Fadi. What did Monsieur Wadi read to him? Alice in Wonderland. His favorite book is Alice in Wonderland. The nonsense of it all. <laughs> Why? It is the answer to a question I had. I believe your brother was a good man, forced for some reason to keep secrets, and that got him killed. Sir, there is something else. Aziz left me a letter to open if anything should happen to him. Could you show it to me? Yes, I, I will get it. Okay. Brother, and then the wretched found me at the bank. He threatened to kill you and your family to force me to do illegal things. Oh shit, so he wasn't the bad guy after all. Mehdi, if I die violently, this man will be responsible. Send an anonymous message to the police. Tell them of his safety deposit box in the back de lac. His bank account is 82664. They will know what to do. Goodbye, my brother. Give my love to Aisha and Fadi. I wish you all good life. Holy shit. Mm, it all makes sense. It's horrific. But to Ratchet, it would be just business as usual. At least I have Ratchet's account number. 82664. Okay. Thank you for giving me this letter. Let me assure you, the man Ratchet cannot harm you. He was killed before your brother was. Really? Who did it? The one you say hunted Ratchet? Yes, without a doubt. I promise you I will find them. Sir, we have no papers. The police... Your secret is safe with me, monsieur. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I must go to my wife and son. Tonight, I will read to Fadi from Alice in Wonderland. And we will remember my brother. Oh, that's a sad situation. Ratchet leaving a trail of destruction behind him. I need to notify Mademoiselle Locke that I have Ratchet's bank account number. Is there anything else worth looking around in here, though, before we do that? <sighs> what do we do with this? We do we have a chance to look at it, right? Hmm. A bizarre endgame to be sure, but I suspect checkmate is possible for white in three moves. Let's see. This is ridiculous. Holy shit. He's got a puzzle based around that? Oh, I'm still like, waiting for it to load in, I think. Hang on. Now we can do it. Checkmate in three moves. It's another puzzle. think that's the right answer. I don't fucking know. I did one. Okay. I do not think that's the right answer. I have no idea. Well done. I'm just clicking random shit at the moment, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I know how to play chess, but I don't really understand this situation that I'm meant to be figuring out here. Let's try the knight again. Nice. Hell yeah! We got there in the end. The power of the night. All right, we got that. Hmm. Anything else I need to notice here? Oh, 
Oh, I wonder if we have to replicate the white and black pieces on the dartboard. That would actually make sense. I took a picture of the chessboard there, so let's see. Um... It's going to be A6, D5, and D8. For the white pieces, and then for the black, it's going to be a six as well, a seven, a seven, a eight, and B seven. There we go. Okay, so we have the code here. Let's look at this. The keyboard this again. keyboard should help me translate this code. Okay. Alright, we're going to cheat here again because I don't really understand what I'm looking at here, I'm going to be honest with you. So it's going to be R5A1P. Oh, I see. Okay, actually, it's not difficult at all. 1P9. F. I went past F, didn't I? Arabic is read from right to left, so the password must surely be read that way too. With any luck, this will unlock the computer in Monsieur Wadi's office. Let me text it to Miss Locke. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Okay. Let's swap now. Because I think we've got everything in here we need at the moment. We need to solve the Tower of Babel puzzle and we can do the book. Ah, the peculiar habit some people have of displaying things on the door of their refrigerator. I've just sent a photo to you in case it might help you. Thank you. I texted Ratchet's account number to you. Wonderful. Did you receive my text? This must be the password to Mr. Wadi's computer. I have it. Thank you. All right. Tower of Babel is the name. Well, the book first. Open the fucking book. All right, so... Okay, so the code's going to be 34962. Do we have a workshop for this? Yeah, 34962 is this. 3, 4, 9, 6. I hope this is right. There we go. It's password. Here it is. Excellent. The detective gets it right. Okay, good. All right, time for the Tower of Babel puzzle now. Let's see if we can do here. We've got to make it match the fridge magnets. Which... The first bit looks right, but this bit is not. That's right. And this bit isn't right either. And neither is this. I think this is it. I guess not. No, that's definitely correct. Oh, it's the shape of the top one that threw me off. There we go. All right, and we're going to get the key to the drawer. A key. I wonder if it will fit the desk drawer. I'm going to guess it will. A key. All right, open this up. Voila. Pencil and a bit of paper. We 
Can we do anything with this? Huh. There's got to be something here. I'm guessing I need to rotate this to get the right angle. Oh, there you go. Bullshit, These really. These indentations are from the sheet of the notepad that was on top. This is great. All those mystery movies I watched as a kid. I know what to do. I'll send a picture of this to Poirot. What the fuck am I looking at? Could have been anything. All right, anyway, doesn't matter. We can get in here now. Um, it's going to be E3 is backwards. F9 P1 A5 R. Account number is 82664. Confirm. The safe deposit, deposit four three deposit four box. six. At last, I should let Mr. Poirot know. Okay. And we need to open the safe in there as well, with probably with that pattern we got, whatever the fuck it is. I sent you a photo of doodles I found on a notepad. I hope it can help you. I hope so as well. I was oh. able to access Mr. Wong's computer. I have Ratchet's safety deposit box number. Excellent. I think I've discovered Ratchet's safety deposit box passcode. Well done, Mademoiselle Locke. She is a genius. She is what I would call a genius. Mr. Madame Locke. Mademoiselle Locke, sorry. So yeah, um... Looking at the thing we drew the picture of, we, we drew the picture of, it's just basically the order you have to dial it in is like a pattern. So it's four, one, oh no, that's wrong. Oh my god, how do I fucking delete? Four, one, five, three, six, eight, enter. There we go, easy. Easy, it's just a pattern from the, the paper. It looks like a safe key to me. We finally found it. I think we have everything. Good news. I have found the key to Ratchet's safe. Perfect. We're running out of time. Do we have everything? I have the key to the safety deposit box. I have the number of the box. And we have the passcode. I'm on my way. Time to rob a bank. <laughs> time to rob a bank. All things great detectives say. Sorry to keep you waiting. I haven't heard from Monsieur Wadi. You'll have to reschedule with him. This is quite annoying. I'll have to reschedule. Absolutely. I... I hope I have been of service. You have no idea. That's a weird fucking smile. <laughs> weird serial killer smile. I just realized I thought that was the bank, but it's not. It's just his office where he works, right? That was fast. We do this as planned? Yes. Oh, no, I it is the bank. Because he works at the bank. But with the bank's questionable policy, I do not expect anyone to ask. Right. Absolute secrecy regarding their clients. The last Swiss bank of its kind. All right. Shouldn't you wait outside? You look super sus hanging around. All right. Madame. I still haven't heard from Mr. Wadi. Well, we'll have to make do without him. Now that my friend is here, it's his box we want to access. And the clock is ticking. I trust there is no problem. No, no problem at all. May I have your safety deposit box number? 4346. May I see your key? Do you know your passcode? Yes. Mademoiselle will be able to accompany me. No names, of course. Of course. I'll open the door. Go down the stairs. The guard will accompany you. Okay. Still pretty crap security. I mean, I get this is an anonymous, like, dodgy money laundering bank thing, but Jesus. Please leave your personal belongings in this bin and then go through the portal. 17 guns. All in there.
I'll open it for you. What the fuck happened to his outfit there? Just freaked out. Four, three, there. At last, we reach our goal. Now, I will insert my key, if you allow. Thank you. Okay. Oh, interesting picture here. I'll be by the door, should you need any assistance. At last. I suspect the don't, effort will be Don't get too excited. Is it going to suspect you if you're like going, just items. fucking fist bump, so yeah, bro? Are, Detective Luck? I do, Mr. Poirot. God help me, I do. Souvenirs. The trophies serial killers take from their victims to remind them of their kills. Ratchet wasn't just a kidnapper. No, indeed. He was a monster. I mean, one of these things jumps out more than anything else, right? The one on the left. Ratchet. Whoever he is with, their friendship seems over. The build. The hair. It could be Noah, his partner in Daisy's kidnapping. It appears they had a falling out. We already know that he did because he killed him. MC. The real journalist Michael Clark. Ratchet would have needed to kill him to assume his identity. God, he this took is his morbid. His what the fuck? He knew the serial numbers on the banknotes could be traced. The rest of the Armstrong ransom money. The serial numbers match. Another trophy. A woman. We may never know her name. You were lucky, mademoiselle, when you met him at that cabin in the forest, alone. How many victims do you think Wretched had? Too many. Wonder who this keychain belonged to. Certainly not Ratchet. No. This is depressing. Diamonds. A fortune. Crime does pay. No, mademoiselle. This time it was the criminal who finally paid. I mean, he has a point. He is dead. For every soul Ratchet claimed, even more are suffering. Yeah, he took every one of their Another belongings. Trophy. We may never know how many people he killed. What a fucking Another monster. Bracelet. Another victim. Another trophy. And then there's the one that we already found. Suzanne's red glasses. And the bear, right? Oh, are these dog techs? Another victim. Yeah. That's it. Four years of investigation. It's all over. I finally have the last piece of evidence that Ratchet was Daisy's kidnapper and murderer. More than that, you have helped unmask a serial killer responsible for so many deaths. But even with all this, we're no closer to solving Ratchet's murder. On the contrary, mademoiselle, everything. It is coming together. Don't you agree, detective? What? The damaged photograph. It could be Noah. You think Noah killed Ratchet for revenge? The train. What about the train? I know how a killer could vanish without leaving a trace in the snow. Wings? The Camouflage. roof. Camouflage. The trophies. Poirot? We have a train to catch. Not just a train, Detective Locke. We have a murderer to catch. Oh, this is exciting. We're near the end. Two chapters to go. 
Chapter 11 is complete. Alright, let's see what's going to happen now. We've only got two chapters left. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? By the way, I'm sorry sometimes the sound cuts out when I'm... T it's because I'm just tabbing out to check my recording all the time, because these are long recordings. I'm doing long sessions. I need to make sure everything's working fine, you know what I mean? I need to make sure everything's going okay. All right, so we have three potential people who are Noah, I guess? It's unlikely to be the woman, let's be honest. Wow, enough! You have kept us in suspense ever since we left Lausanne. Forgive me, my friend. Detective Locke and I needed the time to put the last pieces of the puzzle in their proper places. I'll fill in where I can, but this is Mr. Poirot's show. I confess I can't help, but I feel a certain déjà vu. You are correct, Doctor. We have been here before. However, without you, we wouldn't have been able to reach the true conclusion of this story. Because whoever did this stab wound got in before the others did, I'm going to guess. I think he My was friends, already dead when they stabbed your him. Your attention, please. I hope you have finished your dessert. You have every right to think the solution to the murder of Ratchet is a closed book. You are wrong. I, Poirot, admit that I was wrong. There is a final chapter. What in bloody hell? What does he mean? Perhaps if we are silent, Monsieur Poirot will explain. Most of us naturally expect a journey by train to proceed in an orderly fashion from station to station. But this journey has gone off the rails. A comfortable journey, which should have been restful, turned out to be quite a challenge for my little grey cells. I beg your indulgence. I know it will be painful, but I must update you on the strange turn the Ratchet murder investigation has taken. I had two hypotheses, as you recall. A stranger boarded the train in Vinkovsky, killed Ratchet, and then exited the train unobserved. That was the first possibility. The second solution gave us 12 jurors who condemned Ratchet to death for the kidnapping and murder of Daisy Armstrong. My friend, Book, properly chose the first solution for the authorities. However, thanks to Dr. Constantine here, a 13th stab wound was discovered, throwing that solution into disarray. Moreover, the words of a witness called into question the chronology of the night of the murder upon which the first two solutions were based. Detective Locke? All right. Time for some big revelations. Who, which witness? Me, Pierre Michel. Michael admitted to having been absent several times during the night. His absence, therefore, gave multiple opportunities for a 13th murderer to slip into Ratchet's room before the other 12 jurors lined up to stab him. You are saying the man Ratchet was, was, when we? Yes, you executed a man who was already dead. But there were other suspects that night. Other suspects? Who? They stand before you. <laughs> Mr. Fouché, Mr. Maury, and Ms. Nielsen. And they all also had a hole in their stories about their movements that night. Mr. Poirot? Most of you don't know it, but there was a second murder in Venice. Mein Gott, another murder. The victim was a man named Aziz Wadi, a banker in Geneva who was on the payroll of Ratchet. He looked after the money Ratchet obtained from the Armstrong ransom. Ratchet needed money and arranged to meet Mr. Wadi in Venice. One of these three knew about that money. Now, each of them had an alibi of a sort, but 
if any of their alibis was a lie, that person had time to murder Monsieur Wadi, Monsieur Fauché, Mademoiselle Nielsen, and Monsieur Mori. One of you murdered Ratchet and Monsieur Wadi. Are you kidding? I pour drinks for our guests. I don't murder them. It's nonsense. You are accusing me because of my knives? But why would one of my employees kill Ratchet? Uh, is Daisy's death the motive of the 13th murder? No, it's something the else. The killer's motive for killing Ratchet was revenge. But not for Daisy's death. The motive for Aziz Wadi's murder was also revenge. Mr. Wadi was helping Ratchet. Ratchet had an accomplice in the kidnapping named Noah. They kidnapped Daisy together. Ratchet stored the ransom money in a Swiss bank that protected anonymous clients. He forced Monsieur Wadi to watch over the money. Once enough time had passed, Ratchet felt it was safe to have Monsieur Wadi bring him cash whenever Ratchet needed it. The serial numbers of the bills would still be in a file, but no one would be actively checking it. Precisely. But Ratchet didn't just keep the ransom in his safety deposit box. There was something much worse. The victim's trophies. There was something much worse than Daisy's ransom money in that safety deposit box. During her investigation, Detective Locke found evidence proving that Ratchet was what is known as a trophy killer. He kept souvenirs of his crimes. We found trophies in the safety deposit box. There were others in a cabin Ratchet used in the Berkshire Mountains, including a beloved toy of little daisies. If I'd have known that, I would have cut the bastard's head off. All right, so associate two objects that would link would be the motive. So it's got to be this. The fucking photo. Is this the same bracelet? It is. They're the same in the picture. Okay. My little grey cells did not let me down. The bracelet found in the safety deposit box was also on Noah's wrist in a photograph. It's obvious. Ratchet killed Noah. And therefore, at last, I can tell you with absolute certainty who the murderer of Ratchet and Monsieur Wadi is. I genuinely don't know. No, this doesn't help. Oh, is she wearing the same bracelet? Mademoiselle there we go. Nielsen has the same bracelet as the one found in the safety there we go. deposit box in Geneva. A Her brother. trophy from a victim of Ratchet. Noah. Of course. Having a similar bracelet doesn't prove anything. Yes, that might be true. If there were not an inscription... Their names are Freya and Noah, Mr. right? Bro, you're right. The bracelet looks similar to mine, but I have no idea what the marks on it mean. I just like the design. The marks are not random, mademoiselle. These are special bracelets. They are called Morse code bracelets. Because, well, you know why. The marks are Morse code. Happily, I learned Morse when I was a young man doing my service for the Belgian army. So, his, she's going to have one that spells out Noah, and his is going to spell out her name, which is Freya. And this says no Y. Is there no Y? Oh, it's going to be with a J, right? That was easy. On the bracelet found in Ratchet's safety deposit box was the name Freya in Morse code. Your first name. It belonged to your father, Noah. 
Noah. Oh, b please. no brothers. Okay. Let's stop playing this little game, Mademoiselle. What does yours say? Noah? It's a dad, not her it brother, says but still. Father. Ratchet. That bastard. He kept my father's bracelet as a as a trophy. Thank you. I have to admit your timing for Ratchet's murder was perfect. Do you mind if I continue? Would it matter? Go ahead. You've earned the right to crow. I do not make bird sounds, mademoiselle. I take no pleasure in this. Okay, so she's the murderer. You drugged Ratchet's dessert to ensure he would be ah. unconscious when you went to his room. You stole a knife from Monsieur Mori. If it was identified as the murder weapon, he would be accused. You knew Pierre Michel would leave the train for a smoke whenever it was stopped at the station. At Vinkovsky, you waited until he was on the station platform. Then, you carefully made your way along the first class corridor to Ratchet's room. You entered Ratchet's room with the pass key. Accessible to all employees in the crew quarters. You stabbed Ratchet at midnight. But that knife, where is it? Probably thrown out of Ratchet's window before the train left the station. A thorough search after the snow melts should turn it up. My beautiful knife. Then... You carefully returned to the crew quarters, replaced the pass key, and returned to your poker game. Et voila. The affair was not so complicated in the end. But what made the crime seem more complex? Well... It was us. Exactly. The twelve jurors who proceeded to carry out their far more complicated plan, literally in the dark, without realizing that the man was already dead. Speaking only for myself, of course, but I believe we would have invited you to join us. Ms. Nielsen, you killed Ratchet because he killed your father. Your motive is crystal clear, but why did you kill Aziz Wadi? It's because of Aziz that my father died. My father knew Aziz was the only one with access to Ratchet's safe. So he convinced Aziz to steal the money from the safety deposit box. But Aziz was too afraid of Ratchet. Instead, he betrayed my father by reporting him to Ratchet. Obviously, Ratchet then murdered my father. Aziz was just as guilty of my father's death as Ratchet. Ratchet was the worst of humanity. But Monsieur Wadi, if you knew his story... My father is dead because of him. I will not debate the point with you, mademoiselle. He had done nothing to justify his death. I do not see any extenuating circumstances that should allow you to escape justice. You will be arrested at the Gare de Lyon when we arrive in Paris. Judge and jury are you, Monsieur Poirot. And you get away with it. It must be nice. But think of this. I know what you did. What you all did. She's right. She could turn us all in. Relax. Hector, is it? Your secret is safe with me. I'm not going to jail. Farewell, Poirot. Enjoy your victory. Oh, shit. Stop. What's her plan here? Oh, she's going to jump out. Shit. Over the bridge. No, Freya, don't jump. You're going to die. I've made my choice. We'll let fate decide. No. How did she jump through the bars? Whoa! Holy shit. Well. What an exciting climax that was. She jumped off the train. Even if she hit the water, considering the height, I doubt she survived. And with this tunnel, either way, she's gone, Poirot.
Well, I guess we don't get a full conclusion. But she was blinded by our hatred of a terrible man who, who you know... Uh, but her, her dad did terrible shit too. I can't, I don't have as much sympathy for her as the others. In fact, I don't really have any, I'm gonna be honest with you. But there we go. She did kill a terrible guy though. That's to be sure. I still can't believe what happened. Thirteen people took revenge on the same person. This investigation is so incredible. It almost looks like a detective story. It would surely be a bestseller. It is true that this case will remain as one of the most important investigations of my career. My only regret will be that I couldn't bring Ratchet to justice, but I can finally close this chapter of my life. Your determination paid off. You can be proud of yourself. I think we'll be arriving in Paris soon. All right. If you will pardon me, Detective Locke, Final I chapter. have to settle a few details with Monsieur Book. Yes, we're just going to be wrapping time. things up here. Please, go ahead. I still can't believe Freya was the killer. She never even cheated when we played poker. She used too much sugar. Nonsense! Her desserts were divine! Unfortunately, her actions were not so divine. There you are, my friend. Book, I have a favor to ask. Anything. When we arrive in Paris, will you speak to the police? I would rather keep a low profile. But why? Book, my first solution was incorrect. Nonsense. The nuttier the mystery became, the greater your brilliance. Please. Very well, if you insist. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for your service. The cuisine. Under difficult conditions, you surpass the reputation of the Orient Express. That is true. I look forward to seeing you again abroad, Monsieur Poirot. I promise, not all of our trips are this eventful. Princess Dragomirov. I'm glad it wasn't that guy. I liked him. Monsieur Poirot, it is important. She is waiting for you in her compartment. When a princess summons me, how can I refuse? All right. I guess this is just going to be wrapping things up with everyone and chatting to them as we go through. We'll talk to everyone as we go. We may as well. You all right, guys? Ah, Mademoiselle Debenard. Congratulations on the wedding that you hid the entire time. Allow me to congratulate yeah. <laughs> you on your upcoming nuptials. I hope you won't be too disappointed if you're not invited. Archie, really? Thanks to Mr. Poirot, there will actually be a wedding. As you say, my darling. Sorry, old man. And thanks for everything. Including finding my train ticket. Yep, they're done. She's in first class, so she should just be here, right? I'll talk to the Count first. He's standing around, so... Count Andreni, how is the Countess? Much better now that it's all over. I misjudged you, Poirot. And I you. There is something else about my wife you should know. Why I am so overprotective. She is pregnant. <laughs> you are quite the detective. <laughs> Actually, Dr. Constantine told me. She admitted as much when he was attending to her. If it's a girl, we are going to name her Daisy. If it's a boy, Hercule, he'll be stuck with Rudolph. <laughs> it's <a family> <laughs> so pompous. All of your family much happiness. Great, Thank this is great. Some good conclusions to the story here. This is... Oh, it's not the Countess's room. Which one is it? Oh, is she in second class? Oh, yeah, because she's not, like, super loaded, right? Yeah, let's go and talk to her. That's all our apartment still there. I'm guessing we're going to have to, like, pack up and get off the train and shit. But let's go to 107. There we go. This is her. Hello. Oh, shit, all three of them. My daughter, my great friend, and I wanted to talk to you one last time. I speak on behalf of the entire Armstrong family, as well as those close to us. You have shown compassion. We know your reputation, and we understand that your choice was not easy for you. We are all the more grateful. Thank you. Congratulations, my dear. You managed to say the word thank you, although he did manage to put us through quite a lot. You have given us all closure and some peace of mind. You should know that I regret nothing. If this Freya Nielsen person had not been involved, I would have done it again. 
Someone told me the Stalinists were frightened of you. I believe them. The country of my birth breeds its share of brutes and bullies, but also some of the greatest intellectual and artistic minds the world has ever known. I pray that one day we will again be remembered for that. I share your hope, Princess. And of course, with the real murderer of that man out there somewhere, we are no longer guilty of much. Correct? Princess, don't push your luck too far. If you'll excuse me, I have some packing to do. Ladies? All right, I guess we're gonna go and pack now. This is just all wrapping things up. A nice little conclusion. I will say these last few chapters have been way shorter than the rest. The story sort of goes bada 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 rapidly. All right. At the end of this investigation, I still have my doubts. Did I make the right choice with the 12 self-proclaimed jurors? Yeah, I think you did. Yes, it was the right thing to do. As for Mademoiselle Nielsen, what would I have done if she had not escaped? I think I would have had her arrested, if not for Is the ratchet of the second murder, you know what I mean? Twelve go free, but have Mademoiselle Nielsen arrested? A vast question indeed. One second, babe. Judges often take motive into consideration when deciding the sentence for a crime. You are not a judge. Your job is to establish the facts, which you have done. The case has been solved. Another already awaits you. It is the reason you were on this train. It is time. Time to move on. Alright. We're all done. Hi. Talk to you. Monsieur Poirot, I spoke with my associates. I convinced them to give you a deal on our new Firenze SUV. No need to thank me. It's the least I could do. That is very... Only 10,000. I do not drive. Only 25,000. What? Bargain. But Electric. It's good for the planet. I am good for the planet, as long as I don't drive. It's like me. I don't drive. I don't understand. He refused. Guess we can say goodbye to everyone as we're leaving here. Have you lost something? May I help you? Oh, Mr. Poirot, you have done so much already. What is it you have lost? My friends, we are traveling to Poland to help with children. We were to meet at an information booth. But where do I get information on how to find an She's fucking useless. How the fuck did you kill anyone? There is, I believe, an information booth just inside the main terminal. Oh, thank you, sir. You are a great detective. <laughs> and you, madame, are a good soul. All right. I'm getting through. Yeah, these two are off the table because we've already spoken to them. Hey, Poirot. Hey. Have you seen a scruffy little guy in a green trench coat? I cannot say I have. Why? He's my next case. Another case? That was indeed. Fast. He's a famous detective, too. Detective has got to eat. You know what I mean. I have some idea, yes. Suspected embezzler. Traveling east, but not on the Orient Express. Say, you wouldn't be interested in teaming up, would you? Some good money in it. I have had enough of trains for a while, thank you. Okay, suit yourself. I don't blame him, like, Jesus fucking Christ, you wouldn't go anywhere fucking near them, would you? 
These two. Mr. Farrow, Mr. McQueen here thinks he may know an attorney in the Berkshires who might need a gentleman's gentleman. He's old school English. I think the clock stopped for him in 1934. I hope it works out for you, Monsieur Masterman. What about you, Monsieur McQueen? Well, back to law school for me, following my father's footsteps. We can take the train to St. Pancreas, then the Piccadilly line to Heathrow and check out some flights. Might as well. We're already packed. I wish you both bonne chance. God, that's gonna be fucking expensive to do on short notice. Jesus Christ. All right, and then finally, the posse. Ah, wow. Mission accomplished. I have reported to the police that Freya Nielsen killed Hatchet and that she escaped. They're issuing an international arrest warrant. There's a canal that runs alongside the tracks where she jumped from the train. But they say there's little chance she survived. The police have questioned all of the passengers and crew. Exciting so stuff. For now, they are free to leave. I there gave we go. them the results of my preliminary autopsy, and they have the report from the Venetian authorities. They were arguing about jurisdiction when I left. Who gives a fuck? Thank you, Doctor. It's none of our fucking you business. You have been of inestimable help. Let's get the fuck out of here, is what I fucking say. I'm pleased I could assist you. All right, and now look, the Mr. final Paro. scene. It seems our paths part here. It was an honor and a pleasure to work with you. And I am with you, Detective Locke. The case would have been impossible without impossible. your and dedication to finding the truth. You also proved to be an able con artist in Geneva. You too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, he gets a hug. Thank he gets a hug. Anything. I'll never forget you. And Aww. I shall always treasure our collaboration. She's a great character. I don't think she's in the original. She's a great character. I like her. All right. I don't know. I don't, I've never read the original story, so I don't fucking know. But, you know. I enjoyed this a lot. All right. I think that's well, going to be it. That's that. I'm hungry. You're always Let's hungry, Let's go book. to the Vagot Rouge restaurant. They make an excellent leg of lamb. But it's only 5.34 p.m. Is food all you really think about, my friend? I'm the one inviting you. You've well deserved it. I'm warning you, I'm not going to obtain for you a secret recipe this time. Poirot. They make it. Oh my god. He's obsessed. So He's obsessed. Funny. It must have a secret ingredient in it. The last recipe came from a murderer, but it A sublime murderer. Alright, that was Murder on the Orient Express, and it was really, really fucking good, and I really enjoyed it. Just an excellent fucking uh, game overall, just a great story, great characterization, just brilliant. I just loved it. I thought this was top of the line, top quality, brilliant stuff. Uh, one of my favorite things I've played this year. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. I feel the ending was a little padded, like... I know the ending is like the original bit, you know what I mean? Like this this stuff here. But like I felt like the bit with bit with Venice and fucking around with the deposit box and shit, like I didn't think it was terrible or anything, but I did think it was like just a bit much. But overall, I thought this was a really, really excellent thing. Thank you for our patrons for nominating it. If you want to get involved and nominate, guys, we are only a few subs away from concluding our goal for the month. Please consider heading over there dropping us a sub, five bucks to vote and nominate, but even one dollar would help us out immeasurably. Please go and do it. If you can, it's the, it's the only way this channel exists. It's the only way we're able to keep making these games, these videos for you. Not games, I didn't make this game. And we have a post credit scene here with Parho. Oh, is this a clue for a different game or some shit? I don't, know, I don't know about, or a different case. I don't know his cases, so like, I haven't really read any Pyro stories, you know what I mean? Let's have a look, shall we? Dear Poirot, I didn't really have time to say goodbye when we parted. I thought I had beaten the greatest detective in the world. Oh, she got away! You Holy me. shit! I still had my revenge, though. I even managed to help myself to a small amount of cash from Wadi's bag before you interrupted me in Venice. It will be enough to settle somewhere in a quiet little town where I will create delicacies for appreciative clients. You won't hear from me again, nor will Booth get 
any more of my recipes. Oh, she got away oh, with it. And one last thing. You may not think so, but I truly believe Ratchet and Waddy got their just desserts. Regards. Oh. I mean, oh. Ratchet, yeah, I don't know about Wadi. You, mademoiselle, are entirely too pleased with yourself. You give clues no one could follow. Unless they are Hercule Poirot. Does he know where she is? I guess that's just the implication, right? The super genius, Hercule Poirot. Anyway, that's that. I really enjoyed it. I thought this was brilliant. Just really good overall. And I really hope you enjoyed it too. See you later. Thanks for watching. Bye, Nomkins. Bye.